Welcome, day three of the Blast Premier Spring Showdown 2024. I'm joined with Bubski again. Uh, we're into it, Bubski. We're in the thick of things. We're, we're getting deep into this tournament. We've seen some teams knocked out. We've seen the quarterfinals start to shape up. Um, things looking pretty good yeah, so I mean, far. I don't think um, there's been major upsets. I think we saw yesterday that there's been a lot of teams um, yeah, having a hard time dealing with the jet. Like, we saw all the teams coming in from the Armada in North America and actually not being able to to make it through yeah. to the next stage. So, um, some new names we're going to see here. OG, so not teams we're usually seeing in the, in the Blast format. No, but it was certainly with the rise of especially a team like Saw at the RMR and how good they looked there. It's it's starting to come together and be a consistent showing. So it's nice seeing them have success even um, even over a struggling Liquid. OG able to take advantage of the long travel day from Complexity and, and Monty. Uh, they didn't even they didn't even have any issues. Stand in doesn't matter. SDY coming back in doesn't matter. They they handled business. They they burned through Imperial nice and quick. Those are the results from day two yesterday. If you missed them. Uh, and as Bubsy said, unfortunately uh, for me and some of the Americas fans, all the Americas teams uh, eliminated yesterday, just uh, sent, sent packing pretty quick. Let's get into the play of the day from yesterday, because we, we ended the show by showing three clips that we had um, very good individual performances. And obviously, we've got to we've got to needle that down to just one. Uh, to be our play of the day for day two. This is Halzerk on Inferno for complexity in that losing effort, but especially on Inferno, he kind of had the impact, uh, Bubsky, that, that we expected and wanted yeah, to I mean, see. he is the, the player to watch, but uh, even on a, another scale, we saw Saw also having a star player in the likes of Aradosh. This is such a crucial moment in the game. They go and lose that Inferno anyway, but like mentally, this game on this round means so much to get that um, initial good feeling. Yeah, this was the start of a five-round comeback to force overtime, and Aristoche was 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 just a beast all the way through. But this is hands down the best play of the day. Look at this angle. Look at the slim crack. And he gets the headshot and he builds upon it. It's absolutely filthy from Heavy God, and you can see why he's got a lot of excitement building around this guy's play, and a lot of excitement uh, for OG uh, potentially finding a player who can give them some results and start uh, building into it and start you know putting forth a, a better foot than we've seen previously. Uh, we'll take a look at the bracket overall for the showdown, so you guys see exactly where we are the tournament as well as i mentioned some of these uh, quarterfinals are, are coming into view og taking on heroic in quarterfinal three i'm starting at the top right for some reason uh saw versus cloud nine uh quarterfinal four and the number two quarterfinal monty versus metasport and again uh, back on day one we had metasport with that massive upset over falcons uh eliminating the simple cs2 debut uh and and just and just causing havoc in the yeah, i mean there's been a couple of names that we feel like should go at least into the next round right complexity liquid Falcons, all teams we expected to move into the next round, but not really been able to deliver. And uh, the one I'm most surprised about, I think Complexity and Liquid had their reasoning right, but for Falcons, really, they had such a, a packed lineup and losing yeah. to uh, a part-time team of Metasport is, is not acceptable considering what they are investing in this team. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Let's take a look at the schedule for the day. You guys know exactly what's coming up. Spirits and Donk and Shiro taking on Elevate. Uh, we got the second match, Big taking on Gamer Legion. Snacks is going to be hopping into the showdown. We got Cloud9 versus Saw as the last game of the day to see if anyone can put down this uh, this jumpstart Saw team that's starting to look pretty good. Um, so yeah, some cool games. Any of those uh, sticking I mean, out I'm to you? I'm actually going to be looking forward to see the first game just because we've seen Donk on a 150 rating the last past three months, right? Is he able to increase that over this game? I would assume even if uh, it's just two games potentially, I think he could dominate them so much that he could even move it up a, a notch or two. Yeah, it's uh, perhaps some of the easiest competition he'll have faced. Uh, no disrespect, man, of course, to elevate just a different level. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, the prediction game that we've been going on between the talent as well, because day two was a little bit crazy. Now, the way this works, GG Bet sets the line. They have their teams they believe are going to win. If you predict against GG Bet and win, you get to steal some lives. So this is how things turned out yesterday. Everyone gets complexity wrong. Uh, Saw pickers are big fans. Uh, Monty pickers are happy. So a couple people, uh, myself, I'll, I'll just say that, and Launders both getting two steals for the day i chose to steal both of mine from uh james banks I, mean, I, I saw harry was on a rough uh, in the first couple of days so i, I just tried to, to follow the pack and try to get him out but it didn't really work so uh, i stole one from him but i'm gonna be sitting on a, a sweet seven in the middle of the pack 
Yeah, and I'm at the I'm at the top of the totem pole. It's great. These are the predictions for today that we have. No one no one going for that elevate prediction. Everyone's happy with that. Gamer Legion Big is gonna throw some things things into the mix, and uh, myself, Harry, and Hugo all getting a little bit swayed by Saw to take on uh, Cloud Nine later on today. Yeah, I think it's also gonna be the most 50-50 game. Uh, initially, the two last ones, right? We speak about the first one, but uh, I think it's gonna be a field day for Duncan and the rest of the guys. But the next two one is gonna be really close. I would assume both of them to go into free maps at this point. Yeah, could be interesting. Spirit versus Elevate is going to be our first, ma first matchup. Before we dive too deep into it, we got to sit down with Magix. We sent James Banks out into the wild to have a talk with the Spirit player. Magix, Spirit had a great start to the year if we look at Katowice, we look at qualifying for the Major, but I wanted to just find out what has Spirit been doing since then? Did you actually take some break time? Have you just continued practice? What's it been looking like for Spirit? Uh, well, yeah, right after the armor qualifier, we had some day offs, uh, like around the week, a little bit less. So, nice. uh, yeah, and th those was the days when I was not playing a game at all. So once we get, once it ended, we started to practicing, playing a lot as we did before. And that is what we are still doing before the major starts. Very nice. Now, I can see you're in the spirit offices right now, but it's only some of you and then the, everyone else is at home. But you're also playing your first online game since the 7th of December 2023. Does it change anything for you? Mm, not really, because the it's like, I mean, everyone is preparing for the LAN tournaments. And uh, mm -hmm. so you have to be focused on this more and you can have an approach of practicing going into the uh online tournaments and that's what i hope to keep and what i think is very interesting about spirit is no matter which opponent you go up against we see the same concentration the same focus the same level so even with you going against elevate i am not worried that you guys would underestimate them or anything but is this a team in any way you expect can challenge you is there something you look at and think Okay, they're a bit different to what we normally face being a, a lower down North American team. Well, it's definitely a new thing to play against, uh, against an AI position because we have had some practice before uh, against other teams from the NA mm -hmm. who has been boot camping or something in Europe. And yeah. uh, it's the opponent which is bringing you some weird stuff you are not usually used <laughs> to see. So you have to be ready have to be prepared for this and to not get lost to stay concentrated throughout the game against those enemies. So just talking about needing to stay focused, needing to stay on top of their game and uh, not get caught off guard by too much craziness and shenanigans, we'll call it. Here's the spirit lineup that we all kind of know and appreciate. And obviously, I, the crazy thing, Bubsky, is Donk's getting so much yeah. attention. The guys like, obviously, Shiro's even getting overshadowed, which is pretty wild to think about. But everyone else on the team, Zontix, Magix, Chopper, feel like they're all playing really solid as well. This is a well put Yeah, it's hard team. to pinpoint what is their weakness, right? Uh, I would assume that it's their tactical ability. Yeah, exactly. Oh, go. as well. And uh, <laughs> I think it's funny we're looking into the right side of things uh Sontex, he uh recently said in a vlog that uh, you you go on his HLTV profile and you look at he has like 30 percent headshot rate and you're like what the hell a guy was so good statistics as a rifler and then you go into like a vlog where he says yeah he doesn't really go for the head he just tries to kill people as fast and easy in the stomach and it's such a unique thing because we talk about constantly players being around and trying to go for those one taps and see the really high headshot uh, percentages so it's a unique approach from a, a new player well, it's also like we used to make memes about that with the old like Astralis lineup, right? <laughs> like just say, just aim for the chest, uh, you know, don't aim for the headshot. It used to be like a running, a running joke when Astralis was in their in their prime, and now it's like, oh, okay, this guy's actually making it not a joke all of a sudden. Uh, regardless, Spirit's looking looking good, and I think you know if Katowice showed the peaks that they could be at, uh, the RMR maybe showed a couple of cracks and a couple of weaknesses that can be targeted a little bit. Vertigo being one of those picks as well, a map that you know pe teams were really able to, especially Astralis, able to shut down Donk on as much as humanly possible, um, and, and really kind of challenge them down the stretch. But I still have to imagine, I mean, going into the major, you you would have Spirit. Uh, do you have them as like a fa one of the favorites to win it? Maybe like one of the top three teams 
to win. Yeah, I do, that. but uh, but the thing is that they are so reliant on this guy, and it can be uh, super positive because he's shown that he's uh, capable of, of carrying that responsibility, right? But he's so dominant in the ways of taking duels and is always the first point of contact. If he has an off game, he will just give injury kills. We've not seen it yet, and I don't think we're going to see it in the near future. But he is going to be reliant for a lot of responsibility when it comes to making the games. He's, he can coin flip the game, but he already he always lands on hits. So um, he's always got his game um, prepared. Yeah, he, he can be a tough player to control. Let's uh, let's take a look at the uh, the team that we're facing off against, uh, Elevate, um, as well. The North American side of things just recently picked up by an organization. I mean, not not a whole lot to like really really talk them up, especially in a matchup like this. That's that's such a disparity. Number three in the world, Spirit versus number yeah. fifty eight in the world. Uh, and on top of that, I mean, if you go back to recent results, this is a team that got O two at the at the Americas RMR, lost to Complexity six to thirteen, and lost to Odic uh, one to two in a series to be. Let's be honest about these guys right they're not coming to to go and and win against team spirit but they're playing for the respect of it right they're trying to make a game they may be gonna go for one map in an entire series against the likes of spirit and then they're gonna be happy it's gonna be an interesting journey for a team who's relatively unknown on this stage but uh, i would be surprised if they're gonna get double digits on any single map well, and they've even challenged, they've even gone for that Vertigo pick as well as their starting map. So potentially seeing that at the EU RMR and seeing Spirit, mm. you know, kind of have a tough time handling it, thinking that's the best place to go. And I, I don't know if I can necessarily doubt it. it. It's just, it's a good map for Elevate as well. They have 100% win rate in the last four maps, last three months they've played it. Not that that really means a whole lot. Regardless, uh, it's going to be a massive challenge for Elevate. We're going to head off to a break. When we come back, Spirit entering the server against Elevate. Harry and Hugo on the microphone, and we're going to get the showdown started on day three.
Oh, it's a pretty fiery one today. Team Spirit taking on Elevate. Uh, Hugo, I want to get, get ahead of this early on, man. Do it. What chances do Elevate have? No. What, what's the barometer we're looking at here? Zero. What's successful? Of six rounds. Six okay. rounds in a BO3. Harry, I'll be impressed. I'll be impressed. Like, at the end of the day, I have full expectation of spirit. GG bet. Have full <laughs> expectation of spirit. You should have full expectation yeah. of spirit. Now, I'll give you something, okay. Elevate fans. I'll give you a morsel. Okay. It's Vertigo. Their okay. man pick, 100% win rate, good domestic results, and the one that we have seen Spirit struggle on. But struggle is relative, Harry. This yeah. is the number three team in the world. This is the Katowice Championship. This is Donk. Spirit ain't here to mess around. Spirit ain't here to mess around. around. The Falcon's make... gone. The road, the route is open for Spirit, and I don't for a second feel Elevate can stand in the way. Yeah, I really like that spirit. They've got a path paved and elevated just one more team in the way in between them and that run to London for the spring finals. We're going to start off on Vertigo. This is maybe the one way in for Elevate, but I think to even sell it as that is, dis is disingenuous. Let's see. Spirit start up over towards ramp, and they've already been given a lot of room here. Elevate immediately starts scrambling bodies over. They fully pad out this side of the map. Got that one deep smoke. You don't need two anymore. It plumes big. It gives a plant to Spirit. But Elevate are fully here. Five players ready to go. Uh, a flank in tow denied immediately. It's all on the front line now. Elevate moving in with a pair of Julies. They've got no kit, or rather, Snav on the smoke kit. Flash can set them up. Chopper's still in the bomb site. Spirit of fighting for this one. They're slow for now, but here's that Util raining in and Chopper peeks on the back of it. Donk is knocked out, sure, but everyone else rises to the occasion for Spirit and they're going to run away with a convincing pistol to open this one up. It looks like the food is here too, so Shiro's pretty happy about that. Ordering you before the game is a sign of confidence, Harry. They want still, to get this over and done with before that food is even cold, man. It will still be warm if all goes to plan. And yeah, that was the first kill, a quick flank, but Spirit have the manpower to hold for it. And even as the smoke comes down, Spirit push ahead of it. They're just, they're not going to play with fear. This is a team that don't play with, with fear against FaZe in the grand final on a stage. So some plucky young Americans are not going to shake Spirit's spirit. Mm. I will say the run for Elevate to get here was really cool. They took down some big dogs in the North American scene. Nouns, Boss, Wildcard, NRG included. So the run was really cool and the opportunity is great, but we also haven't even touched on their lack of a full roster, right? We've got a German inside of this team, Mr. C9. <laughs> so we're still representing America somewhat, but... Yeah, it's uh, it's a shame because Dia is was was the star of this team, is the yeah. star of this team, um, and was unable to leave the US. So, statistically outlier from the rest of the roster, an Orper, the most important role in the in the game, and he's unable to not only make it to the RMR, where yeah. Elevate fell short, but he's unable to attend this event as well. So, bit of a shame. Yeah, for we were Elevate. We were having a little look as well at MRC or Mr. C9. I don't know. I don't know which we'll one of the Mr. two C. it is. MRC. Well, MRC. MRC. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, when we were taking a look, we wanted to see because obviously he's from Big Academy at one point and uh, was hopeful that maybe he could don that AWP. But he has more Mac 10 kills than he does all kills. Yeah. So. I doubt it's him. <laughs> so five rifle core here for Elevate. Maybe he is Mr. C9. He's followed in their footsteps with a full, full rifle team one. here. That is a good one. Yeah. Uh, look, this is a learning experience for Elevate. They're, they're going to get some, some rounds to play against one of the best teams in the world. And I think that's great experience. We all need to get beat to learn. And I am framing this pretty brutally, but I actually have no regrets. Is that the... Uh, the mindset your parents brought you up with? No. <laughs> I never learned, Harry. Good. I fought back. And will elevate in this gun round, because contact in the middle, there's got a lot to do. His teammates pushing in forward in the front of the B-bomb site, but that smoke is down. Boost up in middle for Magix. Shane, spotlight. Magix will fall. There's a reply at a donk. Shane up close. Gonna flick back and find them both. Chopper and Zontix on the receiving end of this double push over towards the top of B ramp. Levate might be onto something here. This could be their first round where the rifles have come out to play. It's Donk and Shiro left to beat, so you know, you can hold your breath for a moment. I they will. get given one kill over towards ramp. 
deep and gives it a look in. <laughs> 20 seconds. Oh, they're swapping guns. This is wasting a lot of time here. Resmoke in out of Elevate. Spirit just gonna have to go through. They're gonna have to brawl for this site control. Might have to win this one on the back of the fight, but a man tucked in it. Quad swinging out, gonna get the better of them, surely. And so Elevate are on the board early on. The rifles nice. come out and they get their first round. Nice aggressive position for Shane up front, getting baited in by the Tetris player and Spirit come flashing through the smoke. They okay. didn't clear their corner. You want, you want like one, you know, if you really wanted to do some mental gymnastics, early, early days mental gymnastics, yeah, yeah, yeah. the best kind. Spirit, in like, you know, whenever we've seen them, I know there's a lot of hype around this team, but they were always like on the up and up, right? It was like, they're always playing. No, no, hear me okay, out, hear okay, me okay, out, man. Okay. You know, think back to Kato. It was sure, like, sure. it was like, oh, they beat this team. Now they have to beat this other really good team. And so they were like constantly kind of seeing how far they can push the limits. Sure. But this is a game where like, they are heavy, heavy okay, favorites with absolutely like, there's not a bone in your body that looked at this and went, elevate, have, have a chance, you know? Like, you'd be crazy to think that way. I see your logic. And so, you know, Spirit playing with that pressure of like, this is a match they have to, they have to win. Yeah, I also just- That think changes things, just a tad. It changes things a tad, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, the, the level, Head to head of every single player on the oh, server. Oh yeah, yeah, comes is, out ahead for spirit. It's not even close. Yeah, not even close. So, you know. But I think also if you're elevate, you kind of feel like you have nothing to lose in a way. Absolutely. Like you've got no. <laughs> they didn't show up. Like yeah, we'll crush them, man. But I think that 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 like adrenaline rush of going up against the the boy wonder that is Donk and being able to try and say, yeah. you know, we 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 got the better of Donk in a few of these rounds. I think that's a high they're going to be able to ride. Just from these couple of rounds, Elevate don't look like they're playing scared, and that's something there's something to say for that, right? They're making moves. A jump spot at 45 seconds with a double A setup now. Oh, but the spam is problematic. Snap gets pushed all the way back. The molly as well. It's picture perfect for Spirit to get control of the bomb site. Can they find any smoke kills? That would go a long way right now with a bit of spam. Boost up uh, for there. He makes it on top, but so are they. He spots ahead. His is gone, and the bomb doesn't make it down yet. Shiro finally going for the stick. Four on four. Missed Molotov by a second on that smoke, and the retake's on. And yeah, that Miss Molly's annoying. That could have been their route to kickstart this retake. Instead, they've got to do it manual mode. And Donk is here. Full auto up on the short side. Chopper even moving in, and this one is laid to rest quickly and cleanly. It's just peeping left standing. <laughs> Chopper does have the knife pulled, and with good reason, maybe. Peeping brings it down to the 1v1. Okay. Just Donk left to beat. Oh, it's easier it. said than done, but he's sticking it, and Donk will get him off that bomb. Donk sends his regards. And so a nice try from Peeping, yeah, honestly. That was yeah. a one-on-three attempt. He gets it all the way down to a 1v1, and at that point, you kind of you kind of have to stick. That's Actually, how he's feeling. I respect the, the knife attempt in the smoke as well, I think, you know? Oh, damn. Chopper's uh, freshly, freshly shaved. Not his beard. You're really, you're really over oh, his head. Yeah. You're really on hair patrol this week, Harry. I, I am a little bit. I don't know. It looks nice. It looks really good on him. Yeah. Like, the you know, uh, there's something about it, man. When, when you've got... You know, the, the, the bald look going on, and then you give it that nice, fresh, clean shave. Yeah. Very clean. I love There's that. no doubt about it. Looks like he could be a secret agent. Alrighty. Spirit cooking. Going back for a B hit, perhaps. A contact right now. Just a molly in, and they're going to waltz right up front B. MRC up close. They don't clear it, but that's ugly. He almost saved it. 10 health on Shiro. He will get finished uh -huh. off. These pistols have come in with a fight. Chopper Mac 10 ready to remove them from the round, though. Peeping with a trade and hopefully an AK to grab. They'll just come oh. swinging. No respect from Spirit and no chance for Elevate. Good eco. Three kills, but yeah, it just it looks right, doesn't it? Sorry, I keep going yeah, back yeah. to that thing. Okay. But no, that's a that's a good round for just for just pistols, right? Mostly vanilla pistols at that. Get it down to two surviving. You've kept Spirit modest. Halley, uh, coach of Spirit, but also player of Spirit. We saw, obviously, Spirit in the blast groups to the start of the year in Copenhagen. Uh, but unfortunately, they didn't have Donk, and they uh, didn't have Magic. So yeah. they had Halley, and they had Baz, the academy, standing in, academy player standing in. I think Baz played uh, pretty well. He looked solid for another young player, one for the future. And Halley actually held his own. They got a map v Liquid at that event. They didn't win any series, but um, that was, yeah, it was a write-off, really, for Spirit at the end of the day. And despite that, they come in 
with every expectation of making London. As we mentioned yesterday, they're already at the World Finals at the end of the year from winning Katowice. They're going to throw an attempt at the Spring Finals as well. And I say attempt. Who can really stand in their way, Harry, in this bracket? Anyone? Well, elevated trying. <laughs> sure. I want to try and take away this ramp control again. They've mollied off short. So that gives them a bit of a route to do so. Zontix, in the meantime, is working this B control. And even though he checks for peeping, he's not going to come out ahead in that fight. So nice start here for Elevate. Man, if is taken. Oh, swiftly returned, of course. Smoke spam goes their way, and they spot MRC walking down through short. They're tucked in at the sandbags. Not ready for this. There is a molly on Magix, but he plays his hand nice and early here. Will be caught fighting, and so Chopper's going to get that trade. They keep going with the aggro in at ramp, and Magix just collects every one of those kills. There goes way too early there. He's already lost two players on ramp. Spirit, the last thing they're thinking about is a player hiding at sandbags. If he just waits for his teammate who's rotating in, he can swing with him, he can yeah. play with him. Maybe I he don't... hears the molly, he gets scared, but it was never for the sandbags. I don't, yeah, it's like, I don't disagree with him trying to fight that eventually, but you're dead on. I feel like if... He even if it was an extra second, you know, like That's one nuts. extra second of yeah. waiting, suddenly you're in a way better spot. Because, you know, on the flip side, if he sits there for ages, tries to play the long con and then just gets mollied, it's like, oh, round over. So he's trying to, like, play that perfect bit of timing, but yeah, just a second too soon. Could have been more. And all those moments really are going to prove to matter in a game like this if you're Elevate. This time, Spirit move away from the B lobby entirely. Ooh, plays being made. MRC coming in on the flank. Snav in the middle of the site. The nade is good, but Spirit have one right back. Everyone battered in this bomb site and spraying will give them room to get this plant down. It's Magic's on the bomb. They are picking Elevate apart right now. Take on the bomb and everything just to, oh. oh man, I mean, I feel like most of LA's deaths have been through smokes. So kind of give it a bit of a, a rough end of the deal here. There's that flank coming in. One kill from the Deagle, but now it's the only man left to look at. And so everyone is for Spirit. He knows he's going to get pressured here, but the Deagle won't find any more. Yeah, Spirit playing as a unit right now, just kind of grouping, going for hits. The one round they lost, they attempted a B split. And, uh, well, the B component of that didn't go too well. So, for the most part, just waltzing up a ramp with very minimal resistance. It's nice that they have uh, MRC on the, the boot camp with the gang. True. In the same boot camp in the UK as Cole were yesterday. And maybe as brief a tenure. As we said, this is the one map where you feel like if Elevate were ever going to make a bit of a ruckus, it would yeah, be, it would be now, game. right? But at the same time, Spirit know that this has been their weak map, so they've definitely been putting work into it. Not that they're going to reveal whatever, you know. Yeah, the, I the think it's moves. one of these games where it's like, you know, you just kind of play to the level that's required of you. You don't show anything. You don't have to show, not with the major right around the corner. Yeah. So you kind of, you come into this and you almost, you want to make it look like you don't have anything special prepared, right? I don't think I don't think thus far you've really had to see anything crazy. It has just been a lot of these, you know, slower ramp takes or looks up towards B where they take that control early and go back to it a little bit later in the round. Very standard from Spirit so far. I think it's because they, they don't feel that pressure to have to bring anything crazy out. Just playing very grouped. And so at Elevate, three on the site. Orp is here. Zontex might just go right under it. Holding for the crane peak. Ollie pushes Elevate back, Spirit more room as well. Through the smoke, MRC gets his kill. Ugly spray for Donk does get responded onto, and suddenly it's Shiro in a clutch, but we know not to count him out. 1v4, they're everywhere. He can't stick this bomb, he can't get comfortable. Head shown, miss spray, running out of options now. They're gonna start swinging at him. Shiro, every fight in this site, and too many to take. Elevate, surround him, and find their second round on the CT side. All right, then. Can they build upon that? I mean, you know, the kind of temperature check, the, the score that we said would feel pretty damn good for Elevate. Not, a, not, not too far from being obtained here.
And, you know, I think that's really what we're looking at, is just seeing some some promise from the Elevate squad more than anything else. Ooh, Ooh I like this. Aggro start out of dead, but now he's kind of boxed in. Trapped down towards main. All this util coming out to make life miserable for him, and Shiro takes that angle. Chopper and Shiro work in tandem, and they're going to open up this b site play. I like the Elevate a feel with Ling to go for those kind of plays. It's pr oh, my God, p hey, what? <laughs> Pretty crazy. They line up as well. Dontix is still here, but he gets caught jumping, peeping onto a third. So I'm a splendid headshots in the B site for peeping. And Spirit will keep their head down now. I mean, this was a five on three for Spirit. They got gifted that double opener over towards ramp and peeping has pulled it back single handedly. How do they go very split on the defense here? You have Snap over towards mid, who's at least going to be available to like come and help out over towards B, but if Peeping falls in this first fight, that suddenly gives Spirit a route in. That boost, that was really the golden chance, but Magix isn't able to connect the shot. They so say 30 seconds. Yeah. Going to try and walk it late up in towards B. And now Snav has moved over from middle. They're just going to double peek this from the top of default. And they'll lock in that trade. Good protocol there just to make sure you minimize the damage. And you look to lock in the round. Snav will do exactly that. So between him and Peeping, they, they find themselves another. That's now Elevate chaining rounds together. Okay, let's go. We got something here. That was out of nowhere. Two easy kills gifted to Spirit at the bottom of B stairs. But that one's mad. I yeah, didn't think he was even aiming at Shiro, if I'm honest. It was, he was spraying. Yeah, he was looking for Donk. And he got two kills. And you take that every day. And Zontik's a bit of a mistake getting caught swung. But that's, a, that's you know, that's the NA way. Hot hands, Harry. Go back for more. Double dip. Two of three pauses used for Spirit. That is an interesting <laughs> statistic. That is noteworthy at this point in the game. Damn it, man. I knew I should have picked Elevate. <laughs> I know. I'm still not getting ahead of myself. But already more than they bargained for, perhaps. Chopper and Halley were being very vocal there in that little timeout. It is just down to pistols now, so elevate a solid shot at a fourth round here, and suddenly this CT side is really taking shape. Pistol armor, so still something to work with okay. in the spirit. This is a thought experiment question. If elevate take a map off of spirit, yeah. Is that more impressive than what we saw at a Call and Liquid here in Showdown? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely, yeah. right? 100%. Okay. Because their, their games were more 50 50. Yeah. And, you know, I think there the is some, like, there's some extenuating circumstances, I guess you yeah. can say, with, like, the, the travel situation. I don't think either of those teams are in yeah. top four. Well, but... this is the value. If you get eliminated from the RMR on day two, then you're even quicker to London. Yeah. All right, then. Snap. He hears them coming up short and full flashed, but still good for the double. That's a nice one. You say to your team, did I get him? Did I get him? And they're like, yeah, you got him, man. You got him. Oh, Martin, that's a win. Spirit, Spirit get what they need. Magix gets a oh, God. block kill. They get off the bomb, but there's no worry here. All under control. Elevate. Get rid of those nasty little pistols. All right, Spirit accomplished their goal, shall we say. Now I want to see Spirit really turn it on. Flip that dial. Up a notch, Harry. Yeah, I mean, you know, one thing I'm going to say is, is that, like, I, I think you're getting a very good performance out of both Donk and Shiro right now. So it's not like the, the sort of stars there aren't shining for Spirit. The only guy you could really maybe want any more from is Zontix. 
He's actually, I would say, been having the rougher go out of it, out of anyone here right, towards this B side of the map. I think he's uh, he's struggled at getting in. So you can see Chopper's kind of this. trying to come lend a helping hand there, but nice triple aggression down towards B. They wanted to take that real estate early on. And I've got to say, I think it would have been so easy for Elevate to come into this game and kind of have the pace dictated to them by Spirit, end up playing back within the bomb sites. But that's not what they're doing. They're making a lot of these aggro mid-round moves. They're down to make plays from Spawn as well. That was just a call from Spawn. We're going to go triple fight B stairs. We're going to take away the B main control. And once we've done that, that then frees up the yeah. rest of Elevate to rotate around the map and lean heavier over towards A. And that's exactly where Spirit are going. It's a little unorthodox, but if you're going to win this game, you have to catch Spirit off guard. And that is a perfect play to do it. Three players either hoping we're getting B rushed or we're just getting B defaulted. Let's kill that default player. Let's, let's free up room on the map. Like you said, they've done exactly that. This is still a little uncomfortable, though. Don't get ahead of yourself, because MRC is tucked in behind boost, and with Spirit having this much room, they've worked it out. They oh, they're going to boost. Here. They're going to boost has Donk to up. Be nearby. It's a free kill. Oh, you're not looking up, are you? Don gets his entry. He sees the legs in elevator, and suddenly that advantage you once had is anything but. Bomb against you, and then open the post plant. And Shira's set up at the sandbags here is just a perfect place for him. He's having a very good game right now, is Shiro. And the rest of his team, they feel quite free to try and take these fights. They know they've got that all bearing down from the sandbag. Shiro will deliver the trade. And so for Elevate, you know, this is kind of desperate now. Smoke on the bomb, but Shiro knocks them off. They need to even blow that smoke open, and there's that final kill. It's Donk and Shiro to make it happen. Two players set up top of the board for Team Spirit right now. They pull that one back in spite of it being a, a 4v3 for Elevate. And just as we were saying, you know, we like some of the confidence moves there. They're, they're very passive over towards A. They weren't expecting a boost up. And, you know, I can say fair play to a certain extent, right? But... Got to be prepared for every, everything. And I think if you're Spirit, by the time you get that deep in the site, you know they haven't just completely left A. There's going to be someone yeah. still floating around. And so that's like the, the one position that anyone could be. <laughs> yeah, to me, that's more just showing Spirit's understanding of the map and the game. So if you get that much room when you're a man down, you, you can work out what that player is. It's a great read. Elevate again, aggressive. This time on the ramp side, they got the orb supporting. Donk shooting through smokes. Gonna look for more. Snap will respond, and they don't actually know about the orb just yet. Dare is still here on the angle. This could come as a surprise, but the flash is perfection, and Shiro catches him flying back. Shiro having a game right now. Four on three and no ramp control for Elevate. They are in the dark. They make the right gamble. Three players moving A. Yeah, the one flash they have is on peeping, so they're going to struggle to, like, flash back in and fight for this. Instead, it's uh, it's Snap to fall and Spirit are gunning for eight on the half here. Just two kills away from accomplishing that feat. Peeping a dead man as Shane is finished off, so Spirit will go on to find success down the tail end of their T side. They sit up eight to four. Hey guys, it's Shay Tian. Hi guys, I'm Twist from FaZe Clan. Hello, I am Blame Myth. Hi guys, I'm Hobbit. And I'm playing the A to Z challenge. Yeah, let's go. Alex. Adrian. Alexi B. AZ. Brokey. Blame Myth. B. Body. Boris. I feel like C should not be difficult. Kadian. Ah, Kadian. Uh, Cypher. Cajun B. D. Dupree. D. Jill. Dexter. Dennis. Enox. Electronic. Elish. E. would be Esotag. Forest. F. Freiburg. Fur. <laughs> Fantastica. G. Gade. Grim. I'll skip that one. Holzerk. Halzerk. Hobbit. <laughs> I'll skip that one as well. I for I am. I see. Oh, him? I am? I'll skip that as well. JKS. Jax. Yeah, JW. J for JT. <laughs> That's hard. Oh, Cock from the talent team, yeah. K for Carrigan. Kirby. K. Kim. 
Alpha Lux. Leaf. Now I really cannot recall any like notable player having L. Alfred as well. No. Messi. M for MOTM. Mopaz. Oh, I have to give it something or anything. Napani. Nitro. Nerds. Necrogenesis. Oh, it's hard, actually. That's hard. Oh. There's no way there's only one an O. Oh, oh my god. Oh, I see. Oh, O for Olaf. No, I cannot. I cannot think of it. O, C. Okay, I'll give it as well. P for Fazy. I don't know how to say his name. P H P H Z Y. Team Spirit leading the charge right now. Elevate, they have impressed us actually. They put up a good few rounds there in that first half. They have some nice kind of early round moves, some cool mid-round decisions, but it's not enough to put a stop to just the, the, the raw firepower available on this Spirit squad. There were a couple of rounds down the stretch there where they found themselves with man advantages. They found themselves in what should have been good positions, but Spirit are able to, to win those sorts of rounds, to turn them on their head. Yeah. And so, you know, four rounds, I think that's nice for Elevate, but now it's how much can they sweeten the deal? T side, they get to pull out some gimmicks, perhaps some cheeky calls, some fakes. We'll see what they've got cooked. Oh, it's I a like B split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've got good util to do it. The Molly Smoke combo. Oh, Donk stop jumping. Donk solo B. They want to target him. This is Halfway. pretty common. Halfway smoke over in mid. Molly to shut down a player playing on the other side of the uh, construction. Good luck. Donk is now sandwiched between ramp and mid, and he's got to fight to the uh, to the death there. And it will come quickly for Donk. There finds him. Four on three in the post plant. Spirit was still scared about a player lurking it's at done. ramp. Zontix, this is a super long rotate. It's a save. All right. Damn, are you sure? I mean... They're, they're not going to get fed. They're going to go like super late. But... Sure, no kits. And they're playing passive enough that these kills are not coming for free. The bomb's already half ticked. Spirit will throw themselves in, but there would have to be uh, some huge errors to win this round. Kill comes through. MRC in the site. He's just wiggling and Spirit realizing that this one is too far gone. The hunt will come in. But this is all just for stats, for glory, and for maybe some armor to be saved. It will not. Five rounds for Elevate. The pistol in their pocket. Yeah, only one player at B, and they find the mid kill with that four-man mid crunch. So Donk under a lot of pressure can only take one with him. And I, I love how they're all jumping there. Everyone's yeah. jumping around corners. I was, I was just surprised that, like, for, for Zontix, he's, like, still paranoid about a ramp player and then doesn't commit to wrapping round. I feel like they could have given themselves a bit more time to attempt that 3v4. I mean, they're going to be wrong. They're not meant to win it. They're a man down, but just weird. You felt like they'd seen enough players to know that there couldn't be anyone there. Well, this is the one map in the pool, with the exception of Inferno Spirit's Instaban, that they are, that they could be deemed as uncomfortable on, right? I still want to believe that this is a, a no questions asked match for Spirit, but for the pistol. Clean anti, elevate. They're showing us something, all right. Donk, take any with him. They're, they're, oh, oh, big donk. But I mean, <laughs> so you don't points. win this, right? 30 yeah, HP, yeah, you don't yeah. win this. That was that was a cool, cool double kill, cool collateral. Reality check. They're, they're just running at him. Come on, what do you got? Nothing. But like elevator running at him, man. They they're not scared. They you know, maybe they should be a little bit. <laughs> but they're not scared. It's 
not bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome to EU, buddy. Like the how it feels to chew five gum out, you know, it's how it feels to get donked and there's the there's the uh the reaction to it. Yeah, come on. I face when I get donked. Here we go. Aggro B set up by Magix. Donk has his real estate. They will go back to a late B split. Some noise getting made at A by peeping, but this is mid pressure. Magic just swings in and the headshot comes instantly. Oh. I love, they use this as a means to an end. They're not trying to mid rush. They just wanted to kill. Now they can reset and play as a group. This is a, this is, this is a two round game and spirit. A man down now in their, uh, in their first rifle round. Getting worried. Getting intrigued, mate. That's yeah. what I'm getting. There's yeah. no worry. More than we expected, I think, already. Or at least for me. They force some respect out of spirit in this matchup. Yeah, and I like even the decision here. I think it would have been so easy to kind of try to get ahead of yourselves there and try to react quickly. But as you said, hey, they weren't like using mid as their play as to where they make their move in the round. They hold early on and they wait to see what the reaction is. They're kind of gauging how much spirit want to give them there in the uh, in the 5v4 and they still keep it in their advantage now. Shiro moving over and a move to reinforce this side with Chopper and Donk also alongside him. They flash him in. Chopper dead over on the short side, and so Shiro's got to do this alone. Donk comes through the smoke, but he can't deal with them both. And to elevate, close that gap even further. Oh, the money got now for Team Spirit. A tie game is feeling inevitable right here, right now, as elevate. Look to stun everyone. I love the call, but I do wonder if that Mol Molly actually pushed Sontix out. He felt more uncomfortable. He felt like he didn't have room, and he knew they were going to be there, so he just goes for the fight. But I felt like he could have stalled that swing a few more seconds after taking a step back. The Molly didn't spread. So it's a small detail, but look at the complication that Spirit get put in right there. Shiro with a lovely spray, but he needed three kills. He needed to give Donk the one-on-one. -on -one. He couldn't pick a target. And now we have an eco. So elevate, like you said, destined to level it up. I mean, Matt, even even if you look like big picture outside of this matchup for, for Spirit, this is something that other teams will be looking at and licking their lips over the idea of, right? Yeah. If they're able to, to fall down to elevate here on Vertigo, then anything's possible. Anything is possible, Harry, and that's why we love Counter-Strike. Ramp control taken for the... Don't know about the boost yet. It's for the gap side. Oh no, you're, you're checking that? Okay. Spam damage is great. Pushing up the ramp is denied as Snap's head's on a swivel. And Shiro is now out of the round two. Good night find the low HP snap, but it does soften up two players as they look to move in. Chopper, they're already in the site. They're right here. His Deagle's good for one, but that's it. Two on three. Donk trying to make a play through this smoke. He wants to full send it, and the shot is missed. Plant denied for now. Magic's left up in the 1v2. Can he win this? Snap is low on health from earlier on. This was just pistols for Team Spirit. And now they're watching on as Magix has actually left in a doable spot here. He's got a 1v1 on the low HP player, but that was probably his best chance to win the round right there. And it just sailed on past him. Now Elevate look to get out, play around this bomb, play around the defuse. Magix has grabbed an AK and he just bows out of the round. He doesn't want to attempt it. And so Elevate mm. will tie this game up at eight all. <laughs> okay. All right. Not even a full strength elevate either. That's crazy. That's a great point. They don't have their highest rated player, their AWPA. Dare, I think it was Dare playing it in the first half. Like, to, to no impact. No, it's not like he did anything with it, right? This has largely been five rifles for elevate, and it sees them now with a tie game. Yes, it does, Harry. So the plucky NA underdogs with a stand in to boot. And a tie game versus Team Spirit. Yeah, and no disrespect to Mr. C, you know, MLC, Mr. C9. Uh, like, of all the standards to get, I don't know the relationship with him. It's, they played the RMR with MBG, an American player. This is a German player. Like, I wonder, you, I feel like you could have gotten someone more, well, you know, some, someone more experienced, more well-known. 
but he's holding his own. He's looking good right now. He's playing his role. Up oh. front, great grenade spirit here. They've got to make a statement. Come on, this is where you expect a reality check. Aggression on the ramp for Chopper. He hits his. The orb is out of the gap, and Shiro with the smoke in the way. He can't get this kill. It will fade soon. Options starting to open up. Missed shot for Shiro. He's got to concede. Still a five on four for Spirit and plenty of utility. They're going to use this molly again to burn out the gap side. Shiro's already back. He's fine. But that allows them some more control up the ramp. Chopper. Delay play. They don't oh, have a they, Yeah, they don't have anything to clear him. Nade goes in. You can try spam underneath, but Chopper will go unaccounted for here, unchecked. And so Chopper's in a position where he could win the whole damn round. Flash in a ramp, Shira continues finding kills, and there's Chopper with a latent swing. Will fall at the hands of Snap, but he's done his part, he's done enough, and the rest of the gang will mop that up. So Spirit never let Elevate take the lead. They kind of beat them back there over towards ramp with some well-placed nades, some good util, and nice impact from Shiro's AWP. There's that util, double crane nade coming in. Good time to do it as well, right? Like, that's the other thing. Up until now, Elevate have been pretty measured with how they approach ramp. It's not like they've been running up there and uh, and trying to take all the space. Ramp smoke going to keep Elevate out of the forklift room. And Chopper actually pushes down off of it. So Spirit take a lot of control here. They need to enforce Donk on this B-bomb site. He is a great one-man army, but they have full ramp. They know this has to end B right now. Someone will peel back from middle. So Shiro's close by with the orb. Donk feeling fine for now. There's no nades to put real pressure on Spirit. We've got to see this 1D find an opener, or the round may be dead in the water, as it should be. Spirit looking for double digits right now. Not the cleanest. Orbs turn. Shiro backs up. And he's got reinforcements on the way. As you mentioned, they already locked ramp down earlier on, so spirit feel very comfortable in knowing where this is ending up and they hung around in mid for a bit they haven't seen all the numbers down here towards b but they feel pretty confident now and this is just the b ramp play zontix lends a helping hand and he'll go on to farm up all these remaining kills a nice hat trick from zontix this lead starts to widen spirit chaining together two rounds now putting some distance between themselves and elevate Even if it ends like this, I feel like Elevate have done more than many, most, maybe all expected. Maybe even themselves, but it's a buy round. See if they have anything left in the tank. I've liked how they've used middle. They've not been overplaying it, getting picks here a couple of times in this T side. Three players walk out middle together. Oh my God, it's completely empty. Oh my goodness. They're going to flank Shiro. He might just be dead. He's not even looking. Back turn. Free frag. And they know Donk will be here as well. That is a guarantee. Down on the stairs. Magix is running a rotate from Elevator. They're just going to drop off, block, and find Donk. Oh, they found him, man. <laughs> they don't like what they see. Snap, dead man. Plant coming in in the meantime, but this is rough in a way. You're kind of pincered between ramp and these players rotating in through middle. They start to fall one by one, and Dare is still a far, yeah. far away from this site. Moving out over through mid, but Magix is already Stop. on the bomb, and with that stick, he'll win the round. Spirit move up onto 11, and they never track Donk down. They never yeah. deal with him in that round. He's in a real high-pressure position, but I love how Donk plays that. His team push in immediately, and he just runs through that stair smoke. He doesn't let them box him in at bottom stairs. He comes to fight with Chopper in the site. Yeah, Snap, that's a round-winning kill, to be honest, if Snap can get Donk. They are set up for a post-plant. They have great control, but... No, yeah. like he didn't need to chase that kill. There. It's kind of a, you know, you end up in a bit of a desperate spot. Like, you're planting the bomb, but you're open at every angle as you're doing it. You're worried about ramp. You're worried about mid. Spirit know the position they've got you in, and they're just collapsing down upon it. Hey, they find the gap, but Spirit's reaction is perfect. 
Shiro back to ramp. Again, the flick doesn't connect. MRC finding an entry. Chopper's re-aggressing here. That molly's going to force them up onto the short side, and that's actually given Chopper a bit of a window to aggress down the ramp. He's only got a 1v1 here, but that molly now fades, and they come back and they deal with Chopper. Magix and Donk are in hot water. Elevate want to claim themselves a ninth here and now, and a five on two. It should be doable. They're always willing to give Donk the benefit of the doubt in moments like this. Oh, Molly go. burns Magix alive, and for Donk, not even around most players would look to attempt. He goes for a bit of a spam, and that's where Dare swings him. I think, you know, there are moments where Spirit expect Elevate to be a bit more scared than they actually are, yeah. right? Like 5v2, they don't drag it out. They just throw the smokes they commit. With yeah, and, and they're peeking over the top of default. They're looking for those fights. I think a lot of teams would just, yeah. you know, you see Donk's alive and on name alone, you're like, okay, let's just tuck in and play around the ball. Let's just play safe here. I don't think Spirit were expecting this from Elevate at all. Um, even that CT side, just some of the ways they started rounds, unorthodox was the word I used, like starting 3B, pushing for stairs, getting a kill, fast rotating, happy to re-aggress in mid-rounds. And making the most of this opportunity. And I mean, if you've noticed as well, like Elevate's still are keen to take pretty up-tempo ramp control, but they're not going super fast, even though they are being given a, a decent degree of space, shall we say. Oh and that's because of those nades a couple of rounds ago. Snap is walking oh. right into him. And Zontix realizes first, gets out with a double. Good molly. And the AWP is here to cover as well. So swinging should be a death sentence. Shiro swap sides. Reinforces Zontix with another Molotov. He's going to push further down. Shiro behind Zontix. Oh, no gun out right now. That Molly saves his life for now. Shiro's got a player trapped in the corner. Shiro is missing some shots on this ramp position. His score is great, but a missed trade yet again. He'll have to give it up. Three CTs here. Spirit still in control, but look at the utility available. They're just going to go dry. Yeah, I don't love it, honestly. You know, you, you've saved so much util for this point in the round, and I don't think that playing at contact gives you anything there. It's not like Spirit haven't rotated bodies over to this side of the map. Magic's dead, but Chiro's AWP still lays in wait. Util comes in, and that will at least get Shiro off of these angles, give a route to try and get this bomb planted, but there's that molly. And that buys Spirit all the time they need. Going to try and break this smoke open, and that's where Donk finds him. The Spirit move on to map point. And As they always should have. Yeah, it looks like, you know, the potential for the Elevate upset is slowly but surely going out the window. Well, they've had some rounds here, Harry. They've certainly had some rounds. Something to take home today. Yeah, I think that swing for peeping is the... Yeah, that's super questionable. Like, you have full util. You, they, you're not surprising them. They know they've given up rounds. Yeah, that's like the there. biggest issue. It's not like you've hit some, like, crazy sick and timing as they've just checked it, and now they're falling back, and they don't know that you're there. Like... And Elevate's HEs and Molly's have actually been pretty good. So he had Molly HE. He can, he can get a kill on boost. He can do something with that. Feels like a wasted opportunity. Jump over. Shiro doesn't fall for it. He knows an AWP peak is coming off of that play. Great awareness from Shiro. Doesn't bite the bullet, pull the trigger. And elevate a little less to work with now. Dare's got the orb. Shane's on a deagle. Gonna try and walk her for a ramp fight. Spirit conceding this with the orb in mid, but that's something Elevate know about, so they know they've got ramp room. Up they go. Jiggling this with the smoke, it's nerve-wracking. Zontix will drop that in nice and early. Magic's good angle over here in mid, but the orb moves in, a miss shot from Dare on the AWP. And so mid is not gonna be the answer here for Elevate. There might not be an answer to this one. This is a round where the contact playoff ramp is a bit nicer, but even then, Chopper's ready for it. They deal with Zontix over at short, they know there's a second man here. 
out towards yellow, but there's still more util to come in for Spirit. They've just smoked off the short side, and with 20 seconds, time is running out for Elevate. They've just got to go. They've got to brute force this up the ramp. Ooh. Snap is managing it. Couple of kills from the guy, but time is the problem, and Chopper puts them in caskets. Team Spirit lock it down in the two on three. They put a stop to Elevate on Vertigo, and they move up one map closer to making their way to London. There's this player named Penix, I think. Patsy. Well, let's give it. Q for Kickard. Kickers. Kickard. Kickers. Red Star. A Roman. A Rick here. I don't know how to say his name, an Australian guy. Rain. Star. I think it's Star. Shiro. Simple. S for Skulls. Chi. That's a hard one as well. I have no idea. T. T and B? Tessus. Um, T for Tapson. Uh, myself, I'll just say myself. I just forgot for a second there. <laughs> there is a player, he's very old, but I'm gonna say Ubik. Hmm. I'll skip it. No, I. I cannot think of single player. You for uh, you still low. I also cannot think of any players. There has to be a B. Must be like a Viper or something. V. Um, Venom Zero or something. Is that one? Just making stuff up. <laughs> Vinny. Nah, cannot, cannot recall any players. I have no idea. Damn, I don't know the W either. W or X. Damn, I actually these ones are hard. Does a coach count? Is that the player? I don't know. I, think, I don't know. X Taz is the only one that I can. I can think of. Old player. It's a. Uh, ah, okay. Zipnix. Yuri. Why? <laughs> I have no idea. Mm -mm. Nope. I can't think of anything. Okay, Z, I got Zyphon. Z? Zaywu. No. I don't know. Well, this was supposed to be a blowout. This was supposed to be easy, nice and quick, get us ahead of schedule. This wasn't even supposed to be a contest, Bubski, but Elevate had other plans. That was, that, that's not a bad showing whatsoever. Their CT side really felt like what let them down because the T side, they were able to overrun this defense uh, quite a few yeah, times. I mean, we've seen uh, Spirit being weak on, on this map particularly, but uh, to this extent, I, I wouldn't uh, have, to have dared to set that uh, uh, that Elevate is going to get nine rounds against the likes of Spirit. It's a really weird situation for those guys because they're so dominating on some maps and then all of a sudden we see a Vertigo coming this close. Yeah, it's it's been it's been kind of I mean that was that was the big exposure at the, at the RMR was that Vertigo just not a very strong map for them. And, and, but I mean I would have expected their T side to struggle a little bit more considering the ways you can lock things down on the entry with utility. Um, still, regardless, I mean, do you put this down mostly to, to the map that's being played, or or do you look at this and say, man, you know, Elevate played one of those games where they weren't afraid of anything, they weren't really second guessing, trading was on point on the T side. Um, they look like they they weren't like kind of thrown off by by the disparity. Again, at all. I do, that's 
the most important step as an underdog coming into this game, right? That is that you're gonna go into that game and not really be scared that it's Dunk all of a sudden peeking you, right? Um, they've played a, a lot of pucks, these guys, together, and this kind of felt like one for them, in my opinion. They they took the duels, they tried to play on the individual skill, which is kind of impressive considering that uh, actually Shiro and Dunk was having a pretty good game on the individual side of things. So um, being able to contest to this amount of uh, rounds against uh, the world's best team is uh, nothing but impressive, really. And you have to imagine if, if you're Spirit, this has got to be a map that they've kind of identified after the RMR and certainly maybe with a little bit of a rougher game here that they say, yep. you know, this is a map we got to make sure that we have under control come come. come yeah, I mean, I think Magisk said in an interview that they had a week's break, right? So that can also be a little bit of an interesting angle, but I think they've had time to get back into the pace and they're all so, so good individually that it shouldn't really be a topic, but uh, Elevate make them um, look not bad, but they look them to be pressured in, in certain situations. Yeah, do, do you think it was they, Spear might have been caught off guard a little bit by the amount of fight back they got? I mean, like, you, you come into this and, and, you know, players have that kind of attitude of, of you know, like, they, we're, we're so much better than yeah. this team. Like, it, you know, the whole concept was let's just come in and play our game, play solid Counter-Strike, don't need to do anything fancy, and then all of a sudden they're getting kind of punched in the face. Yeah, I mean, I right. think they played more intense than what Spirit might have expected. I remember some rounds where Shiro was in the middle holding the, the standard orb angle, right? And then the guys from this T-side is just jumping for him and, like, initially holding that angle. It's like, they weren't too scared to play Counter-Strike. Sometimes we see the lesser team, they overcomplicate things a lot, like trying to throw a million flashes, nobody takes any space, but here they just yeah. do a jump get the information, get the angle. It just shows you that they got these little tricks up their sleeves. Yeah, we saw the scoreboard up earlier as well. Peeping had a good game. Snav had a good game as well. Those, those guys did some damage and were able to, <clears throat> excuse me, find some find some pretty cool kills and, and, and make things work for Elevate for a little bit. But um, still, uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of weird. Like praising Elevate so much, they still lost thirteen to nine. They didn't really challenge down the down the stretch. It felt like once once Spirit got some economy under him in the CT side, once once Elevate no longer had that economic advantage, um, you could kind of see that this game was going to get closed out in a matter of. Yeah, time. I mean, I think we already know before going into that game that elevate getting nine rounds if you tell them that this morning that they're going to get nine rounds against spirit they're probably taking it right i think they did a, a great game but now they also moving on to the next thing which is mirage which i would be a little bit more scared of if i was uh, the likes of elevate we often categorize it as a, a puck map but when you have the individuals on on spirit side with dong and connector and sonsix on short and shiro in the window it can be really rough to just even do a normal default we've seen it before we saw it with heroic yesterday um really just pressuring the the t's a lot in the middle area and i think we're going to see the same today dong constantly taking duels and and getting those entry kills Yeah, I would expect uh, Mirage to be in the likes of, of Dunk. Uh, he is known for that map at this point. Um, he's really a, a unique thing. I think we talk about him too much to even consider that it's uh, going to be anything refreshing that I'm going to say about what he brings to the table. But he is a kind of one-of-a-kind player. Uh, I think he also has a really interesting movement, which hasn't been spoken too much about. When he takes duels, he's really happy about like just doing a quick little crouch and then initially going up again uh, to take the duel. I think if you study his demos, you can actually see what I mean. It's a little bit hard to explain, but he has a, a kind of way to, to certainly take duels. Um, he is a, a one of a kind. He's the biggest talent that the CS have ever seen since I Woo. So it's going to be interesting to see if he's actually able to keep this up. Going up against the likes of Elevates, that's just a confidence, confidence booster normally. Yeah, we've seen players kind of try and put into words what makes Donk so strong because sometimes like when you when you even even in Katowice at like his big like kind of breakout event, I guess we'll call it, 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 it just didn't feel like there was anything special happening. But I mean, all, all the players just talk about his ability to be in the right place at the right time, his positioning and, and the way he takes fights is sometimes throwing him off. But I haven't really heard anyone put like concrete words to really, um, you know, like when you talk about some of the other great players of all time, when you talk about Nico, you can talk about his game sense, his crosshair play, but how he reads the game and the fall follow a peak simple, how he's able to kind of break the rule book and, and do things that nobody else would even think of, Zaiwu and his consistency. We're still kind of looking for that factor that defines Donk yeah. as as an individual player. I mean, player. I think he reminds me a lot of a, a young Santeris, just better, right? I think remember seeing uh, Santeris at his first ever LAN event in, in 
an in international stage. I think it was Copenhagen Games. He came into that space shoulder roster with a bunch of unknowns and really just destroyed the likes of SK Gaming back then. And he was just so impressive. I think he did 180 in his first LAN tournament. And I think he reminds me a little bit of what he brought to the table, like those hard strafes. And I think that's what really, he got those Dunk Peak, like we talk about the Ferrari Peaks, right? And I think Dunk Peak has also been a thing sticking to his name now at this point that he's really just a, a tough one to deal with in, in mid-round situations. Yeah, well, tough one to deal with. And then, I mean, you want to add on to what makes him even more difficult is you're not only playing against Dog, Shiro is is obviously there with the AWP, which can make things sketchy. Zontix is, is playing well, solid, solid role player for this squad. Um, touch on a number of times, the rest of this team just seems to be stepping up. So even if you stop Donk, you've got a, not, a lot of other strong players to contend with that's making Spirit a very dangerous team. Um, on this map of, of Mirage, as we're coming up to, where, where if you're Elevate, are you kind of pointing for a weakness, pointing for a game plan and say, let's let's at least establish this as step one I mean, of Mirage? They should probably look into how overconfident Dunk is going to be in the start of the game. Like, if they're able to hit the sides while Dunk is found in the middle area of the most games, then I think it's going to be interesting to see if they can actually punish Magics or Chopper on the anchor rolls. It's not going to be the easiest test because those players have also really stepped up initially. So, I wouldn't bet my money on Elevate. Uh, I think they've played a good game of Counter-Strike <laughs> now, but now they are potentially meeting the best team in the world on their best map. All right, avoid Donk. Let's see if they can do it. Let's see if they can hit the extremities while Donk is occupied in middle. We're off to a break. When we come back, map two, Mirage. Spirit on the verge of eliminating Elevate. It's going to be Harry and Hugo. We'll see you there. Spirit maybe left a little stun locked. His Elevate look relatively impressive in that first game. It still ends up being a Spirit W on a map that they have had, you know, some mortality shine through on. 
but now we get ready to head to Mirage, Hugo. This is this yeah. is a, this is a spirit classic, man. This yeah. is one that they're real comfortable on. This is one where everyone uh, is going to be in their element. And on the other side of things, for Elevate, you know, do you think that was the height achieved? Do you think that was the the yeah. limit reached? Because GG Bet seem to think so. Look at them odds. Yeah, that should be the peak, uh, I think, for Spirit. I definitely would presume that they were caught off by some of the things we saw for Elevate, their eagerness to fight, some of the setups, uh, the, the lack of fear, to be frank. And, well, now we go to a map where Spirit have no reason to be scared. And if they're expecting a couple of swings, then maybe Spirit are going to be good to deal with it. Donk on this map is a joy to watch. So, yeah, full expectation that this will be a lot more dominant than Vertigo. But again, let's just wait and see. Let's find out. T-side start the spirit. The Chopper Classic. Mm. And four armored players. I wish we could get a side-by-side -side of New Look Chopper and Anders. Because I think they actually look pretty similar to each other now. Okay. I'll hold you to with, that. The, with the head shape. Maybe that's something someone can work on. Send it through. Top con smoke. And out under come spirit. Bomb is B, but it's... Oh, no, not spotted yet. Three here. Gambling. Good gamble. Headshot. One health on Shane. I'm going to come hunting, but they're all here. He finds it through the smoke. He chases more. MRC back of the site hits his. There's everyone on this B bomb site right now. Zontix can't get comfortable. Look at this guy. Oh, Last guy left. He's looking through. A peeping Tom. Oh, I love what I see. And here we are. There's one. Oh, any more from Peeping? Any more? The answer is no. Shiro puts a stop to him. And so the pistol round belongs to Team Spirit. The old 5B pistol. Elevate really are just trying everything they can to catch Spirit off, but still dealt with very well. Good entry from Donk. Well played for Zontix to not overstep. And meanwhile, the mid split is well timed. Spirit find a pistol. Lovely. This one, just a little walk down through mid. Shiro, hello. The chance to make some money. Oh, oh just the one and done, actually. As a bomb. Not planted yet. They fake it out. Wait to see if anyone's floating around at CT, but they're not. This one's just quick. Quick little kick to the curb. Donk's running away. Mortal. 20 health. So just ensure this round is clean. Oh, and it is. Would it be like Chonders? <laughs> Would it be Chanders? What sounds better? Chanders sounds better, but Chonders is like more of an even split. Um, Are you kidding me, Chanders? <laughs> I think Chanders. Chanders is better, yeah, isn't it? More like a I wish his character. name now was Andlers, because then it would be Chandlers, and that's a way easier one. Yeah. But I don't know if we can convince him on the rebrand. No. I feel like it's a bit late. Too, yeah, too many years at this point. You workshop this, Harry. There we go. There, there he is. Oh, you only get him for a second. I see what you mean, the facial hair. Yeah, right? Uh, there we are. Yeah. Great bushy beard. It is a good look, man. It is a good look. I like that we're getting a lot more shaved heads. And the beard's stellar. I think it only draws more attention to how good the beard is. You really are on hair watch, Harry. I think a lot of people are. Am I going to wake up with no hair soon? Are you going to shave me in my sleep? Please don't. I have a cream for that. <laughs> OK, I believe that. Oh, oh. Where well, that's going. Nowhere fast for MRC. He's out of there. Happy he's been given a second chance. Magic tries to hunt. Oh, it's oh he gets it. That's sick. Peeping pack sight dead. Round done. Yeah, and attempted the chase down through lower, but when that doesn't connect, you are just left saving here. Spirit even get to upgrade on some of these guns. Yeah, I was wondering what, what what was Snav doing. It's like he didn't get the memo on the save, but he will back off now. Come on, man! I just want to go for a kill, man. Oh, oh it's kind of the, the save, but it's very tenuous. Oh, Des heard. Shane is in a 
uncomfortable spot. Chopper's flanking this orb. I don't have faith. The trap has to make noise. Maybe Dare could escape, but A is not exactly safer. Yeah, that's actually like the worst possible fight for him as well. Chopper's 6 HP, but versus the AWP with the MAC-10 and the AWP don't have armor, you love that. Ooh, all the guns gone. Nothing worse than that. Spirit, confident beginning to this game. I think starting T-Side does that for, that for them as well. given Shiro an orb, which safe to say is never a good idea. Eagles on a chain been spotted already. He's just going to get blown to pieces. HGs and mollies. Utah has been very good for Spirit so far. No surprises. Yeah, flaming fists from Chopper on the entry. With Magix and Co alongside him, these pistols get brushed aside with ease. This is kind of or par for the course in this matchup. Bomb has been planted. If anything, I just want to feel more reassured about Spirit. I want them to spank Elevate in this map, Harry. Put them on the naughty step. Because this is a team that should certainly be winning their side of the bracket all the way through. Yeah, and you know, especially with, as you kind of touted already, some of the, uh, the fall downs we've had, such as the Falcons. Yeah, that was the biggest threat. Yeah. So yeah, Spirit looking dominant is a is a better eye, a better eye test than Vertigo, which was a bit shaky, and mainly because Elevate you know brought a good level. Well, let's see what this first or oh, sorry second gun well, round has in store. I'm seeing some good smiles there on Elevate, yeah. so at least you know they've reached the acceptance stage. <laughs> They're not in denial anymore. No. All right, big round. Dares on the Yorp again. And Spirit, just a full A lean from the get-go. They're just yeah. going to throw in an exec here. It's Molly. Pressure is on for Shane as the one man inside of the site. They cancel it, they get blocked by a smoke. Oh, that's an old school smoke. In the window, I presume. Yep. They'll go back to a form of an execute, but they're waiting for the lurkers out mid and lower. Yeah, I think this is like the worst round for Elevate to be dealt. Is is so much anxiety in a round like this. You've not really seen anyone yet. There's not been much of a hint as to where Spirit are looking to end up. And they don't have any, like, crazy info to react to, so they take a bit of a triple lean over towards A. At least means they've got numbers in the right place here to elevate. Donk on the entry makes it all the way over the stairs, but Shane will catch him. This is weird. They need those comp players. Magic is only just arriving, and they're being held from the short side right now. Going to try and maneuver up and around past him. That's where MRC brings the fight to these players down in Khan, and so Elevate are looking to get on the board here and now. It's only Zontix left standing. But Spirit, this is a bit of an odd round. It's one where they get blocked over the wards ramp. They try to change that up on the fly by going late out through middle, but it doesn't It doesn't kind of you know come together how it's supposed to. Donk is very far forward. He thinks he's got good timing, but really he's being held by a player in the site. Yeah, that would and, have unraveled if he got that kill. Yeah, and then you know those players up through Khan actually get pressured and pincered on either side of the connector. So a mixture of awkwardness for Spirit because of being blocked at ramp and then some weird timings, but also some nice reactions out of Elevate to actually, you know, pressure that man down in the connector. And that's when at 50 seconds before Spirit's second exec is in, Elevate don't have a single bit of utility left. I think they had one flash, that was it. So Spirit burnt everything out, but yeah, the timing of the split wasn't perfect. And with Donk dead, they had nothing left. Elevate on the board now. 
Orb's still here, going for a mid pick, burning while he does it. A stalemate as Shiro misses his shot. They'll still look to fight back in middle. Oh. Still getting that look for Elevate where they're happy to throw themselves into the fights, chasing out under with the orb covering top mid. Magix is dead. Spirit gonna come out through mid anyway. He's going back for more. Yeah, that's <laughs> one step too far. And punishment for Elevate. Maybe the pace is going to get picked up now as well as they smoke off connector. They look to capitalize on these kills by going fast down short. Rush hour over in mid. Chopper leads the way. MRC playing ahead of the molly he has a chance there, but you, you needed a multi kill out of the guy, really. With the trade coming through immediately, Spirit look to uh, move on to a fifth, and there's nothing that Elevate can do. Uh, that's why I like watching Spirit. Like, even that play is so well done. They realize, okay, we've crossed one guy into the site. We spotted this guy in market window, but the bomb has to cross. Instead of just letting the bomb frame for itself, three players swing together, back from site, close window, and the bomb, all to just, you know, guarantee we're going to trade this kill. That's all we need. We need to trade this kill. We'll get the plant. So they, they never leave a man behind, the spirit. It's a well-oiled machine. Bomb planted, elevate save two, the spirit lead by four. Yeah, and if they don't start finding something soon, this one might very, very quickly get away from Elevate. And the, uh, the kind of surprising start that we saw from them on Vertigo will be swiftly forgotten. Still, you know, we, we already painted this as like a bit of an experience matchup for them, one where they're just going to, you know, you, you kind of have to take a couple of punches to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to learn and to defend against it, right? And so for Elevate, let's just see what they're able to get away with. Uh, we had uh, Bubsky and Jason talking about it in the break as well, in the uh, analysis of that first map, saying that, yeah, you know, it felt kind of puggy at times, like they were down to just base them on individual skill, on individual merits. And I think, you know, there's something to be said for how successful they were in doing that. But when you get Spirit on a map that they're this comfortable on, where the playbook goes very, very deep and everyone has a great understanding of their you know, roles and responsibilities and what they're meant to do, and there's a proven track record. Bomb got lost here. They're down to fight. The smokes are all going to fade. How do Elevate react? Do they just give it up and wait for that bomb to go down? That would be the more standard play, but we've not necessarily seen that out of Elevate. They're still looking to engage. It's a nice angle from the AWP. Will hit the shot. Only damage. Shane wins his. Shane wins too. Ooh. All right. That does complicate matters now for Spirit. They were hoping to actually get some of these fights after oh the smokes fade, but not to their benefit, man. They get shut down across the board. Snap and Shane drive this one home as Shane finishes it off with a three-piece. Like, that was measured. It was off the back of the orb making contact. It was two players fighting in spawn, but then Snav, 4v2 just walks through a smoke, and that's when Spirit are at least expecting, you know, some respect. But they just keep catching Spirit off guard. That's I feel like that's what they've done this series. They've caught them off guard at times. And that's, I guess, that you could use the word puggy. But at the end of the day, they field another round. Top mid aggression, all right. These are some of these opening moves. We saw a lot of these kind of early round decisions to fight for map control. Look nice for Elevate on their CT side in that last map. And this one's no exception. They get away with the kills over in top mid. And now they just have Here to contain go. Palace. But that's where go. Donk moves in. Him and Shiro open up the A site. Bomb now getting planted. And Elevate, a scrambling rotates out through jungle. Uh, her tagging in the molly. And Donk moves in for the kill. He sees blood in the water here. And he hounds them down. Just dare left in it. 
and doesn't even know about Magic's who's still floating around over here in mid. Never spotted, never seen. Elevate might think they dealt with the mid component, so that kill is free. Donk yeah. just don't even look phased, man. That was glorious. He runs in. That was, you know, he was kind of willing to to meet them in the fray and the chaos of those rounds. 3v5 for Spirit, not their first disadvantage they've won. They lose a player top mid boxes to HE, and then Donk just, yeah, Donk just does what Donk does best. He peaks everyone. He kills everyone. Easily done by Donk. He wants out of here. And with more rounds like that, Spirit are onto a winner. Six to two. Yeah, sending it up top mid here. And there are nades out right now. Could be a punishment. Oh, a top mid fight. Snap once again. There to kind of keep things even. And a heavy lean over towards B, but that bomb is on Donk's back, coming out through Ram. And when you see someone kind of playing very safe back towards CT ticket, you're anticipating that there's not many players left to deal with in the site. Shiro catches Snap over on the short side, and now that they see this man in CT just barrel through the smoke, they get the kill. They should know they've got a good deal of real estate here. Spirit had teed up for a seventh, and there's not really anything that Elevate can hope to do. You're relying on Spirit, like, outbraining themselves here. They are still very spread across the map. Chopper's walking B, and... Okay, well, it doesn't matter anymore. Don kills Peeping. No, and now Chopper just gets the info. Oh, he's B, and then they go A, and now the round yeah. is won. I was going to say, if that kill came first, two on three, but no. Spirit already hunting. Dominant T side right now. I mean, what's scary in these last few rounds is it feels like Donk has just kind of taken the, the, the trading weights off, you know? Like, he's just kind of running out up through ramp now in a lot of these and uh, and throwing himself into the gunfights. I don't think he feels particularly challenged over here towards ramp, and that's scary. He's recognized how much room and how much respect he's being given, and he likes the engagements he gets out through ramp. Another attempt at, like, you know, kind of taking this top mid control, but this time it doesn't pan out so nicely for Elevate. I hope we see them try an aggro ramp. A lot of the time, it has just been, like, one player there challenging, usually dry. Oh, I can't lower. Yeah. Oh, they mod him. Nothing unchecked. Did they hit the burn? Yeah, you might not suspect this, right? Like, once again, it comes back to this idea that Elevate are quite confident for a team that don't really have a reason to be. And so they weren't prepared for a player down in lower. Now a util comes out, double nade, and a molly to follow. That's going to force MRC to look for a route out, and it is being held right now. Zontix is moving in, and he's going to catch this kill for free. The AK is lost. That lower player dealt with, and now Elevate... Four on four, they lose the big ticket item as Spirit look to wrap through Shaw into B. Just peeping, they don't know about him, but Donk is killing every rotation. Peeping shows his hand, but that's all that remains. Shiro hitting his flicks, and a man out of the apartment will hear this reposition. So Zontix makes it clean, elevate for yet again on a half by yeah. and eight to two and Spirit I think are making it easy. We've really hit that point where Spirit like, you know, are past the point of yeah. kind of caring about their opponent here. They they don't have any worry. Even there, they have magics all the way through A. They could have gone back with the bomb. I think if they were right. versus yeah. another team, they might have. But here they go, no, they have pistols, we have rifles. We're just gonna go into the stack that we know exists on this side of the map and we're just gonna kill them all. Uh, so I think Spirit really have just kind of any any worry. Yeah. Is, uh, is gone from them. They are comfortable here, the and they are kind of flexing on their opponent. The way in was Vertigo, and hey, we saw a better face than you could expect, but um, well, I'm happy to see Spirit in fighting right now.
Kira with eyes on mid, chopper by his side. Letting Donk work ramp, but they won't give him another chance there. Or at least they shouldn't. Oh, there oh, going for yeah, it. Yeah, something here, maybe. On that fade, though. Oh, he spots Shiro. Yeah, out of there. Had his opportunity. And he wants to go for more. There are three players fighting mid for the CT side. And Snap draws a nice spray. Two kills. Yeah, I mean, Snap has looked good over here in middle, right? He's frequently been the source to these trades or these openers. And this round's no exception. They're actually going to collapse down upon ramp and they deal with team spirit here. So elevate a couple more before all is said and done. Three rounds to their name right now and they're shooting for four on the half. Donk probably just thinking, why do I pull a nade out, man? Like, pull a nade, get flash peaked. Has his gun, different situation. This was a nice spray. Seeing some mechanics on show. And looking for four on their CT side here. Seen in this map, MRC orping over Dare ever since this first orb. But I wouldn't say either of them have done too much with the AWP in the series. MRC, this might be an early kill, and he finds Donk looking for a B push. Which, yeah, I think that's... That's a yeah. huge bit of info, killing Donk there. I think that's MRC's, like, 10th orb kill in his HLTV uh, oh, yeah. career, so... That's true, <laughs> you know, he doesn't get to don it a lot. There yeah, finds another over here on short. This B play might get dealt with. Zontic, sure, it's one kill back, but there's a lot of players here. There's a lot of bodies left to get past, and they're not going to manage it. So elevate chain together too, finding four at the end of this first half. Spirit still hold the lead, and they're looking for a swift victory here to send elevate out 2-0.
Spirit making it clean and easy, at least in comparison to Vertigo. Here on Mirage, it's eight rounds on the T side against Elevate in a single elimination format, looking to send this North American squad home quickly. And to be fair, Elevate did more than what we imagined on Vertigo, but this is where things all should come to a realistic close, Harry. Their run to make it to Europe was solid, but, well, playing the best team in the tournament certainly no easy road yeah i mean you know this is a, a mirrored scoreline of the score on the half of that previous map and there elevate were able to find some success to kickstart the second half and actually tie the game up at eight all but i don't expect them to do that again that's the one worry right they kind of get gifted a couple of rounds there down the stretch the last two of the half going their way and that helps make the scoreline look a lot more respectable, but they need this pistol if they want to have any hope. And not a bad way for it to start, honestly. Shane knocks Chopper out of the round. There's a plant to come through. Spirit is scrambling rotates, but CT's already been taken. Now there's Flash on Shiro. He's going to wait for his second teammate to move in. Magix also drops a bit of util back because he knows he's getting fed to the wolves here. Oh, they're flashing after contact. There it goes. There's a contact, and in comes a flash. And so everyone's peeking. I love that call for Spirit. High risk, all the reward. Peeping still firing off, but Magix will silence him. Two on two, and Donk is dead in connector. Magix hit Molly. He doesn't want it. It's too far away. And so Elevate take a pistol round. All right. Kind of very similar to Vertigo right about now. Very similar vibe. And I gotta say, you know, I agree with you. It's a nice idea from Spirit with the whole flash play out through CT. I think that's very cheeky, a nice way of making sure that that flash finds good impact, but it's not enough. Peeping comes out with a double and then Snap delivers this like key kill there onto Donk moving up through connector. Snap's given us a very good game here on Mirage. I think he very much deserves a, a bit of credit there. He's looked good. A lot of these uh, rounds in the first half when they were finding success over over in middle, they came on the back of Snav. So, pistol round locked in. I wonder what the call's going to be from Spirit. Yeah, you wonder if they buy. I don't know if they would here. Like, if I, I would just want to be getting the guns out as soon as possible with this lead, but the same time it's always nice to play the eagle armor and the self-faith is there and i think you'd see mp9 you see a scout kevlar perhaps the eagle armor is all you need eagle man armor is all you need but you know you can just get beat by utility at that point and they'll buy and yeah that's a thing. see mp9 but no, not a, not not a, a deagle. deagle sight yeah, man i don't think deagle armor if my name was donk yeah i would buy deagle armor well luckily it's not and I would have got Shiro to drop it. <laughs> okay, we've got... And they Magix. would have said, you're sabotaging the team, bro. What are you doing? And I would have said, just trust me, man. Do you trust tro Chopper? Surely. Uh, maybe misplaced. 99 damage. And they're saving. Fair. Yeah. Run this back in the next. Get to play with all these MP9s. All I'm saying is... It's another round. If Chopper had the Deagle... <laughs> <laughs> he would have he would have killed there so you know live and let live so nice of you to let him off like that okay six to eight it's just like vertigo uh, Everyone, wanna... everyone's rubbing their hands together no way they're gonna tie it up again wa... no way they're gonna tie it up again i don't want spirit to lose this to be honest there's like i think they need that would just be disappointing okay but to make a statement like that i'm gonna have to ask you to list off your 13 reasons why Terrorists number win. six <laughs> they won katavita okay number eight wow you're not even going in chronological order number 12 it's elevate man yeah come on yeah well hey man this is a big opportunity for elevate to move to tie this game up you know they're gonna have to deal with that force buy again essentially so you know you have to play this next round like it's a full rifle they're under no disillusion that that was a uh, a complete save out of team spirit Man, it's like every pistol apart from the good one Run it back, Chopper. 
And is just ask Heavy God what he would have done. Fair. Yeah, right. Exactly. Very uh, fair. Shut you up. Yeah, you got me there. Just break them all. Hey, man, don't worry. I'm just on a diet you right now, bro. Uh, <laughs> we've got a similar round. B stack with their triple kind of mid side, so it's only magics. He'll need some help. He's got nades. Nades are good. Nades are good. They're going to be worth their weight in gold here just to soften up this hit and slow it down. Churned Ooh. up by the util is MRC. He's wrecked by it. AK at least retrieved. But this isn't the start that Elevate wanted. They go a man down early, and now they set their sights back towards the A site where Snav resides. He's been good here. Chopper's position is very, very dangerous. He'll move. No longer open to the palace swing. Sits under the balcony. One kill would go a long way for Chopper, but he's armorless. Oh, caught in middle. But this is just the A hit, and he's getting caught going up the ladder. That's a lucky grab for Snav. He gets it in time. As the flash comes in, Shira on the cross. Couple of MP9s outgunned by the AKs. They shouldn't have a chance. And now it's just his pistol back in spawn. TK oh, no. in the mix, but they've got him blocked in right now. The nade will finish the job. Time is the question. 15 seconds, he can make a hero play. Oh dear, oh dear, Zontix tries to steal it, but he can't stop the plant in time. A bit more damage through this smoke. Don't count Zontix out of this one yet. Oh. Moves into the bomb. Yeah. Oh my god, he's sticking he's it. Got it. He's got the kit, and they're not even firing. They call his bluff. No, pros don't fake, man. Zontix grabs that defuse right from under their oh, noses. That hurts. And that is a sucker punch of a round, a gut punch for Elevate. You just don't think he has a kit, but he grabbed Magix, who bought it the round prior. They were holding on to that after the save. And yeah, last thing you expect, Zontix realizes I have time on this smoke. They will not fall for it. They will not call my bluff. And there's even a TK in there, which actually does have consequence. Nine rounds for Spirit off the back of a steal. Aggression out towards ramp as Chiro's here with that AWP and Spirit are looking to change the tune of this second half. No equalizers today for Elevate. Instead, they're going to be left grinding and not looking like they're going to be able to find this way back in as Shiro and Donk just absolutely yeah. annihilate them. A rush with no smokes, that's what you get. Yeah, Spirit up on a double digits now and Elevate down in the dumps. Their time on European soil looking to draw to a abrupt close here. Some nice moments, sure, but as the money runs dry, they're running out of time. They're running out of chances and it's chances that Spirit are not keen on giving away for free, not keen on giving them. Yeah, just super heavy, he uh, heavy A from the start and um, with the AWP, with Donk there who just swings out jungle and gets two kills before anything even happens. That's the firepower there for Spirit showing true. And Donk oh, back God. to his usual tricks. He's holding W and now S. And now D, and he's swinging down in the lower, but he gets decapitated by Dare. That's the one AK in the round. Oh, the kill out of Snav now. I don't oh cook. dear. Dare will get mollied out down towards lower, but there's another guy there to retrieve the gun. So this one's got some legs on it for Elevate. Magic's up in the window, tries his hand at a peak and reclaims the three on three. MRC dead as well as they collapse out through the connector. Chopper is safe and in the palm oh, yeah. of his hand, Spirit. Regain control over that round there. Look at the way they trade contacts. It's so good. And every time someone gets a kill, the eyes of Elevate go to that position. Then they get swung, shot in the back. That's just a beautiful play for Spirit. They know all of Elevator in middle from under and upper. And they just frag out. I mean, two of those players still have clocks. They haven't even grabbed guns yet. So Spirit just pounce. Shines of light for Elevate in this series, but it's starting to dim. Donk through the smoke finds peeping. More rifles where that came from. Donk through the smoke again. And Shiro even hit his. So Elevate are not getting to play their game right now. They are subscribing to the spirit mentality and faces get blown off in this round. Back to back, clean kills in middle.
Yeah, and I mean, you know, the fact that a lot of these rounds have just come down to kind of dry fights, I don't think that's ever going to help you. I, I think there's one team, if you had to pick any team that you don't want to be just fighting on a level playing field on equal terms with no youth still to help you out, it's got to be this spirit squad. There's so many players here that thrive in that environment, whether that's Donk, you know, rushing out and looking for those fights in mid or Shiro scoped up on the AWP. It's, it's a terrifying state of affairs over here in mid. And they've lacked the, uh, Do it again. they know how to really pressure that. Donk is still just sticking to his guns here on fighting for this mid control. That's how he likes to play the map. He's very in your face in middle. They know this is coming, but can they stop it? Great damage on the nade. 60 damage, HE up in the top mid. Snap takes the brunt of it. Just sprays them down, quick as you like. Damn. Snuffed out. It's a good try from Elevate, but very reassuring that Spirit, you know, they don't even let this one get any closer. They go for the throw, they've locked this down in middle, and they'll end it here with Shiro, that final kill. Sending Spirit on, they'll keep on competing, but for Elevate, this one draws to a close. A nice performance on Vertigo, and they get it to be interesting on Mirage, but it was never meant to be. Well, there we have it. A nice victory for Spirit, kind of as expected, but still, I think you'd say, like map one, this was 
This was a closer game than I think we initially thought out of the Yeah, I mean, I think I said uh, yesterday that it's going to be the most obscure matchup in terms of like level that I've casted or, or been an analyst on, but it, that was definitely not the case. I think Elevate played way above, above expectation, and if it wasn't for Dong, I, I know it's easy to say, I, I think it would have been a lot closer. Yeah, I mean, he's just such a force to be reckoned with, especially considering he likes to play on the front line. So he's, he's always there to kind of whittle you down, even when you're playing well. Um, it feels a little weird in a, in a 6 to 13 loss saying that, but I, I think, you know, on some level, mm. like you said, we, we sort of expected this to be a pretty quick blowout. And, and both maps offered a little bit of resistance, but obviously not enough there in the tank for Elevate to, to last an entire map, an entire series against a team. Yeah, and the crazy player. part, if we look at the scoreboard, right, we see Dunk had a great game, but if we actually dive into the game and look at the rounds where he's having impact, it's so many many buy rounds in a row where he just makes the outcome go in the favor of Spirit, really. So if he um, was just playing a tad worse, I think we would have seen an even closer game coming into to this elevated roster. Yeah, or maybe just a little bit more pedestrian. That would have been that would have been something. Either way, uh, that's Spirit eliminating Elevate. Spirit is going to move on in the showdown. We've got an interview with Zontix after the victory to talk us through how the series went in his point of view. Zontex, congratulations on the win, but I think this is the win everyone expected you guys to be able to get to start off your journey here at the Blast Showdown. I want to ask you about Vertigo because the community and other people look at this and they say, oh, this is the map that like Spirit's not so strong on. They can't do as much damage on. It gets close even against Elevate here. Do you see this as a map where you guys are not comfortable or need more work on it? How, does, how do you view it from the Spirit side? Mm, no, I don't think we have uh, any problems, you know, you know, when you play like uh, six maps, you always have uh, some problems and after you fix uh, problems on one map, you have problems on other maps, so it's just, you know, in, in, a, in a circle. So, I can't say it's not comfortable for us, like, I, I think we just need more practice because we haven't played, uh, before RMR we haven't played Vertigo for like, maybe a month and a half. I don't know. So yeah. it's just about practice, I think. It's it's not like it's not comfortable for us. It's okay. Okay, so just some more reps needed on the map. But this was a very comfortable game for you guys, I would say. And then looking at this Mirage, that little uh, 2v1 defuse you managed to pull off. Did you expect them to at least try and fight back? Or did you did you just think, okay, I can be smarter than them? Uh, no, the only problems, uh, problem I had, like I was thinking that probably smoke will fade before I could defuse. <laughs> so I knew one guy is low HP and the other guy is with him somewhere. And uh, they don't know, but I have kids. So I thought yeah. I can defuse. And uh, Chopper said, defuse, like you can defuse. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah let's go. And... <laughs> let's go and you secured it as well well that was a that was a great start for you guys for sure and i want to say for looking at the whole showdown though we looked at your side of the bracket as maybe falcons could be a team that would challenge you guys but now they're eliminated as well do you feel like you guys are pretty much guaranteed to get the spring final do you think it would be like a huge upset if you didn't win a spot here at showdown no no i i, I don't have any expectations to be honest like i think uh the we should go through, but it's not like, uh, you know, we can't lose under any circumstances mm -hmm. because like anything can happen. So we're just playing and uh, I think our game at the moment is enough to go through. So yeah, I, I think that we have all the chances to make it to, to the London. Zontix, uh, humble as always, making sure he doesn't feel any pressure. So that is the final quadrant of the bracket that you have up on your screen, starting to fill out in the top left. Spirit beats Elevate. They move on to the quarterfinal. Uh, they face off against the winner of Gamer Legion Big, uh, which is going to be our next game of the day. We can bring up the schedule for the last two matches. That is just the first one. We still got plenty more Counter-Strike here at the Spring Showdown. Uh, Big Gamer Legion next match. Cloud9 saw to close out the day, uh, the big names that are coming in there. And and this next matchup is kind of an interesting one. Big has just made roster changes. Gamer Legion as well, one of those teams that's a little bit sad mm. coming um, coming out of a loss at the RMR in the last chance qualifier as well, right at the final hurdle. They just couldn't get it done. But before we dive too much into the matchup, we've got an interview with one of Big's newest members, JDC. We get to see JDC on Big here. And I want to first ask just... As a German player, does that come into your mind of like a team that you still wanted to be a part of? It was still like an end goal for you, considering you've been on like the Maus and the Zero Zero Nation projects? Well, I've been always very international, I would say. And 
yeah. in the beginning of everything, I didn't expect myself to end up in the big roster, to be very honest. And I as well uh, didn't call it German for a very long time. <laughs> but overall, uh, I'm very glad it happened this way. And I'm super happy to be in, in the big roster now in the big jersey and represent Germany here. So I'm very looking forward to taking new challenges. And talk to me about how it's looking right now in this big team. You guys have already played a few matches. We've got games against Bleed, Amcal, Young Ninjas. But we're still obviously in very early days. So where do you put yourselves as a team being ready currently? I think it's it's still a long working process ahead of us. We have a couple of role changes. I, I as well as a player, changed a couple of roles since I left Mouse. So uh, the big guys did a great job until now to give me a lot of space and help me feel comfortable in the roster, which of course means that other people as well had to change some roles in the team. And so for that, we have a little bit of a learning curve, I would say. Uh, overall, since the last officials, we did uh, a lot of work, I would say, so we can improve on the mistakes that were costing us games. Uh, we try to simplify a lot of stuff so we feel a bit more ready for this tournament because obviously it's very important for us. And it's the first big tournament yeah. for us as a roster, if you would say. So uh, I think we are good enough to win games here for sure, but uh, we are just at the start of the journey. Just at the start of the journey, but still feels like uh, they've, they've got some good things going for them. Recent results wouldn't necessarily suggest that quite yet. JDC and uh, Searson joined the team. They've lost a series to Bleed. They've lost a series to the Young Ninjas, and they've just narrowly beat, narrowly beat mm. Amcol uh, in a best of three series as well. So, I mean, early returns on this big lineup, yeah. It, still, they've got some growth to do, uh, Bubsky, but it wasn't the No, but I start. think it was a... a um... A very decisive and great decision that they actually decided to part with with Mantu, not because he's pl playing poorly or anything like that, but solely just because he's not speaking German, right? So getting Suzan back into that roster, especially online, then I, I think it's going to be better. I think Suzan <laughs> has a, a period in the online era, I remember back in days, where he was literally one of the best orbers in the yep. world. It was absolutely crazy. He's not terrible on land, but he's just that better online. And I'm not saying it in any uh, bad sense, because some players are just more comfortable at home with the cope by their, their side and just having a little easier time time dealing with the situation yeah he started he started picking up his land game towards towards the end of his last stint in big uh but, but obviously still like you'd say the online counter strike is kind of his, his home territory at the moment so expecting uh, uh great things out of him coming back into this lineup especially in this showdown we got vertigo overpass and ancient as the maps that'll be played um let's let's shift this over to to the other side uh to the gamer mm -hmm. legion side as well because um as i mentioned a team that that's got to be in a little bit of a heartbreak this is another one of those teams eliminated from the last chance qualifier they were in that last game against nine pan mm -hmm. It was Snacks, it was Seas, both of them trying to return to the majors. Snacks comes out on the losing end, but um, I, I think still there's there's like a, a positive vibe around what this team is able to accomplish, yeah. considering the rebuild they had to go through from the Paris I think major. that game uh, at the end towards the armor where Chaos, yeah, I'm not trying to do a witch hunt on him, but he has probably one of his worst games in his career, right? He was really the deciding factor because it was solely so close. And I can understand from his point of perspective that it's going to be hard to move on from a situation like that because it's not easy being the guy who's not the one basically throwing the major but it being a big reason of why you're not making it right so i'm going to be interested to see if gamer legion is going to keep for these five because that hurt losing that armor in that fashion while being so close right it's, it's it's a gut punch really i mean this this is just by world rankings i mean this is gamer legion ranked number 15th on hltv and, yeah. and big uh ranked 29th do you do you feel like uh this is kind of an underdog this feels more of almost like a 50 50 to me in yeah. a way where, where do you kind of yeah i would agree matchup? i think uh big um, has a full german lineup now it's going to be easier to communicate i think the philosophy of tapson and gob b is easier to implement and should also go faster considering suerson has been a part of this roster for a long time beforehand uh, i have a lot of uh, um, faith in this project of, of big not going to be a top five team but certainly better what they've shown in the last couple of months uh, solely due to the communication aspect i also think susan is an equally good orb as main too so it's only going to be a benefit for them if you're asking me 
it's, it's, it's kind of funny seeing Big ha having gone from that, like trying to be the German team, and then they kind of flirted a little bit with a few international players, bringing in a couple different kind of trials, fifths, uh, mixing things up a little bit more. They've, they've kind of returned to those to those German roots. So still, um, still one of the few orgs out there trying to, I guess, wave a, a regional flag instead of going full international. Yeah, and I also think we've seen success. I think Santaris was actually a question mark for what, to me why he was left out. Uh, he was actually one of the, the few international players who consistently performed to a level where it made sense to keep him on the roster and I would have loved to see a combination back then with Santaris and Taps and I'm really building out from that duo if you could see like Crimbo stepping into it they could maybe have gotten a, a good international orb at that point as well so it's interesting I never really understood why he was left out but uh, maybe it's gonna be spoke about one day yeah, maybe we'll hear all the stories. Uh, on the other side of the coin, Gamer Legion, Snacks as the in-game leader. He's been doing a pretty good job as he tries to reinvent his career uh, from, from one of the really early great players that we had in CSGO. Um, spent a lot of time out, but Gamer Legion on the rise. Big, try to make this new lineup work. Um, we're going to get into the series, Bubsky. Do you have any final thoughts on uh, just one word? Who's going to win Gamer Legion Big? I think due to, to Suosun being uh, online again and being able to actually take over games. Um, he's going to be interesting to follow. Perfect. Well, we're going to get into the game. Scrawny and Launders, take it away, baby. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning. Um, Good afternoon. Scrawny and Launders here for the second and third matches of the day. We got big and we got Gamer Legion, Mo. Uh, in, a, in a sea of uncertainty at the moment with some upset results back and forth across the board, it's nice to see familiar faces. Gamer Legion, first season of being a Blast partner. Big, consistently present when it comes to the showdown or the groups, and usually the season finals. You know, I still die by the saying that Big is best at Blast, but this is a reinvigorated Big. This is a Big, of course, with JDC and with Searson, um, and a Big that I wanna know does this new roster shuffle excite you? Yeah, you know it does, Connor, because it's so funny because I was looking at the, when we talked about this at groups, it was over the big game about, you know, big potentially being all German. And when you compare this roster to its latter, last iteration, it's not as if they just clearly upgraded their two players. The one clear change is that they're literally all speaking German now, you know? Uh, where I guess you could say one objective advantage maybe is the fact that they can all communicate in German. We could see how that could play out in the long run. But in terms of, of quality of players and recent results, like JDC said, they feel like they're just at the beginning of their journey. And um, someone like Searson, for example, he's just not playing that well yet, but we know how well he can play. So assuming that gets better, then we still have more to see from them. Excited to have JDC back in a team at this level of Counter-Strike. Uh, his pregame interview just so well uh, articulated. Uh, always a great interview and somebody who I think, you know, when rising through the ranks with Mao's NXT represented what that team stood for um, and was able to kind of share their perspective and, and their growth, you know, so to have him back and uh, giving English interviews, but then switching to German in the server. It's a cool place for JDC to end up after his Mao's departure. And I think he was sounding more German in the interview, even when he was speaking A little English. bit. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. you're not crazy, man. A little bit. That was bit. like me when you heard me at the Toronto land. I sounded yeah. more Toronto. Exactly. You know, you're a result so, of your environment. Yeah, I wonder if Glaive sounds more Polish now. There's no doubt. So, uh, But nobody more Polish than Snacks, leading the charge yeah. for Gamer Legion. This is, of course, the map pick of Big. It's one where they've recently lost to Young Ninjas. It's one where they've recently beaten Amcal. So I think that, again, kind of touching into JDC, it's like uh, the growing pains will cause inconsistencies. Whereas Gamer Legion have done a really good job of, again, qualifying for a major. Proving that uh, when it comes to that one step beneath top tier Counter-Strike, they are still the gatekeepers. And we'll see if they can do it online versus a fresh-faced German Crimbo squad. Yeah, I like that part too. We're still looking at Crimbo to be the frag leader of this team and the star lurker of the region. He said, big is my home. When the criticisms of him not leaving kind of came forth, it is JDC to open up in the frag department. Good Gush versus Isaac. Keeps his head down, gives himself a second chance. Gives himself a third chance, but there's Crimbo. Speak of the devil. He'll come tearing over through middle, over construction. Good lurk from Searson as well. Crimbo taking all of that attention by jumping down construction. Leaves Snacks to think that he was alone. Second player in middle as well seals the deal. Big, very convincing pistol. 
you know, this is a team that I was I was cheering for, but it's one that actually Maui Snake Snake created with his tweets because he literally asked for these two roster moves specifically, and his prayers were answered. Yeah, it's about time he gets one right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, never mind. Okay. Wait. Okay. Cause a little panic. JDC will come back. The insurance policy that goes down with the ship. Two kills to oh. JDC on the entry was nice. Mm -hmm. or the one rather before Crimbo comes in. Of course, we get the classic big land camp going on. Taps in with the tappity feet, excited about winning pistol. Crimbo got them clean old man slippers. Yeah. Big is always a vibe when it comes to playing online events. Because they're always remember the fruit bowls. Yes, sir. It was. It w but it was uh, Tizian who had the fruit bowls. Remember that dark underground dungeon they played in uh, when, when yeah the German sex dungeon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what you called it. That's that is what I called it. Yeah. <laughs> I I love how they have the uh, sort of like booths here with the player. Mm -hmm. I think that's really. I think this is you know it's one of the things exactly. that that it's a testament to what Big is creating in terms of a culture and a team, right? Tabson says that he likes going into the office. Uh, and this is just beyond boot camps even. He just likes going into the office. He likes being around the people that work as big as at big as an organization. Feels part of a family. And I'd say that their yeah. setup for these kinds of events definitely reflects that. Yeah, I can totally understand. I think it's always gonna be the kind of the question of, you know, do you wanna be the small fish in an ocean or the big fish in a small pond. And I think like traditionally, like the point of that adage is to say like, you want to be the big fish in a small pond. You know, you want to actually, why would you want to be just like super good at something, but just like not appreciated for it. And if you went to in an international team, there's a chance that maybe he doesn't get that recognition on top sure. of maybe, you know, being less comfortable. I think that's all fair. I do think that at the same time, though, you need to pull through with some levels of results, right? That pawn can't be too small. We're talking about a team that didn't even make it to the RMR. Yep. We're talking about a team that therefore is not in Copenhagen next week. So I think that when JDC says this is a very important event for them, you're damn right it is. Because without the spring finals and a chance in London, uh, Big's first season of 2024 continues to stay bleak. So it clean conversion. Like yeah, it, it feels like there's an interesting thing happening with a few top teams, like with Liquid, for example, having almost nothing to play um, in this season. A lot of people are fighting for, like, anything to do now because of, like, missing out at the Major, like Astralis as well. There's just an enormous gap in the calendar for teams you would normally see just definitely filling that up with a Major spot. I mean, they can always download World of Warcraft if things get really boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah, ironically, I think the sad part is like no matter how much you, you can't like boot camp for three months, right? If you're out of the game and not playing officials, yeah, your practice and stuff is only going to do so much. Oh, you're losing like, ground, no doubt. You're losing ground, yes. People are getting ahead of you playing less, just playing more officials. So I think we saw when, you know, Monty grinded for Paris, they played so many online games that that actually mattered because they were playing officials online. Um, but I think, yeah, a lot of people are, are struggling to find what they're going to be doing for these next couple of months without competing at PGL Copenhagen. I would say that Virtus Pro always a good example of that as well, right? Playing the online events ahead of the Rio run. Uh, just get the reps in. Bolt, swinging around on site, trying to hold this ramp peak at bay. It is Snacks to short instead to turn back with the double kill. Searson kind of extending there with no trade potential. He had to pull through with that. Or they're in this spot, Tabson. Well, he gets dropped by Kioz. That was a clean trade as Smoke Plumed and the Flash. Very uncomfortable one for Kioz to get the kill back, but he does. But you push Krimbo into the clutch. Now, this is what Krimbo brings to the table. You know, he's almost this got that Zipex-esque aura at times. Absolutely, you could call him sort of German's Zip, uh, Germany's Zipex. And he's set up to succeed in this moment. It's a 1v2 with time. It's a complicated puzzle to solve. And there are some good shooters on the other side. But, yeah. This is what he's paid to do. Oh, oh my god, he got the shot off. Yeah. That was actually a headshot through the box, I think. Yes, sir. Hits it. Good shot yeah, from that's... him, but good timing from Kioz twice there, right? Trading out yeah. snacks through the smoke and the flash, and then closing in on this one as well. Not giving all of that respect, all of that space, nor timing to Krimbo to clutch. Definitely.
So for an opener, I mean, they've got JDC. We know that uh, Searson was always struggling on the open and kill percentage. That's something he improved on. And then uh, they've got taps in JDC up front. And then we have Krimbo as the closer. A few things need to go right here, of course, for big. But in terms of roles being adjusted, like JDC said, it does feel like the, uh, how can you say, complexion or composition of the team actually looks like it could work. Yes, I agree. Yep. The formula makes sense on paper. You know, you see this yeah. online as a recipe. You believe in it. Mm-hmm. Whether you can cook it up, that's the question. No contest on ramp at all. We got four players just on the brink of it, pushing in. They signed okay. up for this with the passive volt angle, you know. Gamer Legion have chosen to put themselves in this spot. Maybe banking or hoping that it wouldn't wow. come through, but big slip in with the plant to boot. They've got two deagles still in play leaning back. But you've got Tapsing committed to the sandbags. You've got a good amount of utility on Acor. A couple more flashes for Kios. One kid on Volt. One kid to watch for. A little sketchy. Very sketchy. But the lineup smoke. But the defuse goes out. Oh, Oof. hold on. Smoke lands a little shy, I think. It's not oh, going to yeah, cover the does. bomb. And because of that, Krimbo may get vision on it. There's the first tap. He gets oh. the Kios headshot. Volt's trying to defuse it, and it's not going to go down. Deagles. It's not even the AKs they bank on, but the double Deagles to come through with three. Yeah, that's a pretty bad mistake from Gamer Legion. As you mentioned, smoke misses. You can't miss your one smoke on a retake when you were playing an anti-eco in a retake setup. That is totally unacceptable. So unfortunately for Ash, he sees a moment like that, and he goes, well, what, are we, what am I supposed to say? You... You were prepared for a retake. You just didn't land the piece of utility that was the most important part of it. So big capitalize, great shots. And I'm really eyeing Searson here. He's looking like really strong right now. The aim's looking good. He's getting a few sort of hard kills. So, well, that's a good sign for big. But we see the danger of playing retake, even if you have the firepower. Triple B boost. Trying to look down at the stairs, but middle that the contact's coming in from. And Acor's caught out. Close box. Isaac has to disassemble with the Soul AK. And Soul set a Kevlar. He's still in the pocket to make this happen. Construction's gonna serve up a good distraction and get the kill. JDC to Volt. Isaac peeks out with the rifle. Then the second wave of pistols Ooh. comes in and Isaac does his job. He is set up by his teammates on two separate fronts. Can Tapson and Process recover? Galil kills quick. Snacks is right here. Tapson approaches cautiously and gets the second frag. And that could be enough unless Isaac has to go above and then beyond. Four kills demanded of him. Two deep, but four HP. And cautious of the A flank because they didn't see that Process was with Tapson. Yeah, the spacing was a little off there, so it gave a chance for Snacks to fight back. Isaac, he might get a little one right there, but a nice trade back from Process Instant. Can judge the distance inside of that smoke to shoot into, and... Well, a good try on the eco round. Things get a, go a little haywire there on mid with the split, but... Um, it's only the kills they have to worry about, Tabs and just the rest. Second frag on Snacks. Big will be happy that they didn't step on that one. But nice setup. Confirming, you know, bottom B clear. Did let the boost disassemble and still throw bodies at it. So no kill from the boost, but at least info, I suppose. Go to an early ramp peak from Bolt and Snacks in the corner. A little contest for process to deal with. Meanwhile, B site's been molotoved out and Isaac, well, he's fallen back into the site. Got Kios to help him construction if needed, but Big are going to play their chances elsewhere. No smoke down here on the ramp. Acor could have an opportunity, that's for sure. He's sensing something. Big just holding off, hoping that maybe somebody flanks. 
There is no top mid aggression. There is no B aggression with that early presence shown. But Snacks is locked in because the Molotov. He'll die out with nothing. And Acor had given up the angle he was holding so patiently. Goes in for the trade frag. Calls the reinforcement over. Goes to the top box for a deep angle. But Pros is hot on his heels. And while Volt is now an elevator. Oh, Pros is so clean with that second elevator kill. Kios. He will again come through with the trade frag, but again, it is not enough. And Isaac stranded on the opposite side of the map. Big squeezing it into the A play and walking away with three alive. Yeah, they 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 basically, like the utility they used caused um, Acor to respond because, well, they were just staging the attack. And then that just left Snacks open for a, a moment. He has a good angle to get one kill. Sometimes you can get two from there, but... He just doesn't win his trade, and so firepower is a story here. Like, Acor's movement was great to the top of default boxes, but he doesn't hit the shot. He sets himself up. Snacks was set up for more than that. Um, but between the two of them, they got one kill. Terrorists win. I want to see this elevator kill from Prozis again. Slammed. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Slammed. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty nasty. Uh, nothing Volt can do about that one. You know, at least Kioz was close enough to trade frag. I think his his tethering has been pretty good right now, Kioz. Definitely. Been in the fights. He's been picking up one each time. Threw a wrench in the works in that near pistol round win as well that just couldn't be clutched out. But it is big, set their sights on A yet again. Snacks solo this time around, thinking about maybe some mid presence. Big's timing have come at different intervals so far on this A site. Yeah. And I think that change of pacing is kind of keeping Gamer Legion a couple steps behind. Hyper passive A setup, Snacks an elevator. Yeah, do you want this, especially with the guns they have? Probably not pulling off a retake, but we can I Isaac to see if they're going to even attempt it. Or sorry, Volt as well has a kit smoke. They're coming on over. Turn control keeping up, but then the Molly will stop them. That's a good smoke. That smoke can actually help them a lot. I don't think Big can necessarily counter this unless they blow it up. There's a tea smoke on sandbags. Makes sense of that after the pistols try to hold off and they do so well enough. Trying to press up the top ramp, JDC to recover. It's the USP that ends up getting one. M4 still in play with Isaac. Trying to set him up with 20 seconds to go. Searson Krimbo squeezing around the crane and snacks. Well, he's tucked in at the base of ramp. Oh, on the smoke timing. Searson pulls the nade out, pushes Krimbo to the clutch. He's cautious of Snacks, who's now climbing up top. Crane, Crimpo's going to be exposed, and they've done hmm. it. Gamer Legion coming through. Great timing from Isaac. Wow, they actually pulled that off because the CTs decided to full stack the A site, pushed up to short, got that smoke down on short. <laughs> Just got that perfectly placed off. Um, the smoke on sandbags. Yeah, what was that? Definitely can definitely be a thing. Just because if, let's say you're in the smoke, it's like smoking quad on Inferno. If you're in the smoke, you can't actually do anything except run out blind if you want to. Okay. So it, it, if you don't have the molly like or the molly. two HEs, then you can smoke it. It's not quite as deadly though, Launders. No, it isn't. I'm not impressed. Yeah, just add more variance, and you're definitely checking that smoke every once in a while to make sure people ru are running through it. Aren't. Ooh, JDC, <laughs> nice Only clear. Dupree can do that. <laughs> he can, yep. Only Dupree can do that every time and get get two kills. Kiaz tucked in, though. Same position. Oh, nicely done mm. from Volt. As they come up to clear the close wood, Volt swings it, shuts down what was looking like a Strong attempt to flush out B-Site. Tabs and Searson with the guns. Oh, nice headshot. <gasps> oh, double! Come on! Tabs in! Come on.
disgusting. An acorn in the sight with up on it. Train forward. Now, the fact he's got bomb possession, this is what gives acorn a little bit more to work with. But the, all the while that he watches towards stairs is all the time Searson creeps in behind him. Oh, and almost oh. red, but not scoped in and not quick enough. So a great squeeze from Tabson. The two kills. That second one wins the round. Connor, that was Ekelhaft. Ekelhaft. That nine. Disgusting. Put him in the Krankenwagen. What's that? The ambulance. Oh, okay. My Uber got hit by an ambulance in Berlin. I had James Bardolph and Alex in the back seat. Oh my God. Get out of the one way. Of the, one of the most ironic ways to die. <laughs> hit, hit by an ambulance? Yeah. Hey, I mean, at least the first responders are on scene. Yeah. Messed up part is they were going somewhere and they had to stop. Yeah, true, right? Yeah. Yeah. Can't just throw a card out the window. <laughs> like in the Looney Tunes. <laughs> My people oh, call your people. So that was uh that was a great round from Tapson. That was some good shooting. They were kind of due after their last three games for a game like this, I suppose, where everything just works. Even when you almost gave up on bigger best at blast, Connor. I know. They even got better towards the end of spring groups this time. Literally. True. Yeah. I Don't mean, give up. That's the big mantra. Oh, yikes. Another, yo, what's, what's happening? Damn sub tick. <laughs> Okay. I mean, he this threw time? one nade here, so they can't fully be assuming it's safe. Oh, he's going to go clear it now. Okay, maybe not. Ooh. <laughs> and he'll never know that okay, he was doomed a lot by of this the comes way. Down to this yeah, but Isaac's oh, kill. We've also got processing A still. Oh, what the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He slipped up short. And now he's going to hear Bolt, who thought that it was only Tapson, so process just keeping quiet works out. <laughs> okay. How did he get there? He just walked up short. Walked up short. Yeah, because Acor comes over, watches top ramp with the sandbags player so committed. Uh, smart move. Mm -hmm. A rift in the time-space continuum. That's where Process thrives. It's a wise lad, that one. Keeping Process. Obviously, you know, we were talking about the, the change-ups within, within Big, the departure of Montu and Sin. Mm -hmm. uh, I do feel like we saw... Glimpses of process's potential even throughout the big struggles at the start of the year And I'm glad that they didn't go beyond just you know I, I think two player I think they needed a significant change and two players was where I'm glad they stopped that that chopping True. block uh, To just keep tabs in Krimbo would have felt like a bit too much I'm with that and I also think Terrorists win. I mean big are go always gonna be a team any team that tries to you know, stick to their own country could always benefit from like a little more firepower because they don't have the advantage of like being able to pick anyone from anywhere, right? Yes. But if they, I mean, I think Prozis fits nicely for the role player that he is. Whereas if they had someone, I don't know. I also think Prozis was kind of Volt tier for me in the academy. Like I always thought he was a very smart player. He wasn't a star player, but I liked almost everything I saw from him in rounds. Whereas Sin, I liked his aim more than I liked uh, his positioning or his game sense. So I, I think that maybe Process doesn't quite have the same, maybe like aim or star potential, but I think he could potentially be a better fit for sure. Right. He's got that je ne sais quoi. Mm -hmm. Now in German? No. <laughs> Krakenwagen. <laughs> Locked into the top ladder hold is crazy, Krimbo. Just sat down beneath it, waiting for the key. <laughs> he also was so close to overstepping that boundary, but he falls back from middle instead. Oh, 
also holding off, waiting for the ramp push. Maybe feeling that mm. the you know majority pistols they expect from Gamer Legion are going to have to get frisky. We've seen Snacks locked into this corner once the smoke fades. I'd be surprised to see him just sit there again, as opposed to trying to make a play or just straight up falling back. So he's done that. Here. But if they don't e actually peek a core, okay, that's a little, that's a, that's a little weak. That's just gonna send them one player down. They at least get the pushback off the A ramp, but now they got 30 seconds and no one's moved from A. Max is on Xbox. Good for the headshot. Good for the second even. Top Crane, five seven holds the line. Isaac now with the AK at a distance, cleans up house. And we got Gamer Legion in with a third. So just kind of doesn't like that one. Yeah, yeah. That that one, if they watch that back, they'll go, okay, maybe we shouldn't trust that flash so much next time because Acor basically didn't move that entire round and nades were landing to his left and right. Molly Quad, Smoke Generator, and he was just full vision. <laughs> and the only guy that pops up is blind himself from his own flash. <laughs> so it's like, okay. Could have just gone for a full A attack versus the anti eco and been fine. <laughs> you know, it, oh, hold on. Knowledge tidbit, but we can save that for a second. Hang on to your wisdom. Oh, what? Okay, Snacks. Swing in the green. In with a second. Searson wants him. No chance. Snacks, the triple kill on the off. That close range shot was sick. Yeah. And it is another one to the tally of Gamer Legion, seemingly. Big uh, running out a bit of steam here towards the end of the half. Money ain't the greatest. Ah, they'll still be fine. They've earned that at the very least. Buys to the end. But Crimbo's got so much time that he'll let somebody make a mistake. Doesn't look like that will be Isaac. Isaac doesn't strike me as a guy who gets overzealous. No, he's Swedish. He knows when enough is enough. He knows when to yum for yoy and when to not. Crimbo forced to move in here. Double ops between Acor and Snacks. Just tower defense inside of the A site. You know, Crimbo's trying to crunch the numbers, trying to triangulate all the positions. Figured this out. Reality is the op's going to get you. <laughs> Second top, I mean. <laughs> Kios instead, the back line holds. Nice <laughs> shot out of Crimbo. It's what you come to expect. But uh, numbers... He did just take too long there. There was no way he yeah. could actually... Yeah. Numbers the name of the game. He's on his Rob's arc, so... Oh! You know, and if Snacks loses the gun there to pistols running into the site, things... They could actually lose, so that's... Yeah, he, you know what he just said there. I guess I'll main up. <laughs> he said something like that for sure. He's on 10. Hey, Cor, I'm telling you it's easy. <laughs> He's Italian. I still respect that Snacks gives hands to pizza. <laughs> He gives handshakes to his teammates at the end of games. They don't do fist bumps. He oh, does okay. firm handshakes. Firm handshakes all around. Which, you know, as the leader of men in this instance, yeah. I kind of respect that. Yeah. Cool. We are not friends. We are business partners. Mm. Snacks presses down within the smokes. Volt just got vision before going blind. And Snacks is evading. Ugh. But... Standing on JDC, who's not got vision, so JDC, what? Late to come through. Snacks on the 5-7. He gets two frags because JDC and him just touch each other, and then still he doesn't follow through. Oh, boy. Snacks literally just body checks JDC, pushes him out of line, gets two more kills from it. Let's see if JDC can recover the round, because that's going to leave something to be desired. Kiaz creeps in, gets bomb possession at the 45 second mark, and we get Crimbo in another clutch. Has not been able to pull these off so far this half. And he will not be able to here either. A great recovery from Gamer Legion towards the tail end of the half.
Back in it with the big clan who have posted some rounds at the start of the half, but then let Gamer Legion back in. Why is that, Mohan? What did Gamer Legion do to secure those rounds towards the finish? Um, it was pretty, like, a couple of those rounds definitely could have been a little bit closer. I think JDC had a clear sort of misplay in that smoke situation versus snacks, but it was awkward because he didn't know if he was bumping into a piece of scaffolding or a big Polish man. So when in a smoke, uh, that's maybe excusable. I think there was a bit better shooting out of Gamer Legion, which held them back in the beginning of the game too. So that was overdue. And now we've got a push here from big... Oh, wow, the shadow appears. JDC barely even shows up. And that snack's gone. That's crazy how he just wasn't on his screen at all, it felt yeah, like. Yeah, just got smoked. Yeah. Meanwhile, the mid split goes swimmingly, and Isaac, ooh, okay. down on the B stairs, kills Krimbo, who gets in on the push. So, yeah, you may have taken the stairs control, but Snacks' death is not in vain. Vengeance from the Gamer Legion, Prosis. Yeah, sorry, Kios. <laughs> no. He got spotted, buddy. He gets slammed against the wall. We'll see if Tapson, yes, sir, can come through with the kill from CT. So back into the even keel. But this forward green control gives room for Process to push up, keeps Tabson back for the time being. We've got no kit on the play. We've got Tabson pushing into the site, realizing it's clear because both of them slip past. Gamer Legion go through the smoke. And time is of the essence. Mm. Closing it out as Tabson gets outplayed. They disappeared in sight. Smart playing together. Um, made that tactic possible, so... Mm. You know, maybe they're going to need Krimbo. You know, we didn't get the clutch from him in this game so far. We haven't seen any, like, sort of shining moments. It's actually been the rest of the team that's been on point. But now the game is getting quite close. This is looking like shaping up to be a stomp for big. If this ends up being another loss for him, it's going to it's gonna hurt. We've seen big in some pain as casters in the last few years. Yes, sir. Um... And every time they make roster moves, of course, you're hoping for better new beginnings. Or at least a honeymoon of some sort. You know what I mean? You'd hope. I have to say that, you know, I'm a little disappointed in the first half that Krimbo didn't get in in any inspiring clutch moments. Yeah. And that's also left him kind of at the bottom of the board for the team in the first half, too. Mm -hmm. So... We, we, we literally started off by saying, even in this new big, you know, Krimbo remains the star. And, uh, we're waiting. Searson, scout damage. Oh, Tapson just Excuse bends me. a bullet of the P250 uh. around the crane. All right. Sure you can. Luckily, four Gamer Legion snacks there to pick up the slack. And we find Krimbo alive again. Now, this time they will come to him. Not the other way around. Can he manage to shave Isaac, who's low health, off this? Yes, sir. Takes only a quarter damage, too. So still a winnable one. Kiaz and Snack's going to want to rejoin again. S waiting. Crimbo. Oh, Crimbo. There it is. There's the clutch we wanted. Jesus. I mean, he played the angle perfectly, but that's how he gets to one on three. <laughs> wow. I I can't I can't believe he actually pulled it off. Uh, this is the round of all the rounds that we were hoping that he'd be able to pull out something special. He does it with an MP9 in a spot where he's walking between two angles where all three players know where he probably is. Well, that's pretty insane on a round like that too. Fourth. I was actually, I was going to be a little critical of Tapson for just trying to do everything himself there. Sure. Pushing a little more after got his first kill. But hey, when you got teammates like Krimbo, I guess. There to close it. Process not going to let the pressure up. Goes ahead, peeking around the crane. Smoke wall keeps the ramp players away from Volts. And Process and Tabson getting in with the MP9 kills as well. Krimbo's not the only one who gets to eat. So CT side starting very strong for the German. That's a lot of X factor right there, huh? You know, it's like... Uh, it's kind of a weird correlation in connection to make. That's sort of like how I feel about when I watch complexity games, they miss a little bit of X factor. Like they have almost everything else. And like the player, like getting a liege as well as like made them so much stronger, but they still miss like X factor. Close games don't go their way. Yep. Overtime games don't go their way. 
And it's like, maybe it's the late round players that are what are more needed. Oh God. Uh-oh, what? A Zeus, baby. Snacks just entry frags yellow with a Zeus. Only snack. Now, luckily for Big, it wasn't Searson going for an op peak, but just swinging with the MP9. Oh, he's following and the bomb. Nicely done, JDC. Good timing, top middle. He does not want to get caught here because he's got everything on a platter. Isaac in the back. Four players to mow down. And JDC just churns through three. Some shenanigans from Snacks to give them anything to work with. Kios <laughs> keeps thinking he's sneakier than he is. <laughs> <laughs> just dies in the corner once more. And the only thing is Snacks' is two kills this round. A tenth for big, double digits secured. Well, pretty perfect timing. JDC maybe needed to make a play like that because of the early round antics with the Zeus frag. And now it's suddenly big map. To lose and I mean it's not just big that have gone through hard times recently of course Gamer Legion as well um, and they definitely fought very hard in the last two events RMR and uh, and Kato to like get as far as they could and um, had some very close matches as well that didn't go their way Tearson wants revenge and he'll find it off peak out of short, just ahead of the frag grenade, of which did take him down pretty low, but survives the bullet that comes with it and leaves Prosis on the corner, who almost falls to Acor. Gamer Legion playing both ends of the map, to try and find some kind of an opening here in round 17. Crimbo happy to just lean back, was just holding. Oh my god. They boost on stairs to try to get vision over. Oh, that need. That's money. That's 60 damage right there. Searson on another angle, waits back. Can't manage the flick. Got taps in to hold off on short so that not both players in A are low. Potent HEs. They're really just gonna dry swing this? Ooh, scary. Two chances, That's but two missed shots. Oh. Dude, the nades this round have been crazy, and there's another one lined up here from Tapson. If they get on the bomb site, Searson finally connects one. Frag goes to default, no stoppage. JDC takes a swing through smoke, and it costs him a court trades back to Tapson. We've got Crimbo in another clutch, but low health on the two T's. He snaps it over, knows Acor's hands busy. Seven seconds, the clutch oh, he's halfway he's there, and he's got it because <laughs> he pushes around the side and completely outboys him. Yeah, the fat side of the smoke as well. Crazy. He wouldn't have expected that. Crimbo with a good read on the situation. Maybe hoping he can get vision on the other side as well. Good option coverage. And... Uh, Big won that, and I'm, I'm quite happy they won that simply because they landed so many good HEs, which you got to give a team credit right there for, like, the timings, the lineups. They nailed every single one. That was almost 50 damage or more between, like, four different HEs, and they, and they still nearly lost. That was a great round, tactically speaking. Five clutch attempts, if I'm not mistaken, from Crimbo. Three on the T side, none of which were one. Two here on the defense, both of which in his back pocket. But down he goes. Can't clutch if you're dead first. Volt, fast entry into B with no real backup plan in place. It happened so fast that it is a great chance for Gamer Legion to just walk away with a bit more life on Vertigo. But it feels like you bake this into any CT side of Vertigo. You bake in at least one early B death that costs you the round straight up. Mm hmm And in this case, it is the 18th, where Crimbo gets caught. Yeah, you have mentioned the, the volatility of the B site lately, and it's, it's definitely true. Well, no matter. Train will replace this map soon. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. 
And Santorini replaces Inferno or what? What's the new name for Santorini Ooh. again? Sorry. Thera. You just did a... What is it, sir? Thera. Thera. Like therapy. Oh. Yeah. Because that's what I need after this map pool for the last two years. <laughs> that's what I've needed since Vertigo entered the dang map pool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's the hiccup. That's what we'll call that last round. It's still four alive for big beyond the fact. Does give Gamer Legion some toys to play with and Snacks taking it upon himself. Do a little ramp test. Doesn't die for coming out of that smoke. They're gonna group up towards B. Crimbo's at the base of the stairs, hit by a Molotov. Can't really get out of here. Volt's gonna find him back-to-back -back rounds. Now, JDC is closer this time. Could still take players off. Nice double. Mm. And a little more damage for Kios to have to deal with, too. Again, time is what it buys for Searson to get wow. to site. Lays down the law. Kios dropped another. Does tuck behind Tetris. And Snacks is slower on the approach out of middle. So Tabson should be able to hold that one back. They've got a minute still to press out. And Snacks decides now's the time. Comes around mid with a labored spray. An odd angle from Tabson bags the kill and could very well put big on 12. Acor to the clutch comes up. He sells Tabson in rotation, but dies out to the nade. Utility on point from big as they win one right back. Yeah, this is definitely the big you want to see. Whose molly was that, Connor? At the, the end of beat right in front of Searson. I mean, when he threw the HE. I don't know. Do, do you know what I'm saying? He, yeah. Because that caused him to fall back. Yeah, Searson was like half blind. Then he got this kill. Then he what threw an HE and a molly landed back there. And I wonder if it was Tabson in mid or if it was they messed one up. But I have to go watch the demo again. Yeah, Utility of B has been pretty ghastly lately. Had yeah. some weird paranormal activities over there. Yeah. Big swing. Snacks isn't going to lose the duel. Whole squad groups up behind the entry frag. Tapson looking to come out, and he'll get one. With little chip damage on Kios and Isaac. Oh, Pearson looking for hurt, his right? lead impact. Ooh. Oh, dude. He's every AD. round, every approach, these HEs are tearing through that Kevlar. And they still have two more, actually. Oh, yeah, they do. But JDC also has a job to do inside of mid, just in case, for now. Oh my god, he saw, saw that. that. Crumbo no longer lining the nade up, but Searson comes in with the kill instead. They do cross as the op is on cycle. Really good there from Gamer Legion to use that second they had to work. Searson now knows sight taken. Bomb being planted, mm. another nade for 47 damage. And the flank. But critically, Volt's alive. He's running back to short side. JDC pretty fast on this flank. And by taking Volt out, they never got that player back. So Snacks can't anchor. He's in the sight. And he's surrounded on all three sides. Over the top goes Searson. And it's big impact from the opera out of big to clean up after impact from nades. Big just owning on this CT side. A tale of two halves. And one that comes up big. Justified the map pick. We go to overpass next. Big, a new big looking to come back at the showdown.
down to the Blast Spring Final. Hell yeah. I'm ready. I'm excited. The stage is set. I'm just gonna let that go. Oh! No! What is that? It all comes down to the next three maps of Counter Strike. All right. Okay. And he can't believe it. Pack it up, pack it in. Big begin with a nice map one victory. Vertigo is there as they take their own map pick over Gamer Legion. Uh, quite, quite handedly, Bobski. Yep. Uh, no, no real, no real threats there. Good map from Tapson. Good map from new recruit JDC. Yeah, I think uh, that's the strength of Big. Right, they've always had a one or two good maps, even in the rough periods of time where they've had bad results. They've always been comfortable on the on the Vertigo, and they choose it almost every time. But uh, it was a, a good look, and I think it's great to see the new guy in the in the closet, really JDC. See, actually being able to to perform to the extent they also spoke about they have switched up the roles and to make him more comfortable yeah and i mean it, it showed he, he, was, he was looking comfortable today 18 kills 110 adr as you can see um he was also i mean a pretty solid player in yeah. the mouse lineup and i remember when he got dropped it was like a little bit of a head scratcher at the moment then mouse obviously went on to um to build up to more success but jdc being left out in the cold for some time this seems like a good home for yeah him i think moment. um mouse had a luxury problem they had simply too much talent and jdc was sadly the weakest link in that lineup um i think it made sense for for mouse to try something new yimp had also being an extraordinary talent, right? And and I think it fits in with the big that they can now get a high caliber talent that was a leftover of, of Mouse and he can prove himself once again. I'm gonna be sure that he's gonna be super hungry to prove himself that Mouse made the, the wrong choice. Oh, sure. I mean, or certainly hungry to prove that Big made the right choice by picking him up, right? Um, either way you want to look at it. I, I, let's talk about the other recruiter over into Big Searson as well with the AWP. I mean, it's kind of interesting on both sides of, of the server. Both teams have one of those offers that we know has a lot of skill, a lot of talent, but both of them have kind of struggled to find a consistent home in Tier 1 between Searson and Acor. Um, and it felt like Searson had a, just a little bit more impact in, in, this, in this particular map. Yeah, it was map. a quiet map from both. Uh, I think Searson's uh, top level Level is, is definitely higher than what we've seen from Echo. I think we've seen a couple of maps, but I don't think we've actually seen over a longer period of time where Echo has really dominated. I think it really shows on the on the rating of the team of, as well on Gamer Legion that everybody is around that one rating mark. It really shows that it's a team effort when this team is actually winning. Uh, it's only Kias for now that's actually under with the rest of the team when it comes to the average rating. Um, so I think it's a, an interesting rust. And also when we're going to look into the, the next map of, of Overpass, they've been actually one of the few teams who's able to, to find success against, uh, in my opinion, the best team in the world on Overpass, simply Virtus Pro. Yeah, and I mean, Overpass is going to be, you know, uh, we always kind of talk about there's there's a lot of options for oppers on, on this map, you know, whether you want to get aggressive, different places you can do that, play it passively, a lot of angles that you can fall back into. Um, so, I mean, Acor and Searson, again, are going to have a great chance to prove their value to their teams with the AWP because um, they're going to have a chance to thin out the attacks and, and, and find a couple of kills before things really begin. Yeah, I mean, the issue with having Overpass as your favorite map, right, is that you're going to start on the T side and, uh, yeah, exactly, and, and I think Searson is actually going to be able to have a, a great start if you win that pistol on ct overpass it means so much because it means that you can get an orb in the first buy round and that just gives you a lot of comfortability in terms of what you want to do in the early rounds like i don't i think overpass is so unique you can almost take the orb anywhere on the map in the start of the round and you're never going to be like what the hell is he doing right it feels like it feels like Overpass as a map is kind of like I mean I feel mm. like I've been saying this for a while, but it's fallen out of favor. Like it's not played as much as it used to be. There's not a whole lot of teams that like it as as much as others. And if it wasn't for the catastrophe at the moment that is Inferno in the, in the map pool that that teams just like hate playing at the moment, I feel like Overpass would be getting a lot more attention. But this has turned into a very hard map for teams to figure out how to play in the current. Yeah, map. I also think it's down to the way that you can react on the map, right? If you see somebody in Mirage, let's say they fighting middle, right? You see three guys then you're able to say, okay, guys, let's move out A fast or move out B fast. But the rotation on the CT side on overpass is so fast between A and B, but the Ts have a way further rotation. So it's really hard for you to actually do those mid-round se segments. You have to be really precise. And I think actually Tapson could be one that we're going to look into and, and do those small gigs in here.
Yeah, I guess that's that's the that's the question. If we want to look elsewhere away from the Alpers on these teams and you want to look towards the in-game leaders, Tapson, obviously a ton of experience, a wealth of experience in-game leading, a wealth of experience working with his coach of Gabi for, for years on end. And we know the relationship there is rock solid. Um, Snacks is going to have a big task yeah. ahead of him to try and outcall this this big team, to outcall Tapson um, and, and find ways to move his team around the map in a way that's confusing to the I also think it's two vastly different in-game leaders, right? I think Tapson is the more structured guy. He really likes to do the A, B, C, D and then all of a sudden do an execute. Where next he will give more responsibility it seems like to the likes of kias i think we saw kias at the alma being super aggressive not a, not having a lot of success with it but that says a lot about what snacks is kind of as an igl right he will give the responsibility to the players where on the other side of taps and, and got B, i think they have a more structured way of approaching the game from the get-go so I, I guess a lot of this would come down then in your mind on, on Gamer Legion side of things is if Snacks is going to be giving that responsibility over to certain individual players or that, that freedom to make their own decisions, mm -hmm. you know, which of those players are going to have to take that freedom and really yeah, shine? And also from speaking with the with the coach of, uh, of Gamer Legion a little bit, Ash, I think he's actually a super smart guy when it comes to Counter-Strike. I remember him talking yeah. about how they would play against Virtus Pro. They had an idea that nobody, like the outside of B player, was going to search a lot on Monster. And it can be uncomfortable if you're playing B alone, right? to get that 1v1 duel. We see a lot of players currently have success with it, uh, Robs, Spinks, but they decided to place Aiko on the left side of Monster to constantly counter, no but trying to go in there and find the kill. And he was, I think, f uh, found once or twice in that game. It says a lot about their approach to the game as well. So like a variety of different looks, to, you know, depending on which opponent and really, really gearing your defense up by, by who you're playing and trying to take advantage of some of those tendencies. Um, is, there, is there hope for Gamer Legion in this in this matchup? Uh, I mean, you kind of mentioned um, it can be difficult at times as overpasses your pick starting on that T side. I mean, this almost puts them in a, in a really rough place, like a little bit of a hole just to start the map, you know, right. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be scared if I was Gamer Legion. I think they actually have a very good shot of, of okay. doing for free maps. I think Overpass is also one of those where you're going to be looking at Gamer Legion winning against FaZe, winning against Virtus Pro. It says a lot about their their level on this map, right? Um, I, I, the main reason why Gamer Legion sometimes struggle is not really the tactical side of things. I think it's mainly due to players being super inconsistent. I think we talk about Aiko as one of the most inconsistent orbers in the tier one scene. Like when he's on his A game, he's a really solid orber, right? But when he's not feeling it, he's just mediocre. Well, we're going to see who's feeling it. We're going to a break, and when we come back, we're back into the server. We return into the matchup. It's overpass and big with the chance to close this series out 2-0 and eliminate Gamer Legion. We'll be right back.
big clan sitting pretty on top of their vertigo win now mohan this boat ships over to overpass and this is a map obviously gamer legion but making kind of like a name for themselves on mm -hmm. this is where we come to expect some of their best stuff uh and it feels like you know every time gamer legion are down a map and the series goes to overpass this is where we end up on a third so i feel like my expectations are we're getting all three between these teams today it's possible, but then the thing is that this is... Vertigo is also a great map for them. And they big handed them their second loss in the last five matches. Um, and they were on a three-map win streak. So, Big had a hard first pick. Obviously, Overpass is not a, a great map for them, but they would know that uh, Gamer Legion would definitely take it here. So, let's see. <laughs> Actually, Big are on a six-map a loss streak on Overpass. But what's more likely... 6-1 or 7-0? 6-1 or 7-0? Seven losses straight? E Is that yeah. even possible? It's always possible. Because that means you're also playing it a ton, right? It also, it does mean that it's not like a map that you rarely play that you lose sometimes. This is why it's hard to have a loss streak that goes on forever, because either you stop playing it or you eventually win. But... Do we attribute the losses of Big from the previous roster to this streak? Are we allowed Actually, to that? that's true, but on this roster, yeah. they have two. Okay. <laughs> then the so they, they still the be losing. <laughs> <laughs> they still be losing. <laughs> Some things never change. They're just losing in German now. Yeah. <laughs> true. <laughs> Uh, here they go. Try to take a peek at a fountain. Oh, Ooh, JDC. Nice little fade away. It's time to leave. Taps in. He's going to chase one, okay. but he comes out of the stairs, okay. so he puts himself on full display to Acor, and that is three kills towards a easy snacks. Creeping out from Monster. Puts a bullet to the back of Prosis, and poor Krimbo's been outplayed. He's been out-rotated, finagled. And as he duels towards Long Bomb Plant B, so Gamer Legion... Pretty quick into the pistol, not wasting any time with it, and rewarded when for you, it. Like to contractually play overpass because you're German. Like it's like a German map. Like, yeah, yeah, it's based in Berlin. They're the Berlin like, international. If Vertigo gaming. was in a skyscraper in Toronto, I would instantly stop hating on it. I'd give it another chance. Are you sure? Because I mean, you still okay. Want to be what able if to it was a it, you know? So it's like it's like it wouldn't it remind you of. Housing prices, Mohan. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Remind you of condo fees. Oh, annual property tax. Oh, Real God. Realtors. Oh, no. Brokers. Ah. <laughs> stab, stab, stab. Well, what if it was in Montreal? We're not allowed to build buildings that high. We got zoning that's such laws a good around thing. here. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. we keep it low. Yeah. It's a pretty city, Montreal. Very pretty. And wherever this is in Germany is also looking pretty Berlin. cool. This is in Berlin, yeah? Yep. And the CS2 oh, wow. remake. It was, I mean, they uh, literally have to play this map. Exactly. Berlin yeah. International Gaming. Like, they've got to figure this out. <laughs> As if they're not aware. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's German writing all over the map. They're like, <laughs> this seems familiar. Like, they'd, they'd have the best callouts, the most specific <laughs> callouts. <laughs> He's on 43rd Avenue. <laughs> 43rd and Jefferson, get him. Yeah. <laughs> Forced by out of big, losing pistol. Searson scout on long. And there's a whole pack of players coming, but he just left. Luckily, they're going to play the site stacked instead. Crimbo taps in, adding themselves side him. They're going to cheat JDC up too. That'd be four members of Big waiting for what is an influx of Gamer Legion players. But Searson missing shots. We haven't seen a Searson scout round. Oh, no, Big. Big swing from Tapson. Gets one with the P250, but Kioz is there. The numbers Whoa. should help out Gamer Legion. The smoke could make it awkward. Searson gets the damage off the scout eventually, but JDC is dead and Process is a late rotate. So, yeah, Gamer Legion walk into a four player stack site and still get away with the majority alive and a second off the pistol. It does go back to what you said. Like, uh, this is a. They get. I think they'll be disappointed they lost Vertigo, especially in that fashion, but they have a great veto in the sense of first two maps, they're happy to play.
And Ancient's just kind of 50-50. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I found this game hard to predict, to be honest. I, I really wasn't sure where I would put my chips. Because it comes down to, like, how big or how good are big going to get. Yeah, and how quickly, too, right? Like, yeah, how like quickly. ADC, that was the big talking point of the pregame was, like, I mean, I have faith that this big could get better than the last one, but I do think they need more time. Yeah. And then when the opportunities do come, there will still remain this question about JDC in the big stage games. That was, uh, he did kind of get scapegoated after the Paris shortcomings as mm. the Mao's weak link. And we know that Mao's weak link is still playing the biggest of stages. So, mm -hmm. once or if they get there, then what? You know, Searson's kind of under that same microscope. Right. Yeah, I think there's responsibility all around when it comes to this team. I mean, those two that you mentioned, Krimbo to be a star, Tapson to be a consistently good caller and tactician as he is. Um, Almost. Got to give it to them. Came in with an MP9, had an idea and almost pulled it off. He would have actually won that duel had his teammate not naded him when he peaked short pipe. For some reason, Brosis just gets like 40 damage taken off because somebody inside B chucks a nade in front of him. Probably meant to peek behind it, but he ends up eating the damage and it mm. lets Snacks kill him for free. So nice follow through down into the A play. It keeps all members of Gamer Legion alive and a strong T side start as one could expect. And it's JEC that also speaks Portuguese, right? Yes, actually. Yeah, that's true. He was Rio very, major. Yep, he was very popular with the Rio crowd. Yeah. So they've got that. They managed to both be German and have the ability to activate the entire Portuguese audience out there. What are expert languages called? Polygots? Is that it? Polygots are just like geniuses in multiple fields. Mm. Uh, bilingual, multilingual, or multilingual. I don't know. I guess it's just multilingual. I'm not sure if there... There might be another word for it, actually, but... He's bi. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Knowing or using several langu languages. Polyglot. Okay. Oh, polyglot? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought he said polygot. God, maybe I did. Maybe there's a difference. Uh, Crumbo on the pillar. Yeah, Prosis trying to chase it, but then he eats a flash. And because of that, the bomb has managed to get down into the water, which means plant gets delayed, but at least he's still alive. Heaven Smoke keeps Searson off it, too. They've been bombarding him with frag grenades today, but that one's negligible. And it is not the invitation they'd hoped for, so Gamer Legion straight to the B play. Lickety split, and four zeros their reward. Chase is on, Searson. Yeah, you better keep that knife up, buddy. Keep going. Oh, they lose Sorry. snack to the bomb. I, I lived a long time thinking polygot was the word for, like, multidisciplinary genius, but apparently it was just languages. <laughs> Sorry, man, I didn't mean to, and, I didn't, yeah, I didn't mean to shake I didn't, you like that, bro. <laughs> and I didn't think it was polyglot either, so... <laughs> holy. That's uh, two birds stoned at once right there. Yeah. Frickin' rocket appliances. Ugh. If you speak often and use four or more languages, you're multilingual. So then what? Boosting a deep vision down connector. Kios. Headshots there in a second. Oh, they disassemble, so they dodge that one. But look at the numbers. Nine players in the server outside of the B play. If Gamer Legion think that they can just kind of charge through as they did in the last round. Well, now the defender's in place. Still, it's a clean entry. Volt double kill. Process comes up from the water, but blind again. And the rest of the Gamer Legion there to just clean it up.
They try to respond. They try to react. They put the numbers in place to avoid what happened in the last round. And even with that extra layer, nothing comes out. That's tough. That was like Astralis-esque with the force they brought. Astralis 2018, by the way. The good old days. Yeah. Yeah, they do be kind of undeniable on overpass, huh? Yep. I mean, big I'm just going to lose seven games in a row. On overpass, it's very unlikely. You ask me. Three technically. You know, sur surely, surely that's what sets this up. That's why this will happen, Mohan. That's why the, the zero seven anomaly can occur. Because? Because they've actually only lost two in a row as this five-man team. Oh, right, right. True, true. We can't put the burdens of their ancestors on them. That's not fair. No, it's not. Let's not do that. Pros has been playing dangerous games in the short water, but... Stop shot from Acor. I feel like we haven't really had to say Acor's name much today. I'm waiting for the impact. Yeah, for real. For he's it. been key. For, he's been key for the team. I mean, at Cato, at the R Mark. Man, I just went back and looked at that result, and yeah, the nine pandas lost at the end of the LCQ after the entire RMR and losing by one round. Mm -hmm. And I remember the round two was that nuke upper, upper A rush. Oh, to a half by. That is freaking brutal, man. That is so after I don't even they know had what played. That like. After they had played. And that was what the, the sixth map of the day, because they yeah, had already right. had played two best, best of threes. Yeah, yeah. They were yeah. on the third map of the second best of three oh, in man. the last round of the last chance. I after mean, after getting no. after being in a major grand final, like yeah. the last major grand final. Oh yeah, to the last round of the LCQ just to get into the oh from the most magical run, the dream coming true in Paris to the most soul crushing alternative. Um, yeah, Copenhagen. Game religion no, have lived through it all. No kidding. Nate stack into B. They miss the mark uh, and they oh. charge in. It is finally big to get the first kill. And this time they also hold off monster. This time it gets stuffed. For the first time of three, that all in B play from Gamer Legion gets shredded. Jesus. Okay. Well, let's see if it's too late. It's already a five-round half here on T-side for Gamer Legion. They're allowed to throw attack like that out and go for a split and see if it works, but... Finally, a response. Okay, check this out. Hit me. Four or more languages, you are multilingual. Okay. Five or more languages, you are a polyglot. Damn. Good, the good. The, the, the bar should be high. The yeah. bar should be high. Yeah. It ain't easy. They're running it. I like this. Yep. I haven't seen something like this for quite some time. Yeah, it's the old, Straight the old up school. sprint past bathrooms. That's a snacks call. I suppose they're all snacks calls, but you know what I mean. Going back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's really flipped the pages of the textbook. But God. does it work? Oh. Two kills come out of the CTs first as they arrive on long. That three-man cohort not able to put the bomb down because the ops got him covered. Isaac wants to come challenge, but he's cautious because he thinks Connector could catch him, and it's true. Tabson turns his head at the wrong time, and we're even back out, but they are sensing a chance to maybe push Wait, towards B. The bomb? Yeah, they want off-site. Searson back in bathrooms. They're not going to anticipate Krimbo. No way. Volt yeah. gets cleared out by that one, and even with the three-man push on long, Big maintain the A site. I'm kind of confused about the... I mean, they could have Sears in front sight. That kind of sucks. But I don't know. I'm not that scared if I'm... I guess the problem is they're planning for bank and then they don't have full control back there. So they don't... I don't know. Feels like it got stretched a little too thin. Yeah. But... Definitely. There's still the slight chance that Isaac blindsides Searson and then he could grab that bomb maybe if he's got four seconds left. 
Nah, he's had to walk too much now. And Searson keeps his guard up, so it is big to hold on to the A play. Just Searson's presence alone is enough to scare them off the site. And that's a twofer. That's a twofer. That's one that Big really needed. Maybe if there was a fake plant in that push to bank, then Krimbo wouldn't have been so, you know, slyly waiting in the corner for the all the way committal. I didn't expect to see Gamer Legion on land, to be honest. I didn't see them on the land list of teams that we got ahead of the... Mm, uh, mm -hmm. And some people are in interesting boot camps. Like, I think we saw Imperial in the Endpoint facility. Yep, Imperial, Complexity, Elevate, all in the UK. All in the UK, cool. Yeah, I would assume... Actually, that's I don't know. That's the uh, best way to get into Blast London. You get extra points. You boot camp in there. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. You got to really, you really got to visualize it, you know, if you, if you want to make that run happen. If you're not eating full Englishes for breakfast, you don't, you yes. don't stand a chance. You don't affect this seems to be some kind of Gamer team. Legion office because there's more. I mean, there's a ton of Gamer Legion branded chairs here. True. Ping pong table. That's sign of an esports center. It is curious to me to, you know, I don't know a lot about Gamer Legion, but obviously a huge influx of financing, I'd imagine, from the Paris Major um, for a team that beforehand wasn't really one we talked about outside of like online cups and whatnot. So, yeah, what have they done with their newfound fund? About 40 gaming chairs, a ping pong table, and put it in Dave's backyard or what? Thanks, stickers and Shuhei. <laughs> and we've had a pretty consistent process attempt in the short water so it feels like Kios would be on high alert but it is instead Searson to go deep on long and he did that entirely alone there is no additional support towards A so it feels like he's lucky he didn't run into another one of those three man sprints affords them the B hit and maybe because of his showing on long they'll think that B will crumble, but we've got Krimbo pressed against Smoke. We've got Prosis here to help him. Mm. Krimbo kind of half cleared, little spam sideways something. Not enough to stop Krimbo. You can't cut corners to kill Krimbo. <laughs> An Acor burnt to a crisp. <laughs> so Krimbo locks it in. The second time that B site crumbles, the second time Krimbo multi-frags. And yeah, Brute Force comes out and they try to get through the smoke. It's actually... Not that uncommon right now. I think it's really funny how people are running through so many CS2 smokes. There is something about the smokes creating a... Um, how would you describe it? Like a, a backdrop to you as you run out through them that honestly makes you a little awkward to shoot at. And I think that's that's made it so popping out through them is... It's like a trail, right? It's like a smoke yeah, trail? Yeah, like a trail, yeah. That thing. That's a great, exactly. that's a great camera angle for it, actually. Perfectly timed. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Smash. You thought maybe there was legs on this one, but uh they get torn apart. Tech nine kill for snacks ain't bad. Chance at a second as Krimbo gets a little labored in the spray, but it's four frags for Krimbo. A consistent star in the showdowns, I must say. Mm. The B site strikes back. Dot crosshair with an outline. I'd love to see that. Does Krimbo play on native? Because that crosshair looks a little too perfect. Must be. Go look that up. He is a new kid. A man of good taste. Indeed. 2.1 sensitivity. 4 3. 1289 60. But the crosshair looks the right. I don't know. Looks oh, perfect. yep. Ooh. Nicely done, Kiaz. Ahead of the smoke, ahead of the molly with the door open, and he just crawls in, just takes a peek. Oh, Searson. Uh, uh, That's uh. unfortunate. <laughs> Didn't hear him either. 
Volt will catch JDC top long. So Searson, that's like pulling your own pants down in public. Uh, <laughs> you're you're gonna you're gonna pay for it. So he's like an exhibitionist, like he's into it. Yeah, you know somebody else does it, you're you're the victim. But you do it to yourself, man. You're horny. <laughs> and exposed <laughs> in the front of bathrooms where he dies for free. So Gamer Legion, again, just, I think, showing us the depth of the pacing in their rounds, their ability to target certain stuff. And shout yeah. out Kioz, because I think that creep in on Tabson really caught him off guard. He did not anticipate somebody to come through what was like two smokes molly on his own and just yeah. a deep enough angle as well without taking a single tick of damage from the fire. You know, Kioz, an agent of chaos in that last one. Yeah, that's pretty good. Like, I've got a good spawn moment to use right there. I've got a good spawn. I've got a good timing. And I think I've got a small opening, you know, and he doesn't overstep. It doesn't get yeah. too crazy. It doesn't fly through fire to get the kill. So one by one, they rack them up and prove to us again. Gamer Legion level a little overpass. And right back to the connector antics. Searson. What's his choice? Got his counterpart in Acor floating around. Acor still sitting on one kill. But hey, hasn't been part of the action. Kios slides out through Monster. Bomb is in tow with snacks. But seeing as this is starting to get stuffed by smoke, yeah, okay, Kios is going to try to go one deeper. And in doing so, it's a 5v4 to big. There wasn't really much to do there for the rest of Game Religion as he ran out into the B site. Oh, oh man, I was thinking great spot for Searson up above. What a flick out of Acor, man. I mean, of course, if he had missed, he was completely cooked. Imagine there's a jump here that just can't. Uh oh, <laughs> oh, man, you uh -oh. Almost, yeah, it, it's not far off. But Acor a little more preoccupied with bathrooms. He'll go back to it with the teammates inching closer. Oh, he's like, I get to hop. Oh my god. Careful. Yeah. Fully <laughs> exposed here, man. Standing out of the open. Process doing the same thing. Missed op shot from Tapson. Nades come through to X boxes at Acor. Hold on. Up. Trying to get the angle. It's the long player instead to connect. Doubling Ooh. down. Bolt. Excellent second headshot. And he is having himself a great second map. Yeah, no kidding. Not the first time he has had these clean headshots on the entry in the 3v3s when it's demanded of him. Crimbo to another clutch has been the only piece of success for this big clan's defense. And Volt. Oh, man, that's a freebie. Crimbo's going to execute and... him. Acor standing out in the open. Crimbo oh approaching he closely. He's got it. the time for this. He doesn't have the kit, but there's one right in front of him. So he'll pick that up, no doubt. Acorn oh misses, and Crimbo posts another clutch to keep Big in a position to potentially tie. They were actually thinking about him saving. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> one more time. One time for the one time. It, it, it does make magic happen sometimes. Like, for how does Acorn miss that? And then... I Krimbo has got a really good read on him and Volt just turns away just because he's thinking the round's basically won. Like he thinks the Lurk Bank is coming because he's watched the stairs for so long. Some great timing. Great nade. Post is back at it again. Won't be able to escape it though. Volt hot on the chase. Absent omnipresent in connector yet again. And I like that Tapson's getting active. I like that he's moving up Fountain. Trying to keep it a step ahead. Beautiful boost from Crimbo too. So ideas still flowing for big. And it's working out. A sixth to be had.
But Volt's still alive, and he has been cracking the headshots with that AK. Good cover out from Heaven. Searson, no smoke in front of him, but JDC. Oh, wow, able to react. Looked mm. for sure like he was going to get caught by that, and then instead, head on a swivel, holds off. So Isaac has to come out from connector where Tapson cannot be found. And yet still, his presence is a warning that Isaac's concerned about. 40 seconds, we're going to get that water peak. You know JDC, he'll go for the info. Taps in. The insurance policy, no doubt. At the end of the day, I think that Big showed a great adaptation throughout the CT side, stacking that B site when it was called for them. Sometimes Gamer Legion get through by just sheer firepower, but it gets tied at the end. Fur backstabbed by Stan right when he was trying to come into the play. KNG falls off of the bomb plant, still able to manage a frag. TRK even through the smoke catching. Ethan Stanislaw's going to do the exact same thing, and we are cut down to the 2v2. They know where Taco's at. He gets tapped. Breeze doing it dirty and fallen. He's trying to flank. <gasps> oh, he saw Stanislaw. He knows everything, but he oh, can't no. give away the audio. This is one chance. Oh, again, oh, just getting God. around the corner. If Stan goes up her shelf, he's dead. Stan had to go down ramp. Oh my God. Whoa. Oh, what? Oh, no. no, he way. gets away. <laughs> Fallen's gonna give chase. He's already oh, down on the bomb Stan. site. Stanislaw runs to the other side. Breeze, low HP, now out from Z. 40 seconds. Fallen, just tunnel vision, and he walks right into Breeze. Stan's just sprinting for his big brother to come help, and he hides in order to get it. <laughs> Unreal. Needs those extra wide door frames. Four, three door frames. Alex gonna push himself up close smoke. He's already succeeded in killing a player within oh the apartment. God. They're sharing a spot here. This is unbelievable. Are they best friends or enemies? Why aren't they shooting? It's because of the smoke when it comes up. Oh. We'll see. This is the reaction to the test of the century. <laughs> Holy crap. And Grim, no, he gives up the cross in order to play the little pit instead. Perfecto didn't notice that Elijah's gun just came out through the wall. And then we get the jump down into the pit. Elijah's able to at least get one. Simple cuts off the rotate. Elijah still fighting tooth and nail. Eight seconds. And Simple clears the bomb site with the fire and i don't no think time. there's time the molotov against electronic for liquids 11. no way he runs through that it touches him on the achilles and he hits the ground with the bomb damn what a way to go out they need to recover that bomb bear in mind it's behind the double doors crimbo though one of the best in these sort of clutch scenarios he doesn't read the yabby it's right behind him and it's gonna be mantu left of 18 points of health Thrust into a very uncomfortable scenario. Thankfully, he has got 40 seconds here, but the bomb still needs to be scooped up behind those double doors. One bullet would take him down. Does he just run towards A now? Hope for the best? Maybe. Might not have time to do so. Has to go B. Yeah, B is the right call, but you have to trust it as well. Mantu, the pressure is on. 15 seconds left. If he fails this one, could be the end of the tournament for Big. It's coming up. There's a bit of a grenade around the corner. Just a smoke, but Yabby's walking straight through it. Ice cold. No! Oh, oh my God! Oh. He did up Henry. Why does that keep happening? What an absolute blunder. He guarantees the round. He's got everything going in his favor, and for some bizarre reason, he jumps. London calling and big attempting to answer Gamer Legion's challenge here on Overpass, a 6-6 six, six half, as the B site started to get, I would say, a little more solid off of the back of some Crimbo moments. Crimbo's clutches as well coming through at the 1v2 retake on A, so again, it's mm. just Crimbo this, Crimbo that, uh, putting forth another impressive performance at a blast showdown. Don't be fooled, though. He did have a lot of eco spray downs, okay? I just want to take Crimbo down a peg. Uh, he just, it's just that you put the cherry on top with the clutch and think a 16-4 was rifle kill. Oh, there were some ecos in there, okay. Krimbo did well, but yeah, he really had a team last map and then had that 1v3 at the MP9. But that's what it is, bro. He's the player at the end of the round. He gets the X Factor round, his team does the rest. That That's a good sign for Big, that everything's working well. And then, of course, he can top frag like this. Um, but Tapson was a, you know... Real frag leader over on Vertigo. 
And maybe they really can beat the odds, Connor. Maybe they can. Two losses here with this iteration of Overpass, but they're still intent on keeping it in the pool and trying to play it. Yeah, I think beating Gamer Legion would be a great sign of growth in this map, yeah, that would be huge. just in general. Um, you know, we talked about the online win versus Amcal. Ooh, goodbye. Uh -oh. No clutch, no head. Volt, he'll catch Prosis too, so this slow attack into the A play just gets torn apart. Three clean executions out of Gamer Legion to set them up CT pistol. Dual Berettas supposed to seal the deal, but JDC comes out now sitting on 86 health. The cross should cost Searson. JDC oh. to the heaven frag. Hang on now. You've got Volt low HP. You've got this flank coming out from Snacks. That should Snacks. be able to catch Searson. Searson's watching for the water peak. Oh, he's silent. Wow, nice one. Never Good suspected movement. a thing, but a second player gush. And that's too much to ask. Graffiti peak from Kios. Three players alive and Gamer Legion back in the lead. I certainly created an argument for it, but couldn't stick the landing right there. Nicely done from Gamer Legion. Great shots initially. And it's the play towards Long that does everything because he knocks down a full kit of utility as well as the frag itself and Long Control all with one bullet. So. Good to see that from Acor, somebody, as you mentioned, who we haven't been talking about a lot, but we have been talking about lately. He's been a big part of Gamer Legion's wins. And I think he's somebody who's improved quite a bit since we last saw him on Mad Lions and, and looks pretty damn well-rounded lately. Ooh. No chance with the pistols. You know, I said that we didn't really have to talk about Acor too much. I think that now CT side overpass. Now, I think yeah. Acorn gets unlocked, right? True. Kind of the same way that once Crimbo got to the CT side of Vertigo and the T's had to come to him, he starts posting 1v3s, 1v2s. You try to cross that line in the sand, you'll pay the Piper. And I think that it should be Acorn in this instance. I think it's funny that even though Searson has never joined the big guys on boot camp, or maybe once throughout his tenure with them back in the day, they still have a place set up for him in this in the office, you know, in spirit. Yeah. There's still a Searson, there's still a Searson chair banner. He comes back once in a while. Yep, every once in a while. Yeah. Nice trade, Searson. Getting it through the smoke, not letting Snacks get away with the robbery, but there are still two CTs in playground, so this is going to be a ton of info and control, but, I mean, info and control is one thing. You are leaving your B players exposed to this 4v1 hit. Mm -hmm. At best, 4v2, because they're not moving yet. They're not thinking that Big are going to make this play this fast, but sure enough, here it comes. Isaac, with everything to do, puts a smoke down in front of him, shaves a player off, and Searson, Prosis tries to clamber over. Acor's got the cover. It's actually Acor in with both those kills. So no smoke to heaven as they try to rush the push. And the two players, B, oh, oh through okay. smoke again. Acor, first round with a real chance to knock down the rifles, and he gets three kills. The entire approach stuffed. He is everything in the B sites. What a monster. Threw his teammates smoke basically that entire round. But it's fish in a barrel to Acor. That was some lights out opping. Just when they needed it. I think Big needed to follow through with that punch. Like they came in early, they came in light utility, but they just could, didn't continue forward with everything. And they could have set up to get their further smokes down or jump through or commit to try to refrag, but they sent one guy up into the right side of the site. And then, of course, as you mentioned, Acor got both of those pickoffs. There's no one to even see the back pit player at first. Ooh, Volts back in. Why come in so light and fast and not actually commit to it? Yeah, right. Kind of up two mines and it costs you. Tech Nines continue to try to press their luck and that luck will run dry. Fast response from Gamer Legion. Very reactive at all times, I feel like, on Overpass. Or at least so far in the face of this big T side. Gamer Legion proven again. They got that depth in them. Double digits secured. No sweat.
God B never gets to get as excited online as he does on LAN, and that's always something that uh, something that disappoints me when we have online events, because Gob in a studio is just a whole other Electric. beast. Yeah. It's weird because he's not like he's actually more emotive than you would kind of expect for a traditional coach, but he absolutely has that aura at the same time. Like he's like very serious at the same time as being very excited basically every step of the way. It works very well for this lineup for sure. I mean, it's great that he's just like the coach of this team. It just makes so much sense based on the color that he was. And then without any effort, he's also incredibly funny. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be Searson back into short with an off here. Now there's the commitment, but there's also the miss. And a lot of confidence for Searson to just come swinging out with the op in that spot. I mean, they just took it to you aggressively last round. They do it a second time and Gamer Legion get the kill because of it. This is crazy. They're just going to leave with almost no utility. They're going to go back into this, but there's still two smokes up in a molly and an HE. I mean, great nades to stop this for Gamer Legion if they want to. They still have their pillar smoke. Ooh, look at that nade lineup. It's a volt time. Blind, but... Oh! Rostos does get ahead of it before he regains his vision. Volt, keeping his uh -oh. head tucked. Has two players to peek him at the same time. Prost is coming through with everything this round. It's one man army. Cracks open the B site. Acorn not able to lay down lead right away, but he's got process burning out of the bomb plant. Still a second missed shot, but the Molly does the whole entire job. And does that serve as enough of an opening? No. Acorn and Snacks lean back and Big have answered, at the very least, one time on this B site. I don't think they got everything they were looking for when they first came into the site, but it still worked out because the utility wasn't used. It didn't, it didn't seem like Gamer Legion were really suspicious that big were going to try to re-aggress at that timing. So they didn't even, even drop their smokes to deny the scaling onto the site, which didn't do Acor any favors when he ended up this last bastion versus the attack up in heaven. So big score a seventh round off of a very aggressive start that doesn't work out with short play. Remember, this actually is the round where Searson dies pushing out a short with his op, and they still bring that back. So pretty impressive for them to do so, and in quite a chaotic situation, too. I thought maybe the barrel player would regain vision and Kioz could hold it back. Process makes the most of his flashbang with the triple entry having. And no short water slam this round. Cost them a kill. Back-to-back -back rounds. Big don't want anything to do with it. 4v5 win, thanks to Process just now. Volt locked in on party. That deep fountain smoke keeps anybody from really holding back his peak. So he locks in the playground fight instead. Flashes over. Isn't quite blind, but still dropped an Acor. Quick trade frag back as Tapson's toppled. Snacks sliding in, keeping his head down. And Acor is still floating around long as well. Snacks. Oh, JDC actually flicking past him. Anticipating a long peak instead goes beyond Snacks. Now Isaac and Kioz can set themselves up to just hold back what's going to be the three player push off the smoke fade. Kioz refurbishing the smoke. And with that, Acor is able to get down into heaven. We know what he's already done with that off from heaven, so. Not an easy one for Big, but the flash is good. Process dead as Kioz locks it down, gets bombed, dropped in front of him, and Searson's off, just can't get into the engagement. This one is Gamer Legion's every day of the week. Yeah. At 11-7 lead. So many antics here towards Monster on both sides of the attack with these teams. But for Big, I mean, they have the one good round, which is the last one. But uh, outside of that, Gamer Legion in pretty good control and spirits, it feels like, on CT side with the prospect now of getting the 12 rounds. I think Big will, uh, well, I'm not sure what kind of investment they'll have now that Searson saves this up. 
but it looks like they're going to have to buy. They could half invest and try to save the op again if they lose. But it's going to be tempting to put something together. I think that Searson could actually drop a Galil. Yeah, so yeah, they've, they've got actually a decent buy. Even though he they have the solution. Himself. It's felt like the B anchors have held back. It felt like Acor's presence has been... Too much to handle, and again, he's looking for the heaven deep down con, but nade, nah, no issue. No problemo. So let's go for short water control with the flashes. The connector support has been taken away from Prosis, so he's operating on his own right now. No damage, really. That seems a little cheesy. Mm-hmm. Why miss shots both ways? <laughs> both the ops off the mark, but the M4 sure hits hard. They actually did just boost. Volt continuing to keep himself at the top of this scoreboard. Acor will come back in with a little bit of revenge, getting his and putting Gamer Legion in a situation to close this map with five opportunities. Dude, headshots right. clean out of the rifles. Gamer Legion just sitting on their angles and feeling comfortable. You know, usually the op duel comes down to which which of the ops misses, not what happens when both of the ops misses. Yeah. I think From they both. are sitting on step. I think they might be sitting on the same scoreline for the last two losses too here on overpass. There's maybe a curse building up here. Let's see. No, it's 9-13 to their last two games. Perfect chance for Volt. He knows too. Taking down the first guy, he can easily commit to the second. You've got a falling opper that just whiffed. Yep. Volt's just shooting fish in a barrel at that point. But Big Will still limp forward with another buy. Yeah, fair enough. They've done well with their money. Five round game here. You're gonna need a few kills to go your way. But it's one on the A side back for Acor that makes things interesting. And oh, this one could make the difference. I was thinking for the CT side, Tiersen will just hand that one to him. Up. We'll get another kill. Bomb goes down. Nice. And at least a trade back here for JDC. Everybody's getting a little too over aggressive, I feel like. Max making moves. But does that remove him from what could very well be this commitment into A. We'll see how the timing goes down. Not that I'm going to sit here and question Snack's internal timing. <laughs> how dare one you. One of the best to ever do it in that regard. Seemingly one of the best to still do it at times. Just a freakish level of game sense. As he comes up connector, he should have bathrooms under wraps, which then puts the tease into an awkward spot. You plant for bathrooms, Snack's could clip you you plant for bank and you've got isaac as another issue pick your poison big it's a 2v2 to keep a minute they decide to go towards bank but isaac has forfeited it as he leans closer towards the b site no plans they're gonna cover ct shortly the molly helps out a lot but Looks like JDC could instantly die right now. Yeah, snacks. Oh, oh okay. It almost gets away, but all is good. They'll close it. There's that timing from snacks around the world from B site through T spawn down con and then bathrooms to creep into JDC and to make sure that he doesn't get away with anything more than a bomb plant. Gamer Legion's overpass. Well, who would have questioned it? Map three up next.
Well, looks like we've got a game on our hands. Third map coming up. Gamer Legion tie up the series of victory on their map pick of Overpass. Uh, quite nice, Bubsky, uh, managing to come back in this one. We know we know Big isn't exactly an established team quite yet with a deep map pool, but good on good on Gamer Legion for winning their own pick. I mean, it's fun to look at Gamer Legion and, and Big for that matter, right? They have a couple of good mats, uh, maps, and we've seen them today. Vertigo on the likes of, of Big, they're very good on this map consistently. And then we see Gamer Legion also on Overpass having their pocket pick. Um, winning against FaZe, winning against Virtus Pro says a lot, and I think the main reason is that Aiko really performed, and we even spoke about it before the game that it's going to be the battle between the orbs and Susan had that advantage of starting on the CT side, but he didn't really get much of it. Yeah, actually, I felt like I felt like towards the end, Gamer Legion. I'm not going to say unlucky, but they probably could have even gotten one or two more rounds on on their own T side in the first half. There was that blown one v two clutch against Crimbo, where they thought he was saving and creeping in. This actually uh, could have, in, in some world, been a little bit of a stronger win for Gamer Legion. This was this was relatively you know, buy the book for them on Overpass. Yeah, and I think it shows the strength of a team. If you're able to have one good map, right? It, it shows at least that you're capable of when you're playing your best Counter-Strike that you're able to play on the, the highest level, right? And I think Gamer Legion have shown that a couple of times now. It's just interesting to see the consistency thing with the guys uh, because they don't have that real star player. Let's be honest. They have an Aiko, they have a Vault that is all of a sudden going to pop out. But then we also have a guy like Isaac. Isaac on that monster position. I feel like so many people should look out uh, for a demo of his uh, profile because he's such an interesting character in terms of how we place it he almost gets no support but is still able to stand his ground most of the time i think that's an interesting way to describe gamer legion because i mean you're right there isn't some consistent star player that blows up the scoreboard or, or has crazy impact every single game they just have like a really solid five players who can all deliver in their roles and sometimes they get outmatched against the the harder op opposition but in a game like this all five of them can can be impactful yeah, and considering what the, the roster is, um, I think nobody on other teams is necessarily looking at these players and be like, okay, we're going to buy him out of this contract, right? But they work extremely well together. When we see these five guys lining up on the server, it just looks like a team that is on the same page. Sometimes they have all games, and I think it's mostly due to the individual level not being high enough. But when we see they play their A game, it just looks really sweet, right? Uh, I think Aiko is the one who's going to have to, over time, step into an even bigger position and take more responsibility in the consistent department. Yeah, but I feel like we've been saying that. That's been like a consistent trend from Acor's career, essentially, ever since, you know, what was it, Mad Lines back at Flashpoint when, when he won the first season of Flashpoint. That's always been the conversation of Acor. And at what point do we just say... This is this is the player that he is. I think from playing with him, I think he uh, lacks okay. emotional maturity at some point. Like he could get really for frustrated with like, oh, the PC is lagging and so on. But I think over time he's gotten better, and I think it's just a, a matter of time before we're gonna see more consistency come in from him. I think uh, from me playing with him, he has the level for sure. Like some of the crazy plays this guy does, he almost feels like a, a mini Monesi. I'm not saying he's on to the same level, but what he did in practice back then was so incredible. All, also his movement. Is uh, 10 out of 10. I, I yeah. can suggest you guys watch some uh, KC from some old ACO streams. So he has the level. It's just about finding that maturity spot in his career at this point. He's been a part of the pro scene for a long time. Let's not uh, cover that up. So he has the experience. He just needs to grow with it. I think Ash is actually an incredible coach to potentially help him with that goal. Okay. Well, now let's look ahead to the third map because we, we got uh, these two teams facing off one more map to decide who's going to be eliminated, who's going to move on to the quarterfinals. Um, you know, one of the things that you mentioned yesterday a couple times when we saw Ancient was how important it is in terms of utility, in terms of game plan with utility, in terms of how that's structured and layered. Uh, and, and in that sense, if you kind of take that angle with Ancient, you almost feel like you have to give Big the upper hand. They are a team that likes to be a little bit more structured. It's been their style. Uh, Gobby, Taps, and both huge, huge nade nerds uh, for sure. Are you giving the edge to Big in this last one, despite the fact that it's a pretty new roster? From my point of view, I think teams who are really good at using utility has a way better base level, right? Because they don't lack that individual firepower. At times, they can just use their util and play it really smart. I think big, as you said, is some nade nerds. They, they find the new stuff that other teams copy. But I think at this point, I think we've seen most of the interesting nades, at least in the meta right now, coming out. But big is always a team to look out for because sometimes they bring out something completely new. And it's just going to be really, yeah, I, I wouldn't say... Um, 
unrealistic to see them pull out something new, but I think the map has been in the pool for so long that it's hard to innovate that new smoke, right? We sometimes see the nades bouncing off mid now, the deep mid smoke came in to uh, to play a, a couple of months yep. ago. So it's interesting to see what will be the next step because it changes the entire dynamic. And uh, frequently on this map, obviously, it's it's we we know it's coming. It's the timing and the execution and how well you can execute uh, different strategies. The the, the aggressive mid takes, um, you know, controlling donut in the mid rounds, moving towards B lane, controlling that early on from the CT sides. There's a variety of different looks that defenses can throw at the attacking sides. Yeah, and I also think it's due to the map with the skybox, right? I think we've seen that spinning completely open up, and I think it also puts a lot of pressure on players who beforehand actually wasn't the best with nades now to be actually good with nades, because if you have that one certain spawn that you need to be able to line something up, it's so incredible, because if we're seeing people like playing the K position now, right, it's almost like they're lining up in spawn and then just walking all the way down now, yeah. all the way to the B side, and then just throwing a molly, because it needs to be so precise and on that timing that they need. It just shows you the, the level required from a from a pro now, nowadays so you taking in this series who you who you taking to to win this one going into this third map uh we obviously saw the first map good things out of out of big um with jdc having a good game searson having some impact tapson was there now obviously the second map where we see acor having impact volt being uh being a top player we've gotten a map of where we've we've kind of seen each team deliver in their own rights and play towards their strengths so in this third one uh, kind of a toss-up I would say so. I, I, I think the future for Big looks really interesting, so I would love to see them progress even further into the tournament and see the, if they can get that experience together early on. Um, Susan would also be a player to look out for. He hasn't had the best series. He is, um, if people forget, he was one of the best orbers in that online period. I think he has shown timeless yeah. uh, times, especially against the better players online, that he is a force to be reckoned with. And I don't think we've seen that from Echo on a consistent level. So if he's able just to find a little bit of that, I think Big is going to be having a way more fun time on the last map. All right, could come down to the offers yet again. Searson and Acor, Big and Gamer Legion. Third and deciding map coming up right after the break. It's ancient. We'll see you there.
three. Ancient folks, map three between Gamer Legion and between Big. It's the Blast Showdown where crazy things happen, Mohan. But now I think the series has gone kind of as per expectations, right? Big showed improvement on their map pick. Overpass just still too much of a challenge to overcome. And that leads us to Ancient where they've got about a 50% win rate Gamer Legion. I feel like this is a map where sometimes they play well, sometimes things get cold. So uh, Big, I think, genuinely have a chance with the individual level they brought out of Crimbo and back-to-back -back maps. I think they have to speak for themselves, however. It is still a bit of a toss-up. Yeah, when you think about the series, like you've got pretty much three good maps in the sense that this one should be a lot more even. We had a great game from Big on Vertigo to actually start things out, to actually, I think, generate enough confidence that Overpass was possible, but Gamer Legion also have won back, I think, some dignity. And I feel like this is, this is one of those games that can go max rounds. Ancient being a toss-up for both squads, um, I think should provide some of the most interesting CS. And I, I feel like the level is actually pretty high right now. So looking for fireworks here to close out the series. What I'm looking forward to is a little more Crimbo Clutch because again, if this game is going to be tight, if this game is going to be close, then I think we're going to get those kinds of mid-round moments where Crimbo can just get crazy at the B site. He's posted a beautiful 1v4 this year already um, over towards B like it's nothing. So my eyes fall on Crimbo as they always do when bigger in the server. But I also anticipate problems, I would say for both. What is, what is a Crimbo fan? Is it a Crimboner? Um, could be. What would you call yourself? Crim... I can't say I've put a lot of thought into this. Crimboni? Crimbologist? Uh, I think Crimbo doubters. If you doubt Crimbo, yeah. then you're a Crimbozo. Oh, Crimbozo. Nice. Yeah. If you okay. don't believe in his ability, bunch of crimbozos out true, here. True, true. There you go. Snacks in action. See, Snacks, obviously, having played for so much longer than everybody else, his, his webcam quality is still stuck in 2017. <laughs> This is what online Counter-Strike would have looked like back in the day if we had to have cams on all the time. <laughs> it's like when you buy an I old camera now just for the vintage effect. Yeah. That's the snacks got the webcam. It's not outdated, Fuji it's just film. stylized. Big in Gamer Legion on Ancient, it was a knife round to decide the sides. And it comes out with big winning knife and taking CT first. So let's see what Snacks can call on this T-side. Right now, A-side's prime for the taking. Look at this rush straight up. Nothing going to stop it. Deep angle from Crimbo would have to be Lady <laughs> Luck that there gives... Oh! There she is. There she is. Beauty. He is stuck on the smoke. Good flash in. But uh -oh. I mean, there's an entire pack yeah. of players. <laughs> if you think you're flashing into one or two CTs, you are wrong. Five members of Big awaiting that aggression, and poor Snacks left alone against an entire Big Clan. Smoke on the bomb, kit to boot. They even keep their util. This retake hangs on to the frag, the flash, the kit, and all five players. That is perfection, but it's something that's given to them by Gamer Legion's confidence. Yeah, and they planted for this, you know, they probably had this in the before the round started that they were going to try to phase the smoke after the plan since it was on the back of default. But uh, from what we could see, there were so many places to tuck. None of the CTs were actually just in the open getting blinded. So way too much confidence on the other side of that smoke. No idea how many CTs were going to be there. And obviously uh, no kills to come out of it. Now, interesting buy for Gamer Legion because we've got five Galils, one smoke, no flashes, no other utility for the T side and what's about to be an A explode. Searson letting them come in. Crimbo slides behind sight. That's going to take everybody's attention. <gasps> Searson, just the one. Crimbo, good damage. Isaac trying to cross over. It's USPO. 
Crimbo gets spammed through box. JDC, quick out from Donut to trade frag, and the little that was left of Acor swept away. So snacks in the back-to-back. -back. Astronomical ask of a clutch. Kind of crazy to me that they're going for a full A explode on a slow timing with no utility besides one smoke. Like, getting the bomb down on the A site is so difficult. Holding versus the retake, so difficult. No utility to do it to. I wonder what that round would have looked like in the, you know, the idyllic iteration. Would there have been two CTs holding and they killed them both, so there's just no way to retake, or... What's the idea? But it is still a 1v2, and Snacks has him scared. They joined up a little bit. So I'm making a bunch of sounds, so... Yeah. He's ready for it, but Tabson decides enough's enough. No more waiting. Swings out and closes for big second. Yeah, so that's a nice one. I feel like JDC is a boon to have on on big as, a, as somebody who he played a ton of ancient w uh, alongside Shuhei on Mao's and Mao's NXT. They just this was one of their best maps by far. JDC taking it to middle. We got Kios right now stranded from his teammates, pinched on both ends, and of course, with pistols in hand, not much to expect of anything. I have seen Gamer Legion T-Sides on Ancient Get Out called, get stuffed. Question will be, can Tapson counter it? This round, easy. Four alive. Everything is good, and the test now begins. Yeah, I think the one thing you don't want to see from CTs is just avoiding middle. I think you want to see aggressive mid control, aggressive B lane control, and um, a lot of confidence. As I think that's that's pretty much where the game ends for T, the T side, if they have to play late into every single round trying to get back space outside B or well, they can't scare you into crossing up an elbow so here are those nades to come down and yeah I like that JDC is checking on this no one's, he's making a lot of noise so I wonder how this works out for him <laughs> Man, great if you have Krimbo holds that Ooh, down what? Tabson wow. and Kios no idea. Tabson just creeps out uh, Kios also come from the smoke JDC trying to just throw some nades towards lane. This is perfect. This oh, his is own happening. flash. <laughs> Coming out. Flash. That's crazy. Sets himself up perfectly. But he was flashing. That also gets Tapson out. Yeah, he was getting Tapson yeah. back to Gabe, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. Two for one deal. Two for one. Good pizza. I mean, you just mentioned it, right? The aggression in mid, the aggression on lane, that, that almost mandatory CT approach nowadays. Yeah. We get a prime example of it in this round. A demanding uh, defense out of big. I think it's what makes the map super fun for the CT side. You know, especially if like the C's can't figure it out and they just keep trying to run through the smoke. And then you can reset, give up the space, go into situations like this. Mm -hmm. Very confident hey. it was going to be a high angle peak. And attempt to get it going. 10 volts plant. Uh, uh, Crimbo slides up in front of it. Nice timing here from Crimbo. Convincing. So he gets a second to the round, and Big continue to hold back this T side. Yeah. And there's JDC. So I think more of the same is probably. It's probably a good idea. Good time to command from Krimbo makes this a lot easier. But you can't really play T side with just the extremities, so I think the only frustrating thing is you know you can always go in for late mid control, but then you gotta wait. <laughs> Waiting. Who wants to do that? If I was patient, I'd be playing chess. Right?
Hoping to catch these players in middle this time, but it is just JDSC alone. So worst case, one player is going down. His yeah, setup's definitely a little flimsy. And best case, he'll bring him with him. Nobody's checking it though. Nobody's checking it at all. Huh. JDC, easy 2k, plus the damage, plus the smokes opened up for a Ooh. moment. So confirming they're out there, maintaining control of the M4. And Gamer Legion step into the trap without keeping their eyes in the corner. It costs them everything. If they thought this round had any legs, wrong. It's got scurvy. Scurvy. <laughs> I was trying to think of why pirates may have peg legs. Yeah, that or cannonballs. <laughs> Bro, what if you just caught a cannonball to the shin? Dude, that happened a lot in the Civil War. But like, how did you survive? You didn't. <laughs> you didn't, man. You didn't. No antibiotics. Yeah. You're done. No oranges, man. no antibiotics. You're toast. Some guy sticking a peg in your leg. <laughs> Arr, better than ever. Bottom mid held back again. You know, there's that constant challenge, right? Like the T side, it's got to attempt Ooh. it. It's got to keep the pressure up. You got to not give it all away for free. And in this instance, it does give Gamer Legion a better start to a round than what we've seen prior. Searson, chance now. We've seen some missed op shots from Searson that I don't like. He keeps going for the high peak, doesn't come. Mm -hmm. And now Kios is just able to chase in, catch the headshot. Krimbo looking for the impact as his teammates fall all around him. Oh, headshots wow. from Kios and Acor are excellent. And That's it's everything crazy. they needed to get this B site open. There's Gamer Legion's first. First and foremost, stop the mid aggression. And then secondly, don't play around with wasting time. Instantly up the ramp, Kios capitalizing with the double. Yeah. And it's just that Searson's trying to get so clever with it that now we've got two rounds in a row where he's going for the less likely peak and gets punished by the more obvious one. And he, they could afford the first Jeopardy. Not this time. One round to let go on T sides. Not too bad for big, so. But it is an opportunity for Game Religion. Oh man, some more good HEs, huh? Yep, yep. Oh yep. my gosh. Big chunk of Snacks and Isaac carved out. JDC looking to throw his over. Snacks gets shaved off the plate, taps and presses out. Then wow. we get JDC in from lane. The pressure here from Big, not letting Gamer Legion slip through with anything. Sound rifling from JDC. And he is on a tear at the moment now. 10 and three, seven rounds deep on Ancient. Might be his best map so far uh, since joining the big clan. If it keeps shaping up this way. May also be their biggest win. And a testament to the growth that they're going through with time, right? Three best yeah. of three officials so far since this roster comes together. A win over Amcal raises eyebrows just because Amcal has shown recent result at the RMR. They did get whooped by young ninjas, but you know, you can chalk that up to growing pains. That's the beauty of being a new team. Ah, oh, we're just inconsistent guys. Mm -hmm. Big three today would mean something. Process he's on the angle or rather jiggling it, I suppose. And all that time from a core trying to brew the doubts of the CT side. Now he's been found out. And he better not die after time. Uh-oh. Yeah, they're queuing they're that one up. About, he wants to get rid of that op if possible. Uh, Ooh, these walls are high out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Is <laughs> <laughs> he just trying to find a it's gap a, to chuck it out? Like it was hot or something. <laughs> Dude, like a caged rat. Uh, that's funny. Can't get it out. At least he dies before time expires because he knows his time was limited. Yeah, almost definitely would have got traded right there.
Well, that's not too great um, for Gamer Legion, who did just get their one round. Then get wiped in the follow-up. JDC will also be a fun addition, I think, to their land presence, where it's, you know, taps in and got B bringing in the energy. He's a positive force as well. Ooh. Ooh and I'd okay. say a professional one as well. Yeah, for sure. Tapson can't get his as nicely as JDC did. Opening headshots, nice. Acor posts up and the close wall cleared from Kioz. Acor and Kioz with another bout of success coming out of the B entries. It was them last time to get Gamer Legion's first. It is them again in round eight for the second. It kind of... That looks like Searson doesn't really know how to op on this map, or at least isn't very comfortable on these angles. He's uh, he's gotten outdone a few times now. <laughs> Why does Kiaz's picture look like a school photo from the mid two thousands? Is his little <laughs> like the thumbnail photo there at the bottom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 a, it's, it's a little smirk. Like hey, he kind of he kind of has like a kind of looks like a cartoon character. He he double entered you again. This is the guy that's just owning you yeah, on yeah. B. This is the guy yeah. that just ripped your head off, Prosis. Tee hee. Yeah. And he'll do it round after round. You know, I think that's the thing with Kios. It's not always the best ratings at the ends of maps. But if I didn't have numbers in front of me, sometimes I wouldn't flag his poorer performances because I feel like even when he does get so his high. kills, dude, they're there. His, you know? his headshot percentage is definitely very high. Um, sometimes he just gets stuck in bad spots, but... But yeah, he does choke sometimes. It's true. He does. He also just rips heads off like this last round. Mm-hmm. Nice shout out. That duo of Acor and Kioz again. Oh, and Isaac catches JDC through smoke in middle. So that forward presence that they've been leaning on is caught in transition. Krimbo and Tabson equipped with the AKs. Krimbo's got a molly too, but he's got four players ahead of him. First one's for free. Shadow advantage is nice, but Volt swings through and gets nice the trade. entry. Very well done. It's a pistol towards spawn. It is Searson oh. on the flank, escorting fast. Captain's AK. He's very fast. Opera's not watching. Yeah, he should be taking the shot. There's an AK to pick up for free. It flushes the T's into Donut and front sight, but Snacks is all the way over at B. This one could very well get weird. CT's also not playing with a kit nor a Ooh, smoke, tag. but the smoke's not planted for snacks as he's back on CT spawn. This Molotov timing could be huge. Remember, no kit, no smoke. There we go. That molly's gonna burn bright. Snacks comes through with his flank out of CT. Isaac pressed into, and they'll get away with it. Gamer Legion, it comes at a cost. It gives Searson an op, but it's a third for the T side regardless. Yeah, still worth to give that a shot. Three kills on the up. Upgrade with the sap still very much alive. Not a bad eco here for big. One of these rounds, I think they both can agree. We got something out of it. Game Real Legion needed to get a third here on T side. Won't be the happiest situation to buff the economy of big at all, but the round was their only priority. It open, takes a glance. Oof. Damage again of the utility. Snax is making a ton of sound, okay. jumping out. That's a free one for JDC, who's just sitting, uh-oh, up top. Gun picked up. Ooh. What's happening? Acorn left. But surely he sees that gun drop on the ground. I mean, I, unless yeah, the smoke was know. still fading. Yeah. I, I, what is happening? I don't know exactly. <laughs> Okay. But it's funny. It is funny. It's provocative. Well, Cross is not being spotted here from Isaac. Okay. 
Good timing for Searson. Bomb dropped as well in his view. So Isaac was going for the search. Dead. Process loud on the approach. He's got bomb in front of him, right? That's going to be critical. Volt can try this late beat flank with 50 health. But Krimbo's oh, leaving while watching. Oh, no, I was going to say watching behind him. He should just be looking behind him. Oh, my God. He's worried Krimbo about this CT corner. push. Wait, is he going to clear this? Oh, yeah, my God. There we go. Yep. Krimbo's presence of mind. Excellent. Confirmation on the last. Can't get the bomb back either. Poor Kiaz just trying to scoop that up. Mm. Not. Nothing there for the taking. Nicely held on to by Searson Deep and Donut. Once he's got that bomb, this round is over. Man, they're over halfway there. They're big. They really can see the victory now. Yeah, but all we need is Drowlon to tune in, and then they'll lose a round. <laughs> True. No longer working at big, but forever yeah. a figure of the organization. Yeah, I didn't think... I'm sure it's like one of those situations it. where I was like, he'll be on the team forever. <laughs> yeah, right. Like probably longer than Tabson. Yeah, he'll be CTO for the rest of his life. Um, winner of this game has the honor of playing Spirit. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Just what I wanted on a Saturday. <laughs> Oh, well, Spirit didn't look invincible, I'll be honest. Yeah. So, take that with a grain of salt. Searson leaving Gamer Legion salty as they lose one mid. All talk pressure for JDC. Doesn't give up his spot. They're also burning back of A site. JDC, good hold. Crimbo. Uh oh. Huh? Second player in the site. Lost track of him. And we've got a 2v2 back. Oh, nice angle from A core. Beautiful. Over the box, clipping Tabson. Can't help but respect that one. Tabson and Process, who has been having a very quiet game as everybody else is soaking up frags around him. Try to come through splitting the 1v2. There's the kit he needs. I think he wishes he had at least a, either a molly or a smoke. Chance Krimbo still has one back sight. He walks over Krimbo's dead body, gets no more util for it. Does get the A main fight. Acor just swinging like that. Now he knows where Snacks is at. He could try to tap this, swing it, or full on stick. Snacks jiggles it, comes out. Oh my dies. god, he can get it. I and think as he, got he it. jumps on top of Bomb, I think Process just clutched this. Oh! Oh! Why my does god. Acor swing? Why does Acor swing? And Snacks definitely screwed up the movement a little bit right there and just dropped out of the. The window instead of staying inside of it. I don't know. I don't know. My A core swung right there. After this, after this that beautiful was moment. Oh, so nice. That was the only way that process could win that. I mean, credit the process for assuming he would swing because he went into an angle that gave him the best chance of fighting versus a main in case someone was going to check. But Snacks was totally safe. A core was totally safe too. They can't afford to make mistakes like that. They don't have the money. Ash looking dumbfounded. Oh, Exist unveiled as new coach of NIP. Did you see that? I didn't. What, you got two monitors? Whoa. One eye each, baby. Hot shot. Now they bring back Fiflaren and they've got a team. Well, when are they going to announce Isaac? <laughs> Maybe after this. <laughs> Keeping it going. Shut up, Process. You know, that's that's the beauty, okay? Anytime you're down one kill, six deaths, folks, just remember you can post a 1v2. Round by round. The beauty of Counter-Strike. And Searson gets one. Putting a stop to the first ramp hit, but second player is able to overwhelm him. Taps in from the smoke, holds off. JDC kills Snacks towards cave entrance. And this is looking like a nice, strong 9-3 half for Big. Acor softened up in the smoke, trying to track the kills. CT's aware of him, he's aware of them. Ring around the rosy, and Acor is going to go down. Taps in just playing with his food at this point. And Isaac coming out of the smoke for the response. 
Bomb to be picked up in process. This is a 1v1 that's time limited. JDC coming out from the cave to try to help, but there's the crossfire and there's the ninth for Big. That clutch from process seals the deal with the final two and puts Big up strong. Launders and I have been spending a lot of time in Copenhagen lately. We decided we wanted to experience Denmark as Danes do. So, we decided to hit the town, and this, well, this is what happened. I'm here with Eric. Eric is gonna teach us all about schnapps. Eric says water is boring, so we're gonna go ahead and change water into schnapps. How long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been doing this for around seven years. Seven years, yeah. Um, and got Just it, a hobby. Well, it has been for quite a bit of, bit of a hobby who are involved. I think we should start with our most popular one. What's the, okay. the first one I uh, ever made. Kassas Hauna Wurden. Oh! Or the herb. Kassas Hauna Wurden. Kassas Hauna Wurden. 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 Nailed it. Yes. Okay. It is a pawn and, and we are next to Christiania and the cell, cell herbs. Be careful, it's strong alcohol. This is around uh, 40%. Cheers. Oh. Cheers. Do you like it? Yes. <laughs> it's really good. It's a good all rounder. I think it goes very well with red meat. It goes with. Uh, uh, with fish. Another uh, snap something you should try it is Moby Dick. It is a horse fetish. Nice. Okay. Okay. The white whale. The Moby Dick. <laughs> oh. It's strong. I don't like that one. But it has much more earthy taste. Mm. I see why it goes nicely with foods. It's very distinct. Yeah. Sure. It I is. like this. And this is basically a baked apple. Okay. Bottoms up. That's right. It's nice, sweet, and spi spicy at the end. Yeah, this one sneaks up on you. I feel like the other sweet ones remain sweet. This one is sweet into a fiery, fiery texture. Yeah, but it's strong alcohol. It has to burn. Mm. It's good. I like it. Uh, let's try something oh, classical. Nice. This is the final. It's the last one we're getting right to. The grand finale. Well, thank you, Eric, right, for having us and for sharing your schnapps. It's light. Very light. This one will get me too drunk, I think. That, one. <laughs> yeah. that is episode one of Water, Water is, is boring. boring. If you want to come here, you can get as many schnapps as you want, open fish sandwiches behind us, and you can celebrate Christmas for almost three months. What else do you need? Only in Denmark. Big Clan putting in the work here on Ancient. Shout out JDC for one of his best performances yet in the big jersey. And it is fueling Big to what could be the 2-1 win over Gamer Legion to lock in a match versus none other than Team Spirit. Mohan, Gamer Legion yeah. have to recover on the CC side. Do you believe in it? I actually don't. Not this, because okay. I thought it would be even, so <laughs> that... That requires for this to be an even score line into an even second half, and then I would believe it, but it looks like Big's form today is just good enough. They are good enough at Ancient for me to believe in them. So, you know, not a brave thing for me to say, but I'm going to take Big in this in this match That's right now. That's fair. I'm, I'm down to see if JDC can continue the form on the T side. An 18 and 6 half is nothing to scoff at. It's not every day that somebody outfrags Crimbo on the Big Clan. If JDC can do it here and then, Oh my god. Does he just walk out after this or what? He's waiting for them to come in and clear it, but... Nothing. Crimbo. Glock headshot. Rocks him. Kios is sitting on two HP as well. So Isaac, the dual Beretta's back B, maybe everything that they hold on with. Oh! Yo! Oh! He just hits shots like that sometimes, man. You love it. Holtz oh. can't stop anybody getting into the donut. So now it's four members of Big about to hit A. Process yeah, has main side. control. Acor Ooh. popped him. Crimbo planting and Acor toying with the thought of the temple challenge. As he comes out, we get a double back from Big. JDC, can he clutch it? 
Attack from both sides of Donut. No kit on the site player, but Kioz comes out with two health. He gets two kills with two bullets. Damn. Nice one from Kioz. And yeah, that's the thing, man. He has... Uh, and there's that smirk. Yeah, he, he's just got that aim. He does have that aim. He hits some very nice shots sometimes. Good one from Kioz. Um, I think pros just need to be a bit more conservative about his scale when he was coming into the A site. They had everything going for them on A. They just really needed to cool it down. Just make sure that no one could escape Temple and just lock him in. But great shots from the Gamer Legion on the retake. Chance to recover the score line at the dawn of the CT half. Acor on the signpost, I believe. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Which I think is always the better position than playing on green when you think you're up against pistols. Just that little bit further back. With the rumblings of the exec as the smoke hits Donut, he drops off. Doesn't want to give himself over as a kill, but it's an invite for big. Uh -oh. Good flash. flash. Great. Oh, my God. A core down and out and an AP MP9 retrieve. JDC again oh. the flashes. And he gets himself a kill and a half. Isaac holds off the CT spawn. That temple push will get punished. Snacks caught a... Lurk elsewhere, and Isaac is already starting to unravel the bomb site. We've got Krimbo with the Deagle in the site. We've got Tabson as the Lurk no. behind two. Could the, the Fraggle soften Krimbo. And as he sits here, that Temple player is eventually going to get an angle. Isaac's actually not coming at him. Missed shot, though. Not ideal. And the last player spotted. Tabson will still kill one. Kioz in the smoke. This no. is awkward. He's got a knife out. Oh it's my God. three seconds, and Kioz gets the cover. What are we watching, Launders? <laughs> Dude, he was just, he was actually so close to that knife kill and definitely very hard to find. And I think if he didn't hear that, I think he heard the swiping in the air. Um, That got, that got very scary for a second versus a very low investment here for the big clan. But uh, deep breath here for Gamer Legion as they survive. That's a great flash, a great exec, and a great couple of kills from JDC, who's having a two half game right now, right before our eyes. Woo. Getting wow. close. That was very close. First gun round comes out. We got a couple light belts for Gamer Legion's nades, and we've only got one kid on the play with Volt. Snacks coming out of the lane peak. Nicely done. Shaving off JDC from Elbow, who definitely had a chance at that. Prosis trying to get away from the donut peak, but now him and Snacks have changed oh, spots. That's actually a great move from Prosis. I think he knows Snacks is still out there. And either way, Krimbo finds him, so this oh, timing is going to work out perfectly. Plus, the wall bang comes through from Krimbo, so Kioz is softened. And we get Tabson with the kill on Isaac. They just got to bring the bomb back around before they keep it going. Searson can't hold on. It's still a formidable position for the T side. CTs are going to be very nervous right now when oh. Prosis gets his frag. That's the right play, actually. He had HP. He needed to take that duel, and he won it. Still possible for Gamer Legion as they come in with two decently health players. One health for Tabson after that nade. He is locked into the corner. Tabson hands busy on the plant. He's going in. He gets held. Pros is trying to do it all, but now it's that low health. This is a very winnable 1v3. Volt presses out. Krimbo team kill doesn't matter. Closes and big get it back with all that damage done. The round slips away from Gamer Legion regardless. I think it's I mean, it's because Prosis makes such a smart move right here. Of course, there's other kills that happen in this round. But uh, when Snack Snicks sleeps back through the smoke, Prosis says, let's trade places. I don't think you're falling back. He's right about it. Gets ahead of a kill, and Krimbo gets three in total. So good setup, though, because of Prosis. And I think that's two rounds where Prosis straight up wins. I mean, we had that clutch inside of the A site, the 1v2, and now we get this one where he changes places with Snacks. So true. Numerically, five kills on the map, but four of those kills are round Rounds. winning. Yeah, that's a good point. And now Big sit pretty on the five round lead with four USPs. And being a great clutcher in MR12 is even more valuable. Like think about True. obviously how powerful Zipex was in 2018. 
he definitely won entire tournaments for Astralis. So, uh, some of those games wouldn't be possible without every one of the clutches he got, um, which helped them be so consistent. But, like, yeah, players like Crimbo or, like, the clutches that Prosis got in a game like this where economy's volatile, less rifle rounds in total, well, now your stock goes up if you can 1v2, you know, 40% of the time. Do you expect economy changes once the majors may be over? Um, I don't. Okay. Does that upset I, you? Mm, I don't think so. Cause I, I don't know. One thing I never really understood was like, best of ones got beefed up by the economy having a stronger comeback mechanic, right? Okay, yeah. That, that was the thing that they made it so that pistols mattered less mm -hmm. and that you could not have your entire loss bonus knocked off by one round. So that technically m paved the way for MR12 to be possible in the first place. Whereas I feel like the way people characterize it is like best of ones are more random than ever, but best of ones became less random when they made that change in MR16. And so maybe we're back at a place where CSGO was before the economy changes, MR15 with the more fragile economy or something. But, I mean, I'm not saying they, they shouldn't try to make them even more, like best of ones even more reliable somehow, uh, but I don't think they feel as though the results are that random with the current economy. Mm. I mean, I have sort of heard some interesting like mathematical ways of making it making these best of ones more stable on mr12 but nothing that's like that's the golden idea that's clear as day i don't know i would just like for them to like incentivize incentivize retakes more or incentivize not saving more just to okay. make the game more even more fun to watch but i actually think that with the new smokes the action's been pretty good paced. I think the game's better paced right now than CSGO was because of the new smokes. So, I pretty much enjoyed everything about it. So, I mean, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm just actually a big fan of the way things are currently as a spectator. I co-sign all this. I'm having a good time. Game feels fun. I There's mean, that mechanic, like... the, the change to the peaker's advance is just, oh, just... That's yeah, what we massive. That's massive. what we needed. Yeah, thank you. Okay, God. I'm happy for another nine months. Yeah. I'll keep playing. I'm a simple man. You dizzy yet? Man, there's four players over on B. I mean, Volt's got a very safe looking crack spot here, but he's about to lose focus. Oh, they're running out at him. Flash is great again. This perfect flash. Yep. I mean, it counters the setups every time here for Game Real Legion. Like, the round's already over. So good. She pops in the cutout, right? Yeah. A little... Wow. A decrepit staircase on the side of the map is a perfect cutout so that it don't blind anybody on the entry, but it hits the site, and what do you know? Two rounds, two instances, it's just Unravel Day. Yeah. Not that Game Real Legion had high hopes with this buy, but regardless, it's just the perfect one for big. Keep those winning ways rolling. Keep JDC at the top of the board. Yep. Big John. John De Castro. We used to call him John doing clutches. Oh, for JDC. Yeah. Oh, now Crimbo can have those. KDC. Terrorists win. Searson died to the bomb somehow. <laughs> Rough map. He's halfway to B site. <laughs> he just dying to bombs, but all right. He was 43 health, I suppose. That's cope. Gamer Legion's by. This is where it's going to have to matter. Or else we say farewell, Gamer Legion. And their very first season of being a Blast partner team will be a loss at groups and elimination to showdown. You know, bigger names have come to the showdown and faltered. Very true. They wouldn't be the first. You're not the worst loser at the showdown. I've been others. 
Max turning from the flash, but doesn't get it back in in time. Process, there it is. These headshots, when they're there, they're felt. Desert Eagle's in the sight. That's already smelling like a snack, a stack, excuse me, with the two pistols that showed up. You just call snack smelly? <laughs> it, he's smelling like a snack, I think, is what I was trying to say. Tasty. Have to wait for the cave play. There's nothing coming. This is just, you know, back to back rounds with majority pistols, too, right? They're just putting it all and playing for OT. Putting it all and playing for seven rounds straight. And nicely done. Kios finds that timing. Just creeps out. Taps him with a nade in hand. Searson combat op is good. And now the remnants of Gamer Legion pushing out through the A site. Now, curiously, Searson does have the bomb right now alone. Yeah, he doesn't have to be here. And he just forced himself to go for the flick because he's not just he's not holding anything. Yeah. But he can run away. All is good. B site's been com cle completely cleared out. Squeeze from three sides. And so this 12th one is in the bag. Big. Feeling like a day for a win. No kidding. And a heavy-handed one at that. Two very good maps in this. Was he getting sturdy? Really wants to keep this deagle. JDC, come on now. 25 kills is what we're looking for tonight. Oh. <laughs> Isaac, one more. Come on. <laughs> Good pre-fire. There it is. Three up, as you would expect. Snacks turning from the flash, but he just didn't kind of, he didn't have that extra pep to snap back fast enough. Not with the uh, process on the other side. Two clean headshots from process, a third one here in middle. So again, far and few between, but impactful when you feel them. Hope must be at a low right now for Gamer Legion. Big just look very strong. T side's looking good. They've got the uh, John going nuclear energy right now. There is a, quite a serious deficit, at least at CT side, and they've got their guns. Well, this might very well be their last chance. Pressed against it, Isaac opens up, so man advantage to fight from. Gamer Legion have had to wait for these guns. They make the most of the start of it. Snacks has felt frisky on front cave. Man, B is open right now when Tapson does want to walk into it. They've been calling out all the weak spots on this map. The prep has clearly been very good. As you come to expect with Big. Yeah, no kidding. And if Tapson plays his cards right or catches a lucky timing, Oh, he avoids massive jeopardy, and they know it's a cave setup. Acor stuck behind the Molotov as well, so he's just stranded on lane. Krimbo looking to dance with Snacks, gets the headshot on him, anticipating another, but he pulls the nade out. Bad timing, and Kios, an open door to maintain man advantage. Searson's missed shot, doesn't get the trade. It's a new so round. JDC goes sprinting over towards the A site. Searson just throws caution to the wind in terms of the cave player that he knew would have been there. And wow. Kios oh, is going to oh, be the oh. man of the round. Four kills on this one. Sick one, man. The first All great of shots. seven needed. Searson has had a, a messy map, man. Messy map. His first half was uh, full of sort of like awkward posts on the wrong angles into getting rushed down. Somehow managed to keep his scoreline positive, but in terms of like the rounds that we've watched on these rifles, um, he has not had a good time when it comes to opping here on Ancient. Well, yeah, and also just like small details like that, like running by the cave without even... Yeah, look, you've yeah, got a like pistol out anyway. He was definitely stacked up. They yeah. Knew that. yeah, and you're looking at jump up where JDC just ran from. Like, there's impossible that there's anybody middle. Maybe yeah. top mid. You know, not that you have a chance to get past that, M, but it's still just... Yep. Devil's in the details. 
Acor has not been able to have any free moments on the CT side. He gets hit down to 46 health again, but Isaac comes out from Red Room, challenging and not letting everything fall for free. We'll see Kios impactful in the round prior. It's being demanded of him again, but he's Molotoved off from holding long control. His two teammates also. So two sets of fire here on Kios, left and right, plus the flash. Utility making his job hard. He'll still try to duel with this as bomb's gone down and the frag bounces past. Util all over, but he just keeps spraying away. And between him and Isaac, they've kept this one alive. Searson and Krimbo alive in the 2v3. Softened up CTs for the retake. Searson waits, hits the headshot, and pushes Krimbo to a clutch. He hears him moving forward on the site. No kit between the two. They're thinking ramp and Krimbo. He's going to walk out free frag just like that. And as Krimbo tucks back in times of the essence, Volt will chase him down, has to pick up the kit and then go for the defuse, but in doing so has lost his timing. Bomb's gonna pop and Big will eliminate Gamer Legion. 13-6 map three after a Vertigo win to start the series. The all German Big looking better than where they started this year. Dear. Well, there it is, 13 to six, the final score. Big eliminate Gamer Legion from the Blast Premier Spring Showdown. A tough affair, all three maps. And uh, coming into this, it, it, it talked so much about how it felt like the individuals are gonna have to show up, obviously. Um, and Kiaz had a good game for Gamer Legion, but he couldn't do anything to overcome JDC, who as a new player for Big has had a great day. Yeah, he was the difference maker. Uh, he was really the guy to watch for. He even said before the, the game started today that he's been changing up the roles a little bit and it surely looked great, right? I think it's a, it's a nice responsibility. He was in Mouse, right? Where I think the bar for what they want to achieve is a little higher than what Big can currently offer. So he takes a step down, gets a little bit more responsibility and just delivers from the first day in Blast. I think it's great to see that a young guy can actually live up to the potential yeah and it's good to see him bouncing bouncing back as well in in you know top tier competition game really not exactly you know a tier one tier one team that we'd put in that category but you know in terms of the tournament scale and and showing that he still has some games still has some good things so um he's got big playing well a couple of tough losses early on in this uh this uh this lineups time span together um but this one's solid and now they get to move on and they get to have a bigger test in the quarterfinals up against spirit yeah, and it's also great now that it's a, a full German team, right? Uh, I think that roster beforehand with Mainz, who no disrespect to him, I think he's actually an equally good orb as, as Susan. But now they are all on the same page, both culturally, uh, humor, all these sorts of things. It means a lot inside a team that you basically live with 24-7. I think it's a great addition. I, I think the, the future is, is more bright than what we've seen today. And if we if we just if we touch on Gamer Legion just really mm. briefly, uh, eliminated here, obviously eliminated in the RMR, will not be at the Copenhagen Major. That's a couple tough mm. events for them in the in a row. Um, what's the, what's their future looking like from your perspective? Where do they go from here? Is there a roster change? Is um, are they going to stand? You know, do they stand pat? Do they have the tools and maybe just need a little bit more practice together and improve on some things? I mean, I think you said it yourself, right? I think uh, roster changes is in the cards of, of Game of Legion. They had this specific tournament and now their calendar is pretty cleared as they didn't qualify for the for the major itself. So now roster changes can be made. There's a lot of good free agents out there. I'm just considering what is the budget for Game of Legion because I think it's going to mean a lot if they're going to do a cut or not. If they're doing one, it means that they're willing to spend enough money to get the new talent in. But if they're keeping this roster, I would be concerned that their resources is not within a top 10 team. Yeah, and especially not making the major might might actually impact the amount of resources they have to utilize towards anything of that. And on the other hand, you know, the major is always a wonderful time to to look at other teams who go on disappointing runs and all of a sudden you have even more free agents available to you after the major. So it feels like if that's the route they want to go leading towards the, the roster change pathway, they're about to have they're about to have the whole world opened up to them. Yeah, and I can just imagine, I've been a free agent once, right? And I feel like I had a lot of offers before taking that terrible one with Astralis, right? Um, you, 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 <laughs> I, I can just imagine a guy like JKS in, in today's market, right? There's NIP who's going to need him. Fnatic is looking for him. Gamer Legion wants him. Like, there's so many potential candidates. He obviously yeah. wants the best of the best, and he's going to look for his option. But I would be sure that a guy like him is on many people's wish list right now. Well, somebody who's on my wish list is Gob B, and it's perfect for me because we get to hear from him. He sat down with James Banks after the victory to talk us through the series. Gob B, first of all, congratulations on an important win over Gamer Legion, but also this change 
back to a full German team, communicating in German. What differences do you notice straight away? Um, to be really honest, I didn't um, feel too much change between our communication. I, th I felt like our communication was before on a high level. Um, it still is. Of course, it feels a little bit uh, easier, um, that's for sure, but I couldn't uh, really saw a significant, um, totally difference between German and English right now. Okay, thank you for the yeah. honest answer on that as well, because that's something we're always key on looking at when it comes to different teams going international. Now, looking at Vertigo, solid map from you guys, this looks really strong, but Overpass, in general, it hadn't been a good map for the previous big sides, but how do you view it with your playing with these sets of players and just how it went because it was still competitive in there at least. I mean, it is M at 12 and we bo lost both pistols, I think, and um, they are really good on this map. Uh, they adapted uh, well. They catched us uh, one or two rounds off guard and that's basically the whole CD side. They, they played like two or three good rounds um, and they had already like six or seven because of that, uh, because of uh, winning pistol, not losing anti echoes and stuff. And on our T side, yeah, we lost again the pistol. We had the chance to um, even the scoreline, but I, I feel like they played really aggressive and tried to disturb us. Um, yeah, unfortunately, our strategies uh, didn't work out that like we were picturing it. But um, yeah, it's 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 not like too bad. We don't feel so bad on overpass, even though maybe the results aren't there yet. Uh, we had a great week of overpass practice as well. So, um, okay. yeah, we, we, we feel pretty good, but you you must say Gamer Legion, they are really, really good on this map. And they, as I said, Definitely. if they if they win on a better, which where they are better um, right now, the Pistols, it's a really, really hard game. So for me, it, I didn't took it too uh, much, like I wasn't too sad about it. Um, and uh, yeah, focus directly on Ancient. And that ancient was very spectacular from you guys. No, no really need to touch on it. So I'm going to let you go. Thank you for your time, Gob. We'll keep things Thank moving. you, James. See you guys. All right, Coach Gob focusing on the positives despite a, a little bit of a loss there on overpass, but saying things are still looking okay for big on the map. They're going to face Spirit in the quarterfinals. That's the round of 16 done. Now we have our last eight teams. Now we have all four quarterfinals set up and ready to go. Spirit, Big, Monty, Metasport, OG, Heroic, Saw versus Cloud9. We've got one more match today, so we'll bring up the schedule. If you're just tuning in, you get to see the matches that we already completed that you may have missed. You get to see what's coming up next, obviously, maybe even why you're here. Cloud9 Saw is going to be that final series of the day. We just finished Big and Gamer Legion, and Spirit took down Elevate 2 to nothing uh, earlier today. Cloud9 Saw. Oh, Bubsky, I have to think that this one is painted as a nice test for Saw, where we, we know they're playing well. We don't know exactly what level they can be competitive at. And Cloud Nine's a really good test from that because they're not world beaters. They're not, you know, a team that's coming in every single day and having a good day. They they have their off days. Um, this is a beatable opponent while still being quite a hefty challenge for Saw. Yeah, I mean, for um, 12, 12 months ago, I think it would look at this matchup and be like, uh, wow, this is a joke, really. Uh, Cloud Nine 2 0, let's get it over to the next day, right? Yeah. I think today we're actually going to have a matchup. I think um, the, the guy so at Saw has found something unique. I think it brings a, a little bit of that Gambit story uh, back in the days. I think they have a, a good combination of younger players and more experienced ones. I think Roman and Mutirius can be the Hobbit and then all the new guys really uh, stepping in and taking more responsibility on the fracking side. I think the two main characters of, of this team is uh, Story and Aradisha, if they're going to have a chance here today, because Story is going to be with the AWP. He's going to have a, a day against Perfecto and Boomich at times. But then we also have the Aradosha guy who's going to be lurking a lot and, and try to find exile on the on the outer positions. Yeah, he had a great day yesterday as well. Saw's had a, a good run of form uh, recently, but you know they haven't exactly played any super strong competition. Wins over NIP, wins over Fnatic, Enterprise, Monty, uh, a liquid that is that is quite diminished at the moment. So um, this Cloud9 team that you see on your screen is going to be a very good test. And before we dive directly into the matchup, we had Hobbit sit down with James Banks earlier. He's going to give us his thoughts on what this matchup looks like for him. And just looking at Cloud9 right now, coming into the showdown, trying to qualify, we all consider you to be one of the favorites for this to get to London. Yeah. But is there a part of you guys where you're obviously practicing for the major as well that you don't want to show too much here? Is there some holding back in some things? I mean, the London tournament is very important for us. Of course, we want to go through 
and we already lost some qualifier, but still we have still good chances to to go there and to play in London. Of course, uh, we're gonna try our best. Like, of course, uh, we have like bigger goal. It's a, it's a major, but still, uh, we're gonna true. We're gonna do our best. Yes, um, but if uh, the game gonna be not so hard, we're gonna of course keep our like tactics, some tactics. Uh, yeah. yeah, in like in the secret stuff, yeah. <laughs> like this. <laughs> so you you won't show everything here, which is what I expect from you guys. But is it some good extra practice for you having officials on some of these maps and, and playing against these teams? To see how you're kind of feeling at the moment rather than just doing normal team practice which we know isn't isn't anywhere near the same in the practice and official games it's always different uh nowadays i mean before my opinion was to play as much as possible official games now uh, my vision a bit changed because nowadays uh, cs is very competitive and a lot of teams watching demos and adapting and learning your play style and of course um, today uh, you need to create a lot of new stuff and to use it in very important tournament and matches as well all right so a little bit secretive a little bit coy from hobbit saying uh not giving up everything they've been working on for the major um I, that can i guess in a way Bubsky, that can kind of uh that can kind of backfire a little bit right like you, you're not practicing the things that you're ready to bring out at the major not showing them off but you know you can get caught here if you're trying to just play too basic of a game yeah but i think that's uh, simply due to the format like if many teams wanted to go to london the easier way was uh, the group stage right so considering what you have to invest in a tournament like this and see how hard it is still to pull it off i think teams realize that okay it's much better if we just wait a little bit and then do it at the major instead of trying to show all of our cards for a spot in london i think a lot of teams want to go but uh, for the main people um the, the london major uh, sorry the copenhagen major is going to be the main goal okay nuke overpass ancient is going to be is going to be where we play this series and uh, nuke i don't know feel like that might be like a little target towards uh, potential weakness for cloud nine they've only played it twice over the past three months don't have a wealth of experience on it they've gotten away with not really having a toy with it too mm. much um and i we're looking at a salt team that's just saying yeah let's take it here let's get into this let's battle for it because it's not a map that you maybe are as comfortable on as some of the others yeah and it's also a step of maturity for for soul right they need to to take more Gambles, once they're moving into the, the higher levels of Counter-Strike, right, they can't just keep playing their own map pool, they also need to expand. And I think it's great to see that they're actually trying to punish Pig a little bit with that nuke. Um, I also think it's going to be interesting to see how dynamic Boomich is going to be in that rotation role. He's been one guy, he's been used to Symbol, right? He's been used to having a guy like him running around all the time, taking the, the pace of the game. But now he's going to be the one who's actually going to be running around the map, going down secret, maybe peeking door, pushing hot. Like, he's going to be that aggressive AWPA and it's going to be really interesting to see if he can fill those shoes well since you've given a player to watch for for cloud nine i'm going to give one over to to saw and i guess the easy money would be on eris doce after the day he had yesterday but i want to i want to throw it even further down the line to you jerks mm. who had a pretty quiet day yesterday all things considered but he was one of the big reasons why they qualified for the copenhagen major back at the rmr it was a, the tandem eris doce and you jerks working in tandem just deleting everyone off the server so for me i think you jerks is going to be a massive person to have you need to have that your skill positions deep performance in a game like this it can't just be eris doja he was enough to get you through liquid who was looking a little bit beat up not against cloud nine it's not going to work and I, I agree with you like we speak a lot about trios nowadays because it's so important to have that uh needed amount of firepower right we spoke about g2 and back in the days with like honda manesi and nico how strong they were on the best days now also with matches can uh, spings and and saibu right you need that trio i'm not saying they're even close to those guys but they need to at least show the level that is needed to play on this level and i think they've done that especially considering what they did at the ama and also what they shown in that first game here at the, the, the showdown 
Yeah, I mean, they uh, saw even even outside of some of like the skill that's popping off that we're seeing between Storios, Doce, and New Jerks too, just seemed to play like really solid Counter Strike. There wasn't a whole lot of times yesterday I saw them getting like caught out. Their setups were in the right place. They were they were moving players at the correct time. They had good reads of what was happening on the map, and, and they're playing really solid Counter Strike right now. So even for a team of the skill level and the history and experience of Cloud Nine, they can get caught off guard if they start playing a little bit too loose, if they start feeling a little frustrated, trying to do a little bit too much. Um, but still, I think. You know, anyone looking at this is, is, well, we're probably not considering it to be a blowout series anymore. You're going to give the edge to Cloud9. Yeah, for sure. I, I still have Cloud9 as the favorites, but I wouldn't surprise if we're going to have a free mapper here. Um, I think the momentum and the the feeling good inside the team of Saw is just really going to make something else. Even though Cloud9 did well at Dharma, I still think inside the team, they actually doubt themselves if they are really able to take it to the next step, which surely be, must be like the top four, top three type of uh, team. Well, Cloud9 is one of the favorites to make it all the way through the showdown and qualify for the London finals uh, for the spring split. They're taking on Saw, upstart team who's qualified for the major, who's on the rise. It's going to be a big challenge, and it's going to be done with Scrawny and Launders on the mic. Yes, thank you, gentlemen, for your analyses. Launders, you ready for this one? Cloud9 versus yeah. Saw. As a self-proclaimed racist, I know you love the fact that Saw are all from Portugal. Yes, I do. And so with that in mind and their recent win over Liquid and their run at the RMR to qualify for Copenhagen, I feel like Saw stock at an all-time high. 100%. I think that Saw are very real. I think it was easy to make fun of Liquid for losing to a, like, not brand name team or whatever, but if you've been watching Saw recently, they have been extremely good, extremely good, like not just like underrated. So if they uh, make this game close, if they even pulled out the victory, I wouldn't be that surprised. Now, I do think though, Cloud9 have also been surprisingly good. They're a team that's probably not playing to the level that people expect, but have also made serious improvements and have actually survived this narrative of you know they don't have a main op or boomage is not good enough to be that op they've been able to he's been actually pretty pretty damn good they've been able to play around it without it or whatever and i don't think that they're trading ha hands with the op on every map now is the thing so right agree yep yeah so i think that that's actually worked out kind of well for cloud nine it seems like these guys are definitely smart enough to f to make the most of their situation and um you know, they, they flew through the RMR. They are actually on a four match win streak, including a win over Vitality 2 1 victory. That was very impressive. So, two teams in, in, in good condition at the moment. And uh, Saw, is, Saw is one that I wouldn't sleep on. I don't think that this is going to be like some easy 2 0 for Cloud9. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I think that, uh, you know, I still take C9 as the winner of it. I still think they're the favorites. The RMR form looked good. The identity is coming together. But I also say that Cloud9 is one of the teams that in an online world of Counter-Strike, they don't fall off as some of as hard as some of the others. Um, and I think that that could bode well for them. You know, they usually do run the showdown and qualify. That's what we saw in 23 when they were at the showdown, managed to get themselves in. Played at fall finals because of it. Yeah. And uh, let's hope for their sake they're able to do that as well because C9, again, their expectations all time high. You've lost Shiro, who's doing great things over with Spirit. You know, you can't lose the breakup. Nobody wants to do that. So we'll see if locking in this one to face off versus potentially heroic is in the cards for C9. We get Hobbit, who I think in an on, again, online world of Counter Strike has actually continued to put up good form. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm curious to see if he can do that tonight. Well, he is getting younger every day, as you can see. So, mm -hmm. no reason why. Little Benjamin can... Button in the house. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's actually funny. I was watching this game uh, with my girlfriend beside me the other day, and she was like, "Man, these players are so young." And she was looking at Hobbit. I was like, "He's like 30 with a kid." <laughs> <laughs> uh, he That's actually funny. just has not. I mean. There's a few people who just really have not aged at all. He's one of them. 29 now. I think his kid would literally be like four, four or five. Yeah, probably five, if I had to guess. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He's seen some stuff, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. And uh, still hanging on as, again, have you... Uh, 
are you still a big are you still are you still big on the cloud nine needs another opera or do you think that yeah. like, this little bit of growth in cloud nine has given you enough belief to just let them have a bit more have they earned a bit more time i think the thought kind of experiment asking. is pretty simple and they win the major probably not probably not I th so there are certain teams where like their bar i think everyone's bar the very minimum should be win a tournament and then teams that are the level of cloud nine Liquid, Vitality, G2, Phase, Navi, is win the major. Yes. Okay. So, they did do not meet the win a major bar for me. I don't think it's possible. So, yes, I still think they need a, an offer. Well, you can't win the major. Spring Finals is the next best thing. We'll see if they can yeah. win this one. See if they can qualify for it. Tech pause first, I, though. Hold your horses. I think... Yeah, I think trouble with, and then also certain tournaments are actually harder to win than the major. So like Katowice or Cologne have such long runs into the event, including yep. the play-in, depending on where you start, yep. that uh, that can be more teams, more chances to lose. And since the major is global, that means it's actually easier in some regards than even a spring final can be just because of the you know average quality of teams. It just depends on the type of run, right? You could have like the Outsiders Rio sort of level of opponents or um, different situations, crack off. Like, certain things are possible at majors that aren't possible at some other events in the calendar. So even those ones, like even comparing to those ones, I mean, I guess it's possible because of the length that Cloud9 could win a, a spring final, though it would be a very outside chance, I would say. Um, because... I think the only thing that they have going for them right now is the other teams are not as competitive as they were last year. Okay. That's like the only thing. I think Spirit would massively stand in their way. And then I think like Vitality would massively stand in their way if their form was good. But like Vitality's form's a little off. Other teams are not quite as good. G2's not quite as good. There's phase, but yeah. Axile's about to have his hands full down on B. It's the full-fledged rush down from Saw. Nicely done. Couple shots both ways. Teammate comes out with the doors. And Saw recover the man advantage to their favor. Fecto's swinging squeaky, sees nothing. Gets the duel he wanted, but gets gushed. Not ideal. Whoa, big clump of players for the Berettas of Hobbit, but one is all he's gonna get. They're gonna keep those doors shut in Boomich's face as Perfecto has to try and make this happen with three HP. And unfortunately for him, the double door evacuation from Muteris. That should seal this one. He goes back in for the fight, and it is Saw to take Pistol on the T side of their map pick. Real explosive. Clean one. Easy ramp hit. Good follow through. Bomb down round one. Just like that. In terms of carry potential, we've already seen at the showdown, Eris Dos with the huge game on Inferno versus Liquid. Keep your eyes on him. You jerks as well had like a uh, couple of MVP maps at the RMR. Ooh. Gets dinked though. Still easy cross versus USPs. The Zeus of Perfecto, where that's at? Where's that at? Where it be do? Inside huts, okay. Henry G has been trying to sell me on the 100% success rate of the ROPS ramps, Zeus, when you stand behind box and let them cross into you. Yeah, okay, yeah. He's yeah, buying yeah, yeah. Zeus every round and screaming if you don't let him solo play ramp. So. And uh, how's the win rate of it? Honestly, 100%. Oh, okay, okay. It works every round. All right, so. Ah, oh, perfecto. Soul. Not able to get through with it. T-Side pulls this one all apart. They will lose one lobby player. But... Boomich keeping his head down. Can he get another? No, the Heaven player's got him. Dead to rights, and it's four up for Saw. Clean conversion. I just uh, found out that Aros Dos is pronounced Aros Dos. And it, it means rice pudding in Portuguese. Rice pudding. Right? How tight Not is my that? My dessert of choice, but... What? I love rice pudding. 
crazy. Great for you. Crazy opinion. Crazy opinion right there. But you know, at least we don't call everything pudding. That's that's fair. Like that's bread. a British problem. Yep. Yeah. Idiot. Freya. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Probably should be a disclaimer. I'm great friends with Freya <laughs> before I start calling her names. I get the pass. She's my dumbest friend. <laughs> <laughs> Electronic smokes ahead of the pack. And does that turn them back around? No outer play at all for Cloud9. So free cross to the secret stairs. You can hold them back while you're down there, but what if they come crawling back up? Like terminids. Excuse they me. Will Terminids, bugs What's that live in the grounds. What the hell is a terminid? I've never heard that before. Well, Place that hell divers. Is that a dead bug in hell divers? <laughs> yeah. Oh damn. Okay. Yeah, I actually want to play. Too bad. Party's full. All right. <laughs> Split down into the B site. Two on the control side. Two on the single doors. Surely Electronic and Axile can peel a couple players off this one. Electronic's not giving up the kill for free. They're going to have to come to him. Udrix gets out window. What? Wow. All the smoke. Yeah, but that, that should have been known. It wasn't... There was no way to cover him, I guess, from the other side. I I, I think Udrix obviously just... I mean, that's just perfect, right? Like, he peeks first out of the window as they're opening the door. That's really good, man. Saw are so impressive in that regard. It's such a real team. I wish they were like this peaked for one of the blast lists that took place. So sad um, that we haven't gone back there in a while. Crowd definitely earns lands. I'll say that. Yeah, man. They're such a great crowd. That is such a great city. And Saw are such a great team. Getting up there. Yeah. I mean, you know, all things pointing to it. Oh, oh man, the they made it a two. Jesus. Oh, damn. All right, so Axile just kind of loses control of it. Too much util up, and Electronic was really fixated in on waiting for that single door swing, but mm -hmm. instead, it is the 3-0 start for Saw. Because it's usually the control guy that's more timid, right? Because he has to jump through yes. a window. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's what caught them off guard. That's good. That's good. That's selfless play. Yeah, they apply more pressure from the less expected half. And straight into round four, we get Boomich with an opening kill. So man advantage, Cloud9 could start to change things here on Nuke. Pretty consistent in this outer cross as well, thus far. Bit of damage there. Doesn't quite finish off Muteris, but smoke fades while Story is still exposed, and Hobbit puts him in check. Uh oh. Axile, another round where he's pressured, kind of doing his own thing towards ramp. Ooh. Half of the health of Ujerk's gone, and he's not going to deal with Axile at all. He's going to go towards the health fight, and he picks up the kill to Hobbit. Molly's ramp, Electronic trading one out down beneath. They, and so the low HP the of the secret. two left. Yeah, it's tough. They don't know that the bomb hasn't been picked up yet. And two rotators are downstairs. Okay. I was going to say, like... It would be crazy if he got another kill from there. Muterus. What are the chances? Oh, none. No. Yeah, downstairs <laughs> not the play, for sure. <laughs> no, sir. No one had actually moved there for Cloud9. the first one all right <laughs> roman just gets body check and yeah oh well took a chance electronic yeah. the gremlin in the vents yeah i watched dune 2 yesterday with my glasses no spoilers it gave, it gave me anxiety because it was so clear i forgot you wear glasses now sometimes oh uh, what a nerd i always forget
Exile. What you up to? Trying to get through smokes like that. He was he jerks while flat. blind just owns him. So that is put to rest quite quickly. Hobbit opping. We just said that the op maybe didn't change hands too often, but here it is with Hobbit's name on it. He lands the shot, but doesn't get the kill. The nade will find him, oh. and he catches Story. Nicely done here from Hobbit. Locking down Outer for the first time. Saw's consistency and secret control starting to become a problem. They solve it, and Boomich wastes no time swinging out from single, giving himself a way back into the cover. Just Good evacuation off the bomb site to not die, to not give up the plant and allow for his teammates to come over. Aristos drops down, Roman through the smoke. Ooh, why does this feel like things could get weird? Why does this feel like it's losable? I think your instincts are definitely correct here. Look at the spot. I mean, they got great spots, especially with no ramp retake. They, I'm going to call this 50-50 at this point. They've got perfect spots with no ramp player. Ambitious wall bangs. Not quite on the mark. Good slide out. Good kill from Aristos, but Roman... Holding off, needs to hold the cross. Perfecto gonna dance with him. Hobbit puts the smoke up. Hobbit exposing himself, takes a ton of damage. Now Perfecto's on the defuse inside of the smoke. Half a second, Glock is out, he'll get it. Perfecto goes for it. Hobbit's little HP maybe wouldn't have been ideal to try to defuse if a stray shot comes through. So it's a one to survive. Costly round win here for C9. That was nice that they swapped up for sure. Gave him a better chance to try to go for that. A very good effort in that uh, post plant situation. Even to get there was impressive. It would probably take some heat off Liquid if, if Saw won this game too. I think they just Saw would just get more respect probably for the people that missed their games. Just really build on top of any confidence they've already garnered from the RMR going into the major too. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a few names at the first stage of the Major that could very well fall victim to the likes of Saw. You know, a little more intimidation factor never hurts. Nice shot. <laughs> okay. And luckily, they had that smoke to finish things off, so... All the money on the line here for Saw. The revive's coming through, trying to hold on to the lead. Smokes to squeaky, but nothing behind it, despite all of this lobby presence. Variation on their wall of smokes that they've been using as well, and Muteris will use that as a chance to get in secret. Where does Muteris go from here, though? That's the question. You've got one or two options, which is basically left or right. I mean, maybe you have three if you count the vent. But um, yeah, I guess trying to find where your lower guy is first and then, yeah, continuing on the other route. But another rotator comes downstairs, stuffs the plan. Normally it could be used for a fake or just come in for a lurk in a late round situation or stop that second rotation. Player gets right back into the A side as well though. So look like they sensed or sized up the A site for a second. And then they move over towards ramp, get that entry frag. Bomb moving its way towards hell. This could definitely be the heaven into A split. Perfecto sitting back sight, awaits it. Boomich trying to push the SMG closer to Squeaky. Flashback sight, Perfecto has to turn, and he's got them both. Ooh. Nicely done, tracks the drop down. Electronic will be softened up, but wow. neither of the A players fumble. Electronic, excellent rotation down the vent to stop anything from going south downstairs with the ramp kill that could have been a problem on B, but Electronic keeps it fresh upstairs, downstairs, moving all over and securing another for Cloud9. I absolutely love Perfecto on this version of Cloud9. He's playing the best CS of his entire career, in my opinion. He's just so, he's so insane at what he does. His aim's getting better, like everything. Like he's got the decision making, pull off a clutch. He's such a well-rounded player right now. He's like, not underrated part of Cloud9, but like he very much is such a big part of their wins.
We have successfully pushed Saw down into the pistol. So the pistol round and the conversions. Good baseline for Saw to work off. Now they're just waiting for C9 to make a mistake. Oh, wow. Rice putting a bullet in your head. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect though, though, from inside of the site. Smoking off the squeaky so that the other half of the pack can't come and join this outer play. Hobbit. Feeling like he's got to do something about it, and he will indeed cut him off. Second deagle kill from Erasdos. Boomich playing the off angle in the open floor. Nicely done. Cleans up house. Perfecto shutting down that deadly deagle outer. Nice couple kills from the T side, but that's all they'll end up getting. Donk. <laughs> I'm out saw before the buy. So what do you think, I mean, about Cloud9? Do you think they need to get that up, or are you just kind of just waiting and watching, see if they can figure out? I'm uh, Due to the like, RMR performance, you know, yeah. they beat, if I'm not mistaken, they beat Vitality in a best of three there. Yeah. yeah, so due to the RMR performance, I wouldn't say I believe in it yet, but I will say they've earned more time in my eyes. Like, okay. I think that with the major cycle, it just, I mean, you're not going to make changes. They couldn't anyways, right? Yeah. So, like, I'm not mad about it going into the major. If it's a total flop, hey, then we can all sharpen our pitchforks again. Sure. And they'll but, have a uh, big window where everyone will make moves. So. Yep, exactly. Uh, I think, you know, it's like we were calling like for it, it to happen sooner. It's like, now, now, like, stop doing it. But now, give them a little, give them a month. I'm over it. They lose a player outer though. Very quick to the fight saw this round. Put guns back in their hand and they're right into the fight. And the numbers outer have been strong. So they catch Hobbit nearly entirely. He was down to 23. Puts the op posted on silo. Now Story's going to try to come counter pick him. But Hobbit's now taking over control of the ramp room and leaving Axile with outer duties. Weakened A site without electronic in the mix. Perfecto goes for the lobby peak. And this should very well make Saw uncomfortable because they're not sure about ramp. They're going to head towards it. Hobbit oh. is shot. Oh. Story, meanwhile, hits his outside. Hobbit down into the B site. It is not the ramp hit, but rather the hell wrap trying to join in with main. This actually gives Perfecto a good chance at a kill. Wait, what happened? Or What's never mind. Here? They're going upstairs, yeah. He was watching main for a second. Instead, he goes towards heaven because Boomich is taking lobby. And the op is in secret. Yeah, they There's, put too much oh, pressure there on Perfecto. Oh, but Story gets a squeaky kill and he hurt Hobbit. Done. This one falls apart at the seams for Cloud9. Never mind, I'm pissed again. Yeah, because like that right there, you see how that there's like yep. no structure because their offer is rotating in like such an erratic way. And yep. then misses an important shot on ramp and then just like dives for lower. It's like, yep, I take it all back. <laughs> it would, but that one was weird because I think Boomich would even have before normally opt on nukes, right? Yeah, I thought so. Because like at the think... final, he was opting on nuke. He was great. You know, just when we know. think things are stabilizing, maybe it's still all in flux. Yeah. Yeah, I will say for sure, I'm more down for just Boomich to do it full time. Yeah, that was kind of, I mean, that's what that's what this conversation was all predicated on when we started yeah. this map, was that, oh, finally the role has has kind of solidified on one person. Yeah. And even if it's not a star opera, it's enough. Little did we realize things would be upended five minutes later. But still, it's a successful rap push. Saw loving this heaven rap from ramp or from outer, it seems. But you've given Axile a gun to play with. That could very well cause problems. Put himself in the smoke. 
hoping to be forgotten about, I suppose. And sure enough, he'll find Muterus, but trade's good. That's the AK back down to the dirt. Weapons to the favor of Saw, control in their back pocket. Delayed bomb to come and join them soon. Ujerks. Oh, damn. Boomich with a 5-7. Slides out. Rocks him. That's now two potential AKs if they want to play for them. So story's going to stick around here. This keeps the T's stringy. And Boomich, sure enough, sidelined. Blindsided. Hobbit back sight. Pinched by Main, but he can just look straight up. And a 5-7 down beneath Story could cause real problems. Or it's going to be the ladder flank. But Perfecto holds off for now. Story... He oh, just got a glimpse it. of it. Over. He's going to try to go back in off of the flash. Great flash, in fact. AK to be taken, but he gets away. It's too awkward. Story's, Story's allowed to tuck in, and all's good here for Saw. They squeeze through. What a great move from Story. Overall, just like well-played situation to uh, bring that back into Saw's favor. And yeah, like this is what we say, or what we mean when we say they're like such so a good team. They're just so well-rounded, late round, mid round, and on the early attacks I almost wish Perfecto had followed through with the flash though you know that, that flash yeah. was, it did exactly what he needed it to but he just didn't have the gall to go flying up the ladder yeah I mean he had no idea if it actually hit him or not that's a that's a problem I guess when you line up so many flashes in your life when you throw one up like that you're like sure I'm not gonna trust it Didn't have the AK regardless, but Boomich they'll come back in. For it. Boomich would have most certainly gone. Yeah. All in. All the time. Boomich doesn't do half asses. Mm -mm, full ass. Yep. Let's watch him on Inferno. Muterus has gotten to secret. Plenty of rounds, but... Axile didn't let him get any further, taking the fight to him instead. We'd seen Axile tuck back towards control, let him at least get to the, oh. the fork in the road. Axile dueling versus the Opper. A little bit of damage on Story, but not a favorable duel, so he lets it go. I think Cloud9 have a nice spread of utility and players they still got decent map control here but hobbit still peeking outside at times oh wait did he drop an upper oh Hobbit's yeah. on the floor an upper okay they're really heavily stacked here but it's it's the right side to be in right now nothing wrong with the stack okay. it is the right call but they lose their vent player hobbit misses the op shot perfecto's gone down hobbit needs to pick it all up they're able to swipe around the side of the site. And now Axile's going to have to try and join Electronic at the perfect moment, who goes swinging out from heaven. Axile's trying to get active, and he will catch the main frag. Aristos up close, snaps it over, and oh. Axile's got him dead to rights. Four kills Europe. in on a stacked site, because the defenders nearly all die empty-handed. No shot. They have a perfect double swing and still can't kill him. 96 HP gone from the second player, but the spray transfer from Axile's too much. That's the Axile you want to see. What's that B setup like, man? How's that get un unraveled? Uh, excuse B me, setup? B site, AA. I mean, this oh. is stacked, right? Two yeah, players down with nothing. They start freaking out because he plays, whoever it was played opposite event with no smoke. So the Molly came in and he just started running out spraying and um, Hobbit's first shot obviously missed from the back of the site, which meant that they could trade him on opposite and, uh, well, I don't know. Too many players watching the same thing. Not enough shots being hit. Spamming on the smoke. SMG is very welcoming. They're going to go for the vent dive. Three players downstairs. Haven't really had a vent dive throughout this half, so round 11, better late than never. Hobbit will hit one. Smoke in front of him within sight. Aristos able to plant, no challenge. We still have Story upstairs. All the way up. Here's that vent movement, so very much knows he's behind them, but can Roman hold on? Seems not. 
story. Surely would have heard those vent drops, but he's still playing around on the A floor, leaving Aerosmith to do everything. Oh and my. he's doing it. Snaps up and around onto Hobbit. Electronic clears him off site. Oh, Story's made sound. It. They know. They know he's in here. Now, Axile's going to have to hold this. I mean, he made sound coming down the vent. The trade frag's good, but the time, it's there. It seems. Oh. <laughs> Did he make noise in the vent? I swear he made a step. He, he looked like he was walking the whole time. I didn't, I didn't see it. I thought I heard I, one when he fell off at the very base of the ladder. You know uh, when you kind of like come disconnected from the ladder? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, thought, I, thought, I really thought there was one. It was a metal tinge, so maybe it was a player on site instead. I don't know. Sure, I'm not sure, sure. But. Well, good to know. The clutch here from Cloud9. Another win for Axile, actually. Back to back makes this half so much better. I mean, that would have been like, you know, 4-8 plus whatever, another eco or something like that. So Cloud9 have a chance now on Nuke because of those two rounds. Oh, with a twist play oh, right here. We'll call that love the Rob pace. Stop, actually. Yeah. Love the spam as well out of Roman. Catching Boomich in the open floor. Muterus going to find a blind side as well to Electronic. So very fast. And then also the Lurker to boot outer. And just another argument for the depth of Saw. They come into round 11 and round 12 and throw out something they hadn't played all half. Two new ideas in this half for the final two rounds of the half, nearly winning the first one in that post plant. And now taking this one over the line. So this 7-5 that could have been for Cloud9. Looking to wind up 6-6. Six, six. Aristos ready to rock. Oh. Two headshots to close it. And we are indeed tied up after an impressive argument for Saw's presence in tier one CS right now. And in terms of loss bonus, there'll be a second stage next round. That's gonna be $1,900 per player. If Nigel saves Yorb, they're still in a lot of trouble here, but he doesn't really have a choice now. MIBR will find double digits at this point, but will they find the final frag? If they do, it will almost guarantee the next one for them. Quick scope comes in, Nitro nails it, just trying to fight for his life at this stage. And we'll see if this is gonna be enough. Fall in low HP, looks like, oh no. He's got a kit. No, 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 no. Oh, he can no. do this, Anders. He can do this. He's coming in. And I think he's done it. He's pulled it off. Team Liquid win the round. It's Nitro with the Ninja Defuse from Hell. But they're already going to be saving. Electronic actually will catch Config. He was sneaking in to try and catch them rotating out of the A bomb site. So I still don't think they should be going for that. They're sort of running into the CT spawn as pretending like they wanted to go for it. But that is never going to happen. Symbol has a kit. So mm. I don't know. Kill Blame F and Rush and then defuse the bomb. It can happen right now. Uh, yeah, that could definitely happen. He's got the deagle. I mean, two headshots. Oh, Simple could that. definitely deliver that. Oh, no way. No, no, he's too far away now. I think he ha he'd have to run. Dude, no. Oh, no. He's got time. He's With got the time. He can do he's it. He's almost there. Oh, no. Complexity. I can't believe it. They didn't check it. They left the bomb site. And Simple ninjas the round. That's why I didn't get the gun, Semler. Who needs it? Oh, get out of here, Anders. <laughs> get out of here. They've done enough to force Glaive into the clutch. A swift breeze would push Naf over, leaving just the leash to finish this. He already has two kills to his name. He's the only reason that Team Liquid still find themselves in the post plant. Op in hand. Naf, seen, dealt with swiftly. Alige does not decide to peek. Instead, he holds the cross, and now he's been spotted. Glaive closed that gap, oh. and he's gonna have the smoke. Does he stick this defuse down to the two-second mark? Alige starts to spray. A minute. Oh, it's gone. Impeccable. Looked like Fiku was gonna be dead. A missed shot for Rops, and he's hunted down. A double kill for Fiku now, and a four on three. This is looking very good, although Kerrigan... I don't think you find that angle. It looked like he wanted to oh. test the limit. <laughs> Last one bullet. It just, he was already walking back. That's sick. A little fade away there, but that's going to be it. After the timeout, OG go, just go for the simple A exec. And now we see that two of their gun rounds off the back of just full on site hits. There still is an attempt here from FaZe. They're, they're positioning themselves to look for one more kill, but it doesn't look like they're truly going to commit to this. It's hard to justify running into the bomb site at this point. So. That'll be a fifth round for OG. Okay, oh. SSX going for a Ninja Defuse. Yeah. Actually, he actually wants this. Okay. He's going straight for it. Smoke up. Oh, they're trying to get back. It's not in time. They think that's it, but it's not. 
Oh, what a play! Back into the action with Cloud9 and Saw. Cloud9 posting six rounds in that half, three of them by way of retake and defuse, and one of those down to the absolute minute of seconds from Axile. So very well could have been a Saw advantage coming into their defensive side of their map pick. But alas, here we are. Do you think C9 have done enough on the defense mode to keep them in this first one? I... Ooh, that's... That's a that's a pretty good question. I mean, I I guess I'm just more believing in Saw right now because they could have had an even better half and now they get the better side. So I will wait until this pistol round concludes to make any uh, knee jerk decisions about who I think will win this map. But uh, for the for the moment, I'm going to give it to Saw. We end up getting a strong performance from Arizdos. 14 kills on the T side to fuel Saw's six rounds. Like he was so good, right? Yes. Seriously. Starting to become all too common. U jerks from ramp. Makes the first headshot look easy. And while his rotators come in and die, he does at least pick up a second, but now the Molotov's gonna doom him. Fast Beretta's flank from Erosdos has Perfecto down to 15. But they don't mm. know where that bomb is at. They're already starting to go down to the B play as if it's a commitment. Yeah, I guess they don't. They don't split the difference. I mean, this could be a play back to the A site. Bomb now gets spotted with Hobbit left behind. So, uh, this is a hard situation. I, I like this play from Aristo so much, actually. Yeah, well, clearly now he's right behind him. Oh man, that's awkward. Okay, he's bumping his head on the lip of the building. Come on, Valve. I don't actually know if he was. Fecto in the back of the site, planting Hobbit, not watching it, but rather towards Lobby. So at least that one gets cleaned up and Perfecto's so little health, it feels impossible. Pinched and dealt with. Two kills from the Berettas for Saw's pistol win. So clean. Nice try from Hobbit. Great entries here. Recovering from his first half, but Aristos complete, com continues to impress here and um, yeah, just, just love what I'm seeing. I mean, firepower, tactics, spacing, trading, everything for Saw so far. Living up to the expectations they set at the RMR. And the expectations, they continue to grow by that first defeat of Liquid, right? Yeah. Like, I think at this point, I do have them getting to Legends, like, in my head, as the Ooh. one sort of outside team. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that right now for me, like I'm glazing. Although I don't know what the legend stage is, Launders. Are you referring to the elimination stage? Oh, shoot. Right? Yes, yes, elimination stage, yes. Ah, uh, yes, not, yes. Not the opening stage. The elimination the championship stage. championship stage. No, no, the, you mean the playoff stage. Uh, yeah, of course, just the regular old playoffs. Right. 2024, bro. There's playoffs, that means there's groups, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. no group stage? No, sir. Okay. Not that I know of. Call fire? No, yeah, no, RMRs. RMR, okay. Or, as the Danes say, I'm out. I'm out. No playing? Where the best, best Counter-Strike sometimes goes down. Utrecht's holding off just in case Perfecto gets a little antsy with that deagle. Having a powwow in secret right now. Uterus able to hold on to his spot. Gotta love that for him. Yeah. Flash comes at him. Axile blinds himself. Perfecto does get his kill, jumping over. But then on top of Silo in B. Wow. Oh, Utrecht, wow. so nice. And then he tries to play the life preserver. Auto shoddy from Perfecto, dealt with Boomich, shaved down to 50 health, and Story is going to give him a little space post plant so that he joins up properly with his teammate. Flash to the double doors, Boomich tries to cross, Mac 10's getting empty, he's going to have to play the block. Not ideal, they'll swing and clear it. What a movement from Ujerks, so good off the top of sight. Yeah, man, that was sweet. And if he got the other one through the life preserver, that would have just been a graffiti, I've got to say. 
First graffiti from the showdown. This second kill, instant snap, slides off just, position. Yeah, they're just so blessed to have like, you know, a couple players that have been playing for like 90 years and then have you jerks and, um, um, you want to say rice pudding, um, Aristos coming into the team and being this good as youngsters, you know? It's that perfect formula, yeah. right? It, it's, it's the formula that only comes together when a second generation of players from your country can step up. And yep. it's not one that every country ends up netting. Yep. Very cool to see Portuguese Counter-Strike like this right now. Definitely. And then on top of that, you have to assume that nobody gets poached by a bigger organization or something, right? Yeah, like a Sun Pius type situation yes. for um, Movistar. Spain. You jerks in the corner. He'll get his one. He's jumping SMGs, offset and crosshairs. Muterus down deep on single. Does he want to take the chance? He's losing teammates elsewhere as Hobbit picks up a kill. The commitment to the B site's going into the two crosshairs of the counter-terrorists. Muterus closing the door, coming right back at it, into the open. Still, Roman's able to trade, but he gets shaved back by Electronic, who was deeper on the site than he expected. Bomb on the ground, and the third piece of the puzzle is Hobbit up in lobby, so it's some time before he joins him, but Erosdos is too far away from all this. No chance to commit. They're scared of him, though. They're terrified. C9 gonna keep this game close. Yes, they will. That's a good fight and a very, very heavy investment from Saw. It means next round, we'll have to see what they can even put together, but Cloud9 could build a bank off this. Yeah, we've seen some tragedies for Saw in the past, and now it's not even a matter of, like, they're impressive, thank God they made it, but that, like, that's it. Like, it is kind of like, well, how much can they do right now? Because they have, uh... They have, they have really impressed. In the wise words of Jacob Vinicky, they're really, really good. Really, really good. And they started 0-2 down. I mean, they yeah. didn't have the hardest Armour oh. run overall, but they didn't even lose a map to any of the teams in best threes. Not just 0-2, but blowouts as well, right? Yeah. Like they got 13. dumpster. 13 one by nine pandas. Yep. And then all of their wins, so convincing after. So very cool to see them, you know, tap into that. And I feel like, to be honest with you, oddly enough to draw a comparison, uh, it, it didn't happen quite at the RMR, but when we go back to Paris, Gamer Legion in the first stage of the major itself were also down 0-2. Oh, and then they ran really that back that. to get to challenge uh, to legends. And then they ran that all the way to playoffs. And then we thought, oh, wow, they've peaked. And, you know, you never see these moments coming. And these guys have just started at one stage earlier. I'm not trying to tell you they're about to make a final at Copenhagen Major. But it, yeah. it's you never know where, you know, if you were playing the best Counter-Strike of your life in this next month, if you happen to be doing it right here, right now, sky's the limit, baby. Yep. And they're still being muzzled by the fact that all this is online. Get them back in that land booth. Let them feed off one another's energy and let's see what happens. Yeah, that's all. Iberian land energy. Yes, sir. It could be a very exciting time for this team. But they are, of course, up against Rifles on Cloud9, who could very well be taking this game back to a tied state. Sit here and hype up the saw potential all we want at the moment. Cloud9 very much in this first map. Definitely. Aristos. Ooh, the second <laughs> player oh, no, flies no, no, no. down. <laughs> uh, they're multiplying. Oh, nice one, Roman. Roman keeps it clean, but Perfecto comes out from Squeaky with a nice headshot. Roman dives into the bomb site. Got away. Smokes go it's down. All the bomb. That kill from Perfecto was sharp. And if Roman's super passive back sight and Udrix is more concerned about outer, Perfecto 
quick glance into the vent could find him a headshot. Instead, he'll decide to join up with Hobbit. And where do they take this two-man hit? Mm. Not a lot of time to pull off a 2v3 starting at ramp. And they can walk down lower, break those windows open, jump control side, and try to put the bomb down. They have no nades for this. I feel like lower is the wrong side to go to here. Even though there's only one person, they have no smoke. They just literally seconds. have to hope there's a three-person stat. I don't know. Seems like Heaven player strategy. drops fast as well. Udrix scout's trying to hit him. There it is. No coverage. All they needed. Yeah. That literally right there. You called it. You yeah. called it to a T. After time. Oh, oh, he hangs on. Okay. Silver lining, though. That's a fumble from Cloud9 going down lower. No coverage for the bomb plant. All it takes is a suicidal squeaky swing. Mm -hmm. But he sticks the landing. That kill from Roman's key. Very calm with it. So Cloud9 hang on desperately by full investing. I think let's see if Saw have time to figure out what kind of round this is, like money-wise, because I think they're they're hoping it's some anti-eco. Uh, they'd actually be even more excited to find out it's a force if they win it. But there's a lot of nades here for Cloud9, so there's definitely a concentrated game plan. But it's the rich players who also bought grenades. Let's see what they try to do with them. What's the call here for Boomich? This could be the map winning call or the map losing play as well, economically. He gets out, barely, but he's alive. No pressure on the cross so far. Just waiting. The bare minimum of pressure. <laughs> The gentlest of smoke spams. <laughs> yeah. That does afford three players to get down. Yeah, it's a successful cross, two in the lobby. Oh, and Story gets nothing. 20 health, remember? Tech 9 cleans that one up easily. That's an M4 picked up, and the M4 successful in finding Ujerks. Oh. Uterus dead as the trade frag comes out off the Galil, and that cross to secret ends up costing Saw big time. Yeah, that's uh, that was missing a layer right there because they had a person inside of secret, but they had no game plan in if he got mollied out. They had no smoke for him to stay there, and then they had no one to put damage back on the cross, nade the smokes open, or punish the fact that they're crossing with two tech nines. You know what I mean? Like they can't even fight back if those get blown open. So that saw didn't really press the advantage they had economically and let Cloud9 get away with too much space. Now that was a very brave call for Boomish to make, both on the buy and to go for an outside play, but it's the one that actually works the best here. Really pushes Saw to a, a limit they weren't expecting, and um, all the reef, all the frags come in perfectly. And obviously, the player who rotates down lower, he also initially got Molly in secret down to 20 HP, and that's why he couldn't fight back. Try to take this off angle, and Boomish just tech nine taps. Strong arms are out of the way. Perfecto's been a real nuisance on these squeaky door hits. For sure. And, and the A players out of the vent rotate. He's a pest. Cloud9 keeping the money out of Saw's hands as well. Yeah, and we can see why this would, could have been a game-winning play because, well, Saw with very, very little. Whoa. Triple frag grenade into main. Doesn't catch an opening kill. Definitely indicates that lobby presence, though. They go for the boost with Story in ramp. We'll see if Cloud9 gets sleeping on this one. They're letting them know that it's uh, pistols inside of ramp. I mean, they're trying to tell them about the money. Oh, the full kitty utility. That was a molly in hand. See the reinforcements come through. Muterus looking to go grab that util, maybe. Yeah, it's the molly picks up. Definitely worth it. What are 
what I'm going to do, because I think outside would have been the great option here, considering the map. So, I mean, I think it's going to be a lurk into upstairs after the smoke comes up in mini. Oh, he missed that molly. Not ideal. Yikes. Aristos looking with the Deeg. We've seen it already, but just the one and done this time. Hobbit trying to squeeze out from the hut and all is good. Muterus going to find two players with their backs turned. Perfecto's got it locked in seemingly, but not hitting the shots. And Roman comes out from heaven. You still in front of him. 10 of seconds to the clock. Boomich is trying to go for the plant. There's pressure on all directions. The plant does come down. On the front side of the site, things just got so sketchy. And Muterus is going to change this from main to heaven with the 5-7, no kit, but an M4 to be picked up. Oh, he won't even test it? Wow, okay. okay. He wants the 8K save. He'll let it go. Yeah. He'll let Fair it slide. Enough. Cloud9 getting into that A site, but my god, that could have gone south in an instant. Yeah, that was rickety. For sure, so... Tie game now, but uh, at least Saw keep the money on us for Cloud9. They don't build up at all. Saw on the back foot, though, after losing that. They they fully invested. So, again, great call from Boomich in the previous round to go for the outside play on two guns. That could have easily lost in the map. It didn't work out. Now we have this very scary follow-up. But for Cloud9, it's not so much about, like, how dominant they win by, but just getting by. And they check that box. So it seems they'll be the first to touch 10. Really good fight here from Cloud9. Down he goes, fast into the action. Hobbit, you see your right, bud. A little awkward, but so be it. Trade frags, good. Uh, uh. He just leaves. <laughs> he just walks away, Wait. but that's, that's going to leave okay. Boomish to die in lobby. Yeah, but Muter is still here. Perfecto has got it. Yeah, Cloudon actually didn't take anything just yet. They didn't go downstairs. They're working on option. And I don't know if they know where Story is. Oh, this is crazy because Cloud9 play these rounds so slowly. Story might actually have time to do this. Okay, they're just about to leave now. Exile still chilling, actually. Might look the wrong... Okay, no, he's okay. Oh, he's in trophy. trophy. Yeah, I thought he was in this corner, too. Chuck the Molotov back. He's waiting for the flank, but remember, he's got so little health. But luckily, huge shadow advantage because of the vending machines. So he's on high alert there. Still going lower, aren't they? Cost them last time. Axile looking to run into the A play. It's the bomb floating between the two prospects. No. An entry on each site. Oh my god. Electronic starts to come join him on B. Molotov goes too far. Muterus comes up, kills the support. And again, he Electronic, now he's got nobody to cover him. Frag grenade goes towards deep site. Molotov burns out. Seven seconds. Electronic is going to have to go for the plant. At least Axile gets in here to help. And Muterus doesn't run him down right away. Now both hands back on their guns and ready to keep him out of this. No kit, but they are exposed and in the open. And if they line up for the spray, if he gets that first one clean, then it comes down to 15 health. But Just where has the last player together. got off to? Over towards dark and tucked in. So Muterus is able to get into the bomb site. Axile playing this as a slow burn, but as the plant is back site, Wait, this is Axile's going to have to come out of here. Luckily, there was no kit on the defuse. Luckily, oh, Axile oh. never has to make a move. Ice cold from the corner to the clutch. Oof. You can actually play like that since it's a Dante Eco and he could have assumed there was no kit, but it's still a risk. Um, but Axile on 15 HP was definitely terrified. Either way, works out for Cloud9 by a hair. Nice attempt from Uterus. Tried to get creative with it, opening the door, waiting, and going for the same repeat instead of to the top of con control stairs. Opening frag as well. But close rounds only matter while the game is still alive and Cloud9 inch closer to closing this one out.
here's the full effort, the full investment for Saw. Pecto's got the back turn, but the trades are good because the layers on the defense. Could the main player get into the mix? No. That's two down vent and a third in between. Whoa! Barrel stuffed. New jerks. Trying to catch Electronic as he crosses to Astralis plant. Boomich denied vision, but Ooh. can't win the duel. And so the 4v2 comes out of it, and Cloud9 looking for that comfortable 11th. Just pressure on Squeaky to dive down the vents. And while Saw had the pieces in place, it's these weird fights that end up going the way of Cloud9, not once, but twice. Man, three shoved down the vent. They all made noise as they were going down. Muters thought that was the last of it. There was still one guy sitting there holding the door to make sure his teammates got down safely. And that was and that was the frag to, to really just ruin things. The first rotation gets denied. And Axel was just trying to fit in as well. This one too, actually. You know, you, you jerks could have thrown a wrench into things if he got this kill dropped in the dark and waited for his team to come in, but too many things go wrong. It's definitely a lot more scrappy here from Saw. It's not like they were in full control and got unlucky. They participated in some very risky engagements. Game starts to slip away, huh? Yeah. Cloud9 getting their answers. That Even though Cloud9 ball. have also made some some dangerous decisions, I'd say. Definitely. And even rounds like this, it doesn't feel like they're totally safe. But again, close rounds only matter while it's live. Cloud9 on a four round win streak. They can even sustain a loss at this point, even though the round's been close. the crossover yeah this is actually been a blind spot right for saw they, yep. they've allowed for the cross outside they've been very shy about playing presence here but they haven't fully stacked lower as a response so maybe another perfect idea for the attacking team windows popped nothing to do here Bomb plant comes for free, so Cloud9 making the most of, again, the blind spot. And Saw gonna have to play three rounds for OT, but hey! Oh, that's so yeah. unlucky, I feel like. Jesus. Yeah. The 5-7 giveth, the 5-7 taketh. <laughs> C9 locking in the 12th here. Catching players outer as well. Damn, this is actually a sad one for Saw. They were in a, a good spot. Lots of these last few rounds have been within inches of actually going their way. And well, they might leave and end this entire game with nothing to show for themselves in the last six. And I think a real testament to their T side as well is like just the amount of looks they were bringing in. Like the, the calling, I, I liked it. Every time they come out of spawn, they had a good set strat. They kept it fresh, they kept Cloud9 guessing, and it felt like they were playing catch-up. Mm -hmm. Switching over to this defense where I think they've just kind of just, they've lost that groove. They've been they out have, of yeah. step. Some and, individual uh, moments from Cloud9 making a difference too. They definitely got a weakness around um, outside that boom, which is really identified. And I do be clutch like that sometimes. Guns back in their hands. Let's see if Saw's got anything more to impress us with, or whether this one just ended up going on a little too long before Cloud9 pulled ahead. 
Hobbit leading the charge. No longer burdened by that op that he was on the CT side. Kills have been racking up. Story looks to hold back the silo peak. As we do get majority towards the ramp, it'll be Udrix tested again. And over in this direction with no support at the moment, Erosdos trying to dive down from hell. Udrix gets the gun up and beautiful. Udrix getting the double kill as they line up wonderfully for him. Great four Hobbit. headshots right there. There's the op shot from Story 2. So yes, indeed, the CT side still has something to offer up. Two critical kills there. It felt like the grenade fumbling could have ended up haunting him in this one, mm -hmm. but no, sir, still posts exactly what is demanded of him. And Story does the same thing outside. Hobbit tries to chase it down and dies out to the nade. It is sought to, at the very least, secure themselves double digits. Just a clean one, easy. They actually went in the default for once, so they put some pressure back on Cloud9, and uh, it returns to the conversation of it being a close game. Um, I like that they're a bit more attentive outside as well, so a few things are improved. That ultimately comes down to just an amazing spray here from you jerks. Don't even know if he knows about Axile in the back. Just cannon fodder. Shot. Looking to dodge the flashes, but also not letting them get over for free. Boomich tries to, and he'll get away with that. Still some Just goes info. for the sprint, huh? Moves fast all of a sudden. And we'll see what that does for the defense. What does that throw? So, is control window broken open? That's what we'd like to see right now. So that just to changes how much they. Oh, it, it's open actually. I think he should have shoved himself into downstairs. A little bit more tightly. Now they're actually, now they're not safe to go out of the vents, and they don't have control site guaranteed. So if Boomich would assume they're in the site, I'm going to guess. This is the play, actually, for story. This is what you want to do, even the audibles. But um, a, a lower hit is, is the right call here for Cloud9. Trying to pressure upper with some util just to keep them there. Perfecto has controlled Squeaky at times. This is oh, not bomb. one of those rounds. Bomb gets dropped, caught in the crossover. 20 seconds. This is going to be a desperate sprint for Hobbit and the fact that they've lost Boomich. So maybe an emergency plan to come back. A, or instead, this one's just dead in the water. Wow. They the story push into Squeaky. Was that it? Was that the audibles that let the, the kills come out from outer? I'm not sure if he didn't see anything or if he heard someone drop a nade outside. I think that's, that might have been it, actually. And then when they crossed outside, listen, they did it at the very last second. That was that was quite risky. They had to run the entire way, and they didn't have smokes and a full exec, right? There's one default with three cross smokes coming out, so they had to run it and hope it wasn't going to be covered with their players who threw fake utility upstairs. So they really just had to hope for basically an incompetent sort of defense, and that, that didn't take place. It was an active defense. I think there was a gap downstairs, but I actually, I don't know why it wouldn't have been a ramp play, right? Like if you have Boomich inside of control room and you have a ramp play to crunch lower site, then you have a way to get downstairs once you get the ramp player. True. The only thing you have to worry about is turnpike. Outside was like, maybe no one's going to be there, but it's also going to take you almost all of 30 seconds. And as we saw, you're not going to smoke the cross at 30 seconds, so... The calling's good and bad. So we go round 24. And electronic go MP... P90. No util P90, and it's the ramp hit. Smoke in front of it. But Story's not gonna let you in. Beautiful wow. couple shots. You thought you were going to run him down on ramp. You thought you'd find Udrix in the corner alone again. Instead, the op is posted and delivers. And that's not something Cloud9 have.
and still not shy. Look at the setup. They can punish for Cloud9 for taking so much time. They just waffle around in the mid round sometimes, so they can re aggro after, you know, the next 10 seconds or something if they want to or just chill. But they've got lower calm. Like, they, they know there's no one on the other cross. They know it was a full ramp rush there. Muterus is holding this fully. They've got pretty much the perfect setup. Cloud9 will have to get some ridiculous frags to get out of this. Really burning time now, waiting to smoke out. A setup's going to be Eros Dose pressed There's into the hut. It's a Muterus sat next to main. Three members of Cloud9 met by a they Molotov. Know. Yeah, they know. Saw are very aware as to what's about to come at them. So barring any beautiful shots coming out of Cloud9 and more than just one of them, this is looking like OT, baby. 20 seconds. Muterus going to try to press the main smoke, but as he steps in, that's the first one to dot drop. Who jerks up in heaven? has got two players beneath. Good trade frag from Electronic, but Aristos on Hut should be the difference maker. Seven seconds, has to swap out, go for the kill, and the time is gonna decide it. No, sir, not now, not yet. No winner decided on Nuke. We need to go OT. Dude, shout out to Shot. They actually brought that back three rounds after um, four straight for Cloud9. They stood tall, match point music every single round and stayed strong. Improved their CT side live story, hit some great shots these last few. And his positioning in general, you know, he's been called into good positions and he's played them well. Like he's been covering outside, he's been rotating well, and he's been identifying their most recent weaknesses. Like he's actually responding to what Saw have been seeing as the problem. So now that we get to OT, brand new match, both teams have powered up, they're responding to each other. I think Ball's back in Boomish's court to figure out how to take this to the next level. Way more attention outside. Oof. Oh. Exiled. Nasty, but second player here. Gonna catch him. Aristos also into the engagement on lobby. Meanwhile, outer. There's an inkling that they could be garage, but no confirmation at all to the outer presence. Not just yeah. one, but two right here. Wow, Meter is making so much noise. Roman's around to back him up, but they're just stacked on that back garage door holding. Muterus will give over a little more room for them, going for the ramp double up instead. So two lobby, two garage, and those garage players start to activate, getting closer towards hell. Looks like Saw wants to engage in the lobby split. I like this crunch from both sides. But if one of them topples, then that would be big problems. Instead, Muterus high alert back towards Electronic, who swings around, making a ton of sound, but at least picking up the kill. And the bomb, the bomb had been dropped in all oh, of this. So Roman they have to come spot. back in and Roman, yes sir, takes it to the top of lobby. Boomich is going to walk unsuspectingly into this one, but he did kill Aristos, which opens the door for Electronic to at the very least grab that bomb. He, he He's got to run. Low. Surely you got to read this. Oh, never mind. It's heaven. Oh my God. And Roman stays. Does Excuse he have time? me. Yes, Look at sir. his play. <laughs> That's Easily. beautiful. Roman just sat patiently playing both options. A crazy round made possible by that split. The fact that Saw did not just sit inside of their bomb sites. They didn't get stagnant. An aggressive split in from ramp and lobby, and it wins them the first round of OT. Yeah, this is very good to split the difference. I didn't even consider going heaven in that spot and for Roman to just stay upstairs. So that's good option coverage and a close round goes the way of Saw. He could have been even more clean. Game's open for them now. Four rounds back to enter the four round streak of Cloud9. It's a rowdy cross to red. To smoke back up in the opera's eyes. We got but one tag. The oh, gap. Another kill outside. Nicely done. Edge of the smoke on cycle. Boomich gets caught in the middle of the AWP scope. And with it, 5v4 for Saw. Looking for that clean sweep CT side.
The outside tactics, not as potent anymore. Oh, oh, that's a bit of a mistake. Well, I guess just a miss. Maybe Electronic really wanted to grab that, but there's still a ramp player. So, you jerks can fight forward. Doesn't have to fall off if he doesn't want to. 45 seconds, they're coming in. Rotations here with Molly support. Keeping him back. I'm saying call an ambulance, but not for me. Cloud nine again, just having to wait, having to stall out. Story's coming over. Ujirk's looking for his. It's a good amount of damage. He's running the risk, though, going back for the peak. 25 to the clock, and Story still hasn't had a target to hit. The first one drops in front of him, and Hobbit's clipped. But he holds off in case they keep coming. Oh, and Perfecto yeah. oversteps. Electronic clank clear the site, and Muterus from the back of B gets Saw to 14. Look at those rotations, man. That was glorious. The amount of ramp pressure they had, the right people going downstairs. Everything's just improved exponentially in these last few rounds on this comeback. And again, I got to point out Story doing everything they need him to do outside. It's not often you can see people kind of fix their own problems as quickly as um, Saw have here on the CT side. And I mean, we even go back to half number one when Saw were on T side. The rounds they lost were also close, right? The, the rounds towards the end of the game were very close to Cloud9. Most of the dominant rounds in this game have gone to Saw. I mean, no, once they get back to that T side as well, they had ideas from start to finish on the offense. Cloud9 picking up a few of those clutches by the skin of their teeth. One, the max, Cloud9 walks away with. They'll put eyes back out again. Pistol player in Boomich. Wait, what? Why doesn't Boomich die? $6,000. He didn't buy a gun. He Wait, comes in what? with a pistol, gets killed instantly instead. He has 6.3k and didn't buy a gun in the last round of this half. Um, excuse me? At the very least, Electronic trades it, but no chance for him to even get a kill. Story doubles back. And he's got Roman stacked inside of the site with him. This one just gets churned to pieces <laughs> oh and a no-scope. To add insult to injury, a clean sweep on the defense, but a critical mistake here from Boomich. Yeah, that's pretty inexplicable. I mean, he just drops down into his death, and uh, I don't know what the plate. Wait, did he buy a Mac or uh, an MP? What did he buy? He had a pistol and six point three thousand dollars in his bank account. Inflation, huh? Scared money don't make money. Uh, that's uh. When I saw the pistol in hand, I thought he was just, you know, I was like, oh, he's offing. He's got his sidearm out, but no. Yeah. Just, no. Nope. I'm trying to think of what's going on there. I have no idea. No one tells him about it. He doesn't realize. Why wouldn't you be, like, looking at your money first thing? Like, what, ex what exactly happened there? That is a head scratcher and a half, but, I mean, all they can think about is the next round, and that's this one. And again, pressure outside on the cross has been so much better. Oh, Electronic will see something. Sorry, that's them switching over now. They've already been good at it. Dodges the flash, stays alive, but still outer under wraps for Saw. Top oh, red player nothing. covers Cross, gets covered. the kill. 3v3, damage both ways. That Hell Peak, a dangerous game, but they could go back at it with the flash and Story knows he's holding for it. Yeah. Axile's on the start. window. Story, whoa. Now he's got him pinned in. Axile can't get out. At least Boomich is able to bring it back versus Muterus in main. Two kills from Story as he has taken over the scoreboard for Saw. No and Boomich is going to look to wrap him from secret, but that would expose both of the remaining two Ts. This could be a good moment for Boomich to reclaim. And yes, sure enough, he'll catch one. Low health for Story, 1v2, and a missed shot towards heaven should have been his end, but the M4 is oh empty. God. A new lease on life as Story has 14 health, but knows where both targets are. 
Uh, a quick redirection means that this should be impossible to read. Nicely done for Perfecto. He locks up a 13th here. Cloud9 are absolutely capable of still coming back into this game, but... Crazy how the story has shaped up so much. Side Brown's harder to come by, but we ended the half in the beginning of the game 6 6, and uh, definitely, definitely could have been uh, a 10 round half. So I think they have confidence on T side. Cloud and I need to stay sharp. Hobbit Hop. Can't afford a miss here. He's no story. At least he's got Axile with him. He goes for one step deeper. Axile now falls back, though, so that support is gone. The deeper angle is held, but the support is gone. And Roman never closer. Making noise behind him. Oh, he hit one in the back through the wall. Yep. That's crazy. Only for 16 damage. It's Menial damage. Boom, it's shuffling around on the A floor, tucks in behind Vent. Hmm, he's gonna have a lot of pressure on him. That op has effectively scared Saw away from ramp entirely, and oh, it's moved there's... itself out as well. Wait, they're smoking many. Are they. Are they gonna go in? Another missed shot uh -oh. from Hobbit. Well, now they know that ramp isn't being held right there. He dives sight. Yeah, he does dive sight. Heaven is completely open for this wrap now. Perfecto's gonna have to hold it from down beneath, looking upwards. They've got three players on this A floor, but nobody up in heaven. Main's gonna be taking all the attention. Hobbit blinded by the flashbangs. Perfecto's still just staring up at the sky. And Hobbit can't move too much further beyond him, or else that. Muteris comes in with the double kill. He gets the offer first. Boomich, no scope by story. Four seconds. Bomb plant not interrupted, because Roman's got the cover. And Saw will take map one. What a win. God damn Saw. They do it. They push this OT all those rounds in regulation as a streak to get this beyond regulation and they will clean house in overtime. Saw not stopping at the showdown.
welcome to the Blast Spring Final. Hell yeah. I'm ready. I'm excited. The stage is set. Who's going to let that trophy? No! Oh! What is that? It all comes down to the next three maps of Counter Strike. All right. Okay. And he can't believe it. Well, there you have it. Map one in upset. Saw take down Cloud9 on Nuke, an overtime affair, and we had all the important individuals for Saw stepping up Bubski to get him over the finish line. The story with that off was incredible. Yeah, look at how much it means to these players, right? It's not even the qualifying game. They know they still have a game after this one if they potentially win, right? But they give it their all. I feel like it's such a unique story, a team from Portugal, which has uh, been a dead scene, let's be honest, for the majority of, of Counter-Strike. And all of a sudden, we actually have a competitive team. It kind of reminds me of that Cologne run back in uh, last year with the movie star guys. Um, obviously not the same stage, but it's just the, the principle of yeah. the team, really. Yeah, and I mean, if, if we kind of, we came, kind of came into this, like, building this up as a match where, like, Saw's been showing some good things. They haven't faced the best competition in the world, but they've been handling everything that's been put in front of them. Signs of positive growth are obvious. And if we, it, since we, since we kind of showed this matchup as a test for them, it's only been one map, but at the moment, they're, they're passing with flying colors. They had to overcome a little bit of a comeback, a little bit of a streak, getting into overtime, high pressure rounds at the end. I mean, they, they overcame everything that Cloud9 threw out of them, threw at them nuke yeah and the positive asset of, of this game is also for source that sometimes we talk about roman and motiris not being the strongest ones individually but now all of a sudden they also bring something to the table and that gives them that competitive edge against a team of of cloud nine who did have their star player missing in the form of electronic yeah, and I mean, you, you had you had the, the the kind of the guys you mentioned, Mut Muterus and Roman as ones we didn't really bring up in the pregame. We talked mostly about you jerks, about Erdoce, about Story as mm. well. Um, even those guys, you know, maybe not as high on the scoreboard. Erdoce from yesterday didn't have that same level of dominance, but still had his impact in there. I mean, this is a team that seems very well geared, that plays smart Counter-Strike, that's not overextending. It's a group of guys who obviously play together very, very well, and, and results are showing right now. Yeah, and the thing with Aristoshe, he doesn't really play all the star roles, so he's not really supposed to be on paper the best player in the team, but even though he's playing the, the hard roles, like some of the support positions, he's actually able to bring a lot in the fire term, uh, firepower aspect, so it just helps the, the team to have a really good base level, and I think we see it here on Nuke. It's also a map they're very comfortable on, and it shows on the ratings. Yeah, that's that's perfect. That's where I was going to bring this next is, you know, this this is a nice win in overtime for Saw, close affair, but this was kind of a, you know, a sort of a punish pick from them to bring it to Nuke. This was Saw's map pick because Cloud9 had only played it twice in the last three months. I, I mean, is that is that a worrying sign that, you know, a team might not like Cloud9? Like, obviously, they, they've played it, they have experience on it, they've practiced it, but not a whole lot of reps on it. Is it worrying that it gets this close or is it just kind of like, you know what, that's map one done. Uh, we're just going to move on to overpass. I mean, it's a little bit worrying going into the major, right? We saw uh, Cloud9 at the Armour play particularly well, so they need to continue that at the major if they even want to have a chance to make playoffs. And, and Nuke is a certain map, right? Um, they're going to pick Overpass also next. Uh, Nuke and Overpass is one of the most op-dominant maps, in my opinion. And they don't really have that idea. It was hot in some rounds, and it, it changed around a little bit. I'm not too sure if they internally agree who's going to be playing all the, the op roles in different maps. I, I would have much rather just want to see that it's boomage on every single map and then see how it goes. Because for me, personally, it gets a little bit confusing getting the, the AWP on different roles and all of a sudden, okay, boomage, you cannot drop me the AWP. Like, I, I just right. think it gets a little messy at times. Where, where, do, where do you fall in this kind of the conversation around Cloud9 needing needing an opera? Are you okay with this kind of experiment? They're, they're sort of running, whether out of choice or whether they just don't feel like there's an opera willing to, to kind of change things up for? Are you kind of of the mind that, you know, no matter how good they do, you know, in these next few events and especially at the major, they still need to find a way to get an opera into this team? I do think they're coping a little bit by not getting an AWP, but they have so many good players, right? That it's also hard to cut someone from the team. Um, and they will get good at results, even with this team, because they simply have so many good ones. We're talking about Axile, Electronic, Perfecto. These are star quality players, right? But it's all about not having the candidate. I don't buy that one. There's so many people in that region who can take up a, a step up. We have Art Frost, we have Deco, we have all these guys. We even saw Amkel with the IC on the team doing particularly well at the Armour. So there's so many ones they can get and surely a guy or like a team like cloud9 has the resources to do what is needed 
Okay. And again, if we start moving and looking ahead towards towards overpass as well, now this is Cloud Nine's pick coming into it. Um, but it's not exactly you know a scary prospect for Saul. They 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 got to be confident on this map. They've got a seventy five percent win rate in the last four maps that have been played in the last three months. Um, yeah, quality of competition is always going to be lower for a team that's kind of on the rise. So that number is a little bit skewed. Um, but but they've you know this isn't quite the same situation as taking it to Nuke, where Cloud Nine really haven't played many games on it at all. And we should also take into consideration that they just made a massive comeback, right? The momentum and the spirit is flying high within the team. And now they're going on to start on the CT side of Overpass. That can never be a better recipe for potentially winning 2-0 against the likes of Cloud9. I think going into that piss round, they're going to be feeling themselves. If they're going to win that one, I think the Cloud9 could be in a bad position. Who, who do you look to for Cloud9 to kind of step up in this in this next map? If you mm. want to, if you're going to go to Overpass, who's who's kind of like the main player for Cloud9 that that really dictates whether they're going to be playing this map well or not? We obviously know bathrooms mm. control is super important. Being able to control uh, the blue door and the stairs is super important. But who is it on this Cloud9 team that really needs to have a good game for Overpass to feel comfy for him? Ever since the the change of Electronic going away from the IGL role, I think it's him and Boomich that we're going to look for. I think Boomich is an sure. IGL who's willing to take space. I think when I played back in the day, he reminded me. So so much of Kerrigan, right? He just takes the, the timings. If he has that sixth sense of when he has to do a play, when he has to push a smoke. And on the other side of things, we have Electronic, who's the more, more smart or not, the more calculated type of player who's just really strong in his individual department. Uh, I just think he brings a lot of table. And I think this duo particularly is one Cloud9 is going to stick for for a very long time. Oh, it's funny. We we had the conversation uh, in the previous matchup between um, you know Big and Gamer Legion about how ops were going to be so mm. important on a map yep. like Overpass, but we see Story just spanking, and we see Cloud9 without an op altogether. So they might be in some trouble, Bubsky. Yeah, no, especially on Overpass, right? We see Boomich on the A side playing it, um, but they have to get a good T side if they want to go over and try to actually sure. bring that firepower to the table in terms of getting the op on the CT side. They need to at least get that three, four rounds to be able to actually afford it on the CT side. So I would be having a look out for that T-side, especially in the connector slash um, toilet area, because this is where most of the plays is going to be made from Boomich. All right. Well, you're hearing it now. We're about to see Cloud9 take on Overpass without an opera, as we all know, or just an impromptu one. Boomich, Perfecto, whoever feels like picking it up in the moment. However, they are down one map to nothing against Saw. Elimination on the line, elimination on the cards. Cloud9 got to win this or else they're going home and no chance at London. They're one of the favorites coming into this event. Headed to a break. When we come back, Overpass is underway and the series continues.
Ladies and gentlemen, the showdown's always good for an upset or two, but Mohan, it feels like this one's upset city. A yeah. uh, potential another favorite elimination versus Cloud9 here. All they've got to do, all Saw's got to do, get through Overpass, and this one's sealed. And they, they like Overpass, so, I mean, this is actually a uh, situation where Cloud9 don't pick Anubis because Saw's so good at Anubis, so, like, their veto strength is kind of crazy. And then when it gets floated, uh, Saw actually banned Anubis as a second ban, so... They're, they're, I think, quite happy to be here. I think they maybe could have precipitated, you know, Anubis Cloud9 to pick. They don't, they wouldn't know exactly where Cloud9 would take it, but they're ready for both, I'm sure. So, um, it's, it's looking good for Saw right now. I mean, they, they survived their map pick. They didn't like dominantly win or anything. That was, uh, that could have been Cloud9's win for sure. But I think what we saw is that they can go toe to toe with them individually as a team. And uh, again, if we go back and relive those rounds, I think that uh, Saw actually had way more dominant wins than Cloud9 did. So let's see if they have transfer some of that energy into Overpass, as Bubski said. They'll be feeling great on this pistol. To close it out on CT side as well, right? Another little advantage they get in their back pocket as it is Cloud9's map pick. So crush them. Seize the day. This could be one of the best months of some of these Portuguese veterans' Counter-Strike careers. London is calling. Hugo Byron, he's on the phone. <laughs> From the manor. I mean, Jeeves picked it up, but he's on the phone. Pretty close on it. He's got support in the site. We got three players here. They've given him a good run wow. at the bomb site. They gave him a lot of real estate. Just start getting that ball rolling. Sure enough, three clean ones. But here comes the rest of Saw just barreling out with Berettas. Down to the 2v2. No, Wait, what? no. Oh. Ujerks and Aristos into the fray. They don't even care, man. These guys are crazy. That's so, like, that was like a round done. They had him running through smokes, the last two guys. That was the easy part. I thought Axel did enough. Look how calm the situation is. Great shots from you jerks. And he's not really moving. They just can't hit him back. 2v4 from just running out of the smoke on dumpster. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Bubsky said, you know, they feel, feel good coming into the pistol. Well, they feel even yeah. better coming out of it. Yeah. And, I mean... Like, like Tact Liquid is like on par, maybe even better than their wins at the RMR. It's just that it's an online match. And then Cloud9 would further legitimize it. So, I mean, this this showdown, I mean, if they can make a run here with the amount of team good teams here, that really just ups their confidence, ups their stock. And again, silences any doubters in the RMR that says, oh, they didn't face the hardest competition. I remember watching that game versus Nip and thinking, oh, I actually feel kind of bad for Nip because, yeah, they, they lost to Amcal. The overpass game was one of the worst CS2 games ever played. But then when they played against Saw, Saw was actually insane. <laughs> and and I, I remember thinking, like, people aren't going to remember them for being insane because they just saw the Amcal game. They're just going to think Saw got lucky and Nip really just suck, but that wasn't the case. They, they were good. They were good as hell. Dose. Going to make sure nothing happens here with the pistols. Nobody's getting weird. Almost going to get shut down. And Sock will keep on feeling themselves. Five up. No sketchy antics. Nothing for Cloud9 to feel good about. You got it out. <laughs> I was going to say, yo, change the camera, man. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah. What the hell? He was just kind of leaning on it. Yeah, yeah. Just, you, you know, Getting leverage. It gets a little heavy sometimes, dude. You got to just... Uh, looking for strats. Roman <laughs> on the rock. <laughs> Thank you. 
Guns make a world of difference out of the gate here. Round three, Cloud9, instant long A control. No bathrooms play for Saw. On the free round, quote unquote, they did come in with SMG. I kind of hate overpass for this round particularly, like this awkward one, you know, the, you're in Inferno, you keep the double farm as double MP9. You're playing Mirage, you can keep it. Yeah. And nuke, you can play it. You play overpass with double MP9, double FAMAS, it's just... Ugh. That's true, that's true. You, your CT advantages only come when you're like maximum full strength. Like, you're off your M4s. Unique in that sense and out of the gate roaming down. Really just forfeiting the A play, huh? Sticking to the yeah. inside stack. Fingers crossed. I oh, haven't seen them stack too often, but they aren't really in a position to like spread the map entirely. I think they already don't feel like it's B at this point, but it's just too late. They'll have to recycle and save or <laughs> watch them just win somehow. Right, another double push out from Dumpster perhaps. These weapons didn't do much for you this round. You really want to keep them in the next. They don't even have utility to get beyond the dumpster, so they know they have to concede it, and they know that that's Cloud9 with early T-side success on Overpass, something any team dreams of. With five up. No, yeah. Yeah, no rifles have been lost. That's nuts. They have uh, four AKs and a Galil. So if Eris Doss means rice pudding, maybe you jerks means jerk chicken. There maybe. Uh, there's a slight chance. There's a lot of Portuguese chicken shops in Toronto, and they all are obviously like rotisserie chicken. So that's a very popular thing. Make some banging rotisserie chicken. Honestly, food across the board in Lisbon. Fair enough. Since we want to be back, <laughs> let's be honest. Let's be honest. The yeah. crowd is the great, but uh, the, view, the, the views, the people, the graffiti. The list goes on. Everything, to be honest. The weather. And nowadays, the Counter Strike. Yeah. Right, long play set up. Two players pressing up against the wall. Now, again, you're trying to put yourself in a spot where this MP9 can do something and you're limited, so. Close long, perhaps your best chase. If anybody tries to get away on party, go ahead and swing. Gonna get Perfecto with a double Molotov, it seems, once the train goes by. Minute on the clock. Everybody set up outside of the B site for C9. But they're met by another smoke, so the waiting game goes on. That gives Muteris just enough time to wait and wait and now activate with two backs turned from him. Roman's got to be ready for it. He'll win his duel straight up. Connector player is able to get back down. He's going to call for this departure. Muteris getting all the info they need to throw that third player in Story back down onto the B play. Story was so good on Nuke with that off. He gets spotted on the flank. So now suddenly Cloud9 know that they don't have the element of surprise that they should anticipate this site to be stacked and they need to consider whether they follow through. Molotov in front of Monster. Not ideal. There is a smoke on Axile, but then you'd have to run through it, and he's on short instead. Ten seconds. Yikes. Flash goes over. New Jerks gets blinded. MP9 can't hang on. Ooh. Electronic, a critical double, but there's seven seconds. Down to five. Four. Perfecto. No plant. plant. Come oh, on. Come on. What the? Say oh, it. and after time? He was even close. Yikes. Bomb stuck behind the Molotov, maybe? Electronic gets ahead of it. No, and that's literally with out. two kills at once. I have no idea. Just, like, run forward. <laughs> Old W, bro. Like, 
Like, They're literally all dead. nothing else matters. If you die, you die. At least you tried. And that gives Saw an easy chance to get up into the upgrade. Now you got Story on the off, coming off of such a good game. Yeah. Nucleus is away ground, but now it's Perfectos. Roman's not going to let the first kill go down for free. Falls back. Connector player in Muterus goes into his depths. There's nobody down there to stop him. It is again going to be the monster crawl out from Electronic. Looks like it'll work too. No one here to stop him. Aristos spotting. He'll see the Heaven Smoke come in. Player out wide. That's Electronic. Another entry. All right. The Revenge Tour works. The disadvantage against Perfecto's AK2. He can't do anything about that one. They are forced into the save. Cloud9 can definitely rebound pretty quick from that fumble of a play back on B. Yeah, no kidding. It was good on Saw for like balancing their utility for so long in that last round, but like, don't commit then. I mean, save, you know. At least they've flushed out all the MP9s, the bomb eye. Double M4 op save here. Z9 just banking on Electronic. Who in the last round as well got the clean entries. You know, they were pressed for time, that's for damn sure. But he still came through with kills. And this mm -hmm. time he does the same thing. Just unannounced in comparison to the super late full-blown util exec of the round prior. Perfecto as well, punishing Story for the missed op shot. Saw trying to talk through a solution to the early days of this defensive half. It ain't easy stopping Electronic when he decides to go on a tear. Still has been the best thing about this C9 roster ever since For he sure. gave away the shackles of leadership. No longer his problem. Yeah, he bounced back. Now it's time for your kinder to bounce back. Tell. Oh, they're waiting perfectly for this. They got a good guy tucked in. Another shot for Story. He has just been a highlight reel, man. Love, love what we see from Story. Not just in terms of shots, but rotations and his positioning. I just think it's been sort of flawless, if I have to be honest. Pillar and Udrix as a teammate to both sides, so we'll see if he Spot can just it. keep his head tucked or... No, he's going to go into it first and foremost. Even better now with the cover around him. Didn't know he was spotted. Tronic whittled down, and again, it's this late B entry that's just not going to come at them. I mean, the bomb is ahead of them, and they've already given up, so Saw going to get this fourth. Yeah, they're out of here. I mean, T-side overpass can be awkward, so they're still... they got a good ratio of rounds at the very least. It's, their, it's Portugal's first major, right? Oh, it's a big question. I, I thought that they literally didn't... Team? Yeah.
It's like you would have had Fox, obviously, right? Player wise, they've done it before. It's yeah, it's no, 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 Portuguese lineup. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I mean, all basically all iterations of Muteris and Roman's teams. Yep. Have never. Their first time. They've been trying for their years. First time, dude. And yeah. they finally get to one. The first of CS2. Crazy. I wonder what that feels like. That probably feels pretty good. I mean, you waited a long time to get to your first major. That's true. You know? That felt pretty good. Yeah. I imagine now with stickers, crank it to a, tw uh, to a 20, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like, give me a <laughs> The multiplier is real, man. <laughs> give me a sticker. I, I, you know, I would even say from a viewing's perspective, like just from, from spectators at the major, when people get to come to the major, even just as fans of, of the game and to cheer in the crowd, <laughs> You know, even if they've gone to Counter-Strike events in the past, they're like, oh, it's my first major, though. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's like, it's just, it's infectious from top to bottom, no matter who's involved. Mm -hmm. Surely the players get the biggest high off that. Especially if you've been waiting 10 years, man. And they're Portuguese, they're so emotional. Yeah. It was paint that James round, man. That one's, that oh, one yeah, Armar, oh, when was yep. that? Was um, that Stockholm? I think it was Rio. Stockholm or Gosh. Rio, one of the two, but when, when he oh, absolutely man. soul crushed them. That was just... Inferno, was... B-Sight, millisecond oh, clutch. Boy, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Like, that actually would give you nightmares if you saw the players in the time. I think actually it was in Antwerp, because I think we did the RMR in Romania for that one. Oh, it could be. Oh. I remember watching that thinking, this is like just horrible to watch. Like, yeah, this is just it's pure like, pain. Like I, it's actually murder. But I really didn't think I'd be thinking about it three years later, and I actually am. Here we are. I can still remember how much that hurt. But it's that loss that makes the qualification that much sweeter. Now they're coming for him. Roman tucked into the bathroom side story. A little weird there, as he looked like he was just about to start going back, and that is when the T shows up to hit him with a bullet. 25 seconds, though. You know, we've been flapping gums down to the 25-second mark, because this is seemingly <laughs> yeah. the only time that Cloud9 can make a damn move. And by the time they go to go for it, look what happens. You get two instant kills out of you jerks. They will approach the site with 12 seconds on the clock, just enough time if needed. And as the peaks continue to come out from Perfecto, all is good. Excuse look me? at that. That is what they play for. Those are the kills you need to make this kind of shit work. <laughs> they just lost two guys. You jerks peeking off a short, no problem, two haircuts into somehow losing that round. He's got to be pissed. They just had so many people wet ready for that hit to come in, and they still just lost like four deaths in a row. Shout out to Perfecto, though. That's a crazy shot. And so is this. All very clean. That's a tilter. And... Especially after just like waiting all that time, man. That's like Jane flashbacks. That round that Jane won in the last second on a quad, that was probably a round that they had to wait all round just for the exec to come in in the first place. <laughs> Can't let the guard down. Gotta sleep with one eye open if James in the same country as you. <laughs> same country. You'll win a round before the game There's starts. There's no water between careful. you and James. You better be looking behind <laughs> yeah. And I heard he can swim. Hold on, hold on. Roman's coming forward Yo! Here. Oh, okay. Yeah, things are getting weird okay. with the USP dinks, the separated fights, Roman's Yo. Wall bang. Boomich is stuck outside of the B site. Whoa. And nothing is making sense now. He can just go in. They have a molly. Boomich is going to molly short right now. Pistol's going to go out die and they know where the rifle was Roman's not gonna skip a beat goes for the monster flank we can pretend to add suspense but surely cloud nine aren't gonna lose this one this one is literally impossible okay thought he's still gonna walk in for some reason all right all right c9 you left something to be desired, but they're starting to reclaim that success early on. Eight rounds into the T side, they've got four secured. Ujerk's just hitting them with the USB. 
but that's the power of the buy, right? Armor, nades, guns, making the world different. Fuel is actually kind of close right there. Back on story, but no longer as invincible as he was on nuke. Couple missed chances. This time, not the case. I mean, there's not even a flash there or anything for Exile, is there? He just straight up wide swing. Oh, no, okay. All right. Yeah, just five seconds late right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Bro, you didn't flash. Yeah, I did. It's coming, bro. <laughs> oh. Wow. wow! I don't okay. even know how to feel about that because waiting. Oh, what the? <laughs> right? Like, I don't know if I want somebody to push through a smoke, get a kill, or if I want the guy jumping in the jumping. air to get the kill. Who was waiting for the push, but jumped accidentally? Like, he should have got the kill, but he shouldn't have been jumping. Nice nade uh. from Boomich, though. The homing missile down through bathrooms to get it back. It was, it was. This is a big chance for Cloud9. Like, look how broke Saw will be if they end up bungling this story. They're going to need you, bro. Oh, good nade. Big nade. But with the timing, you know, they could still... Oh, Saw his head. head. Utility yeah, comes over. He's just going to give it up. Doesn't legal. want to stop him. Yep, stay alive in the 4v3. Let the connector flank come out with two players. He doesn't do anything silly, this guy. Uterus is coming waiting. to support. And Electronic goes back into the fight on site. Udrich doesn't wait any more time, just comes right into it. Hobbit will get the death, and Boomich gets the trade. But then again, back's turned, right? Second layer to that bathroom's flank. Mm -hmm. Eros Dos finds his timing, keeps his health full, and pushes Boomich to the 1v3 against the long wall. But they're looking the wrong way, and there's the trade. Muterus has it. Nicely done from the Opera to evacuate the site, not give away that man advantage, so the retake comes in clean. Very scary for a second. The double spray down would have given him a chance for sure to close that out clean, but a good shot from Story. It was important to point out that, yeah, he had a couple of chances he needed to land. Previously hit it this time. You jerks, perfect. He's just not scared to be aggressive when he needs to be. And right there, if they had both tried to flank without showing themselves, then it would have just sold it for both of them because they would have not had a chance to, like, both get a chance to attack. It would have both died at the same time or had everyone turn away at the same time. So it's much better that you jerks tried to fight right there. Just take one, lose one. I really like the way he plays. Cloud9, we're on the brink of breaking saw. How the tables have turned after the last one. Reinvest everything they can, but they're met by the Molly on B. Util goes out with the wave. Off shot. It's a miss, but Ujerx has it. Help from the pillar. Double kill made easy. Aristos here to support him. Flash oh is my. fantastic. And as he throws himself at the monster, he confirms the bomb presence and pretty much the round. Three kills off the pillar is perfection. That was so sweet. And then the flash for monster with the smoke push as well. Perfect transposition. Muterus, three, two, one. Oh, doesn't see him. Lovely. They finally don't face tragedy with enough players in B site, <laughs> all with good positions and kills, and then somehow lose. So that Molotov hits on short side, dude. Mac 10 player was just so excited to get into that bomb site. <laughs> yeah. Like, they had to go then and there with the util that they had committed. But the thing is, I mean, the problem with that, in my mind, is now that I think about it, like, you want to get in because you've thrown your smoke, but then you rush it so much that the smoke hasn't popped, so the opera has got a good line on you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mismatched right. timings. But if Axile can hang on, he's burned a minute off the clock in this save, hanging on to the AK-47 that they'll certainly need. Round 10 belongs to Saw. Shooting for the eight-round CT side. 
Suddenly, it boils down to a pistol. Consistently good here on B. You jerk, send it. They have lost rounds, but even on those rounds, you jerks was getting his. That uh, double kill off short push, late round. Rector came back with three kills, and Electronic got one. You jerks got two to make it a 3v5 to start. See if they're flimsy on the anti eco. Good util. It's always right in their plans. Right in their plans. Trying to set up the AK to trade electronic. They're gonna go for the double monster hit with the flash. Yeah, they already kind of stuffed this attack, but. Nice kill. Wow. The AK down. Just a clean spray. Harris Doe's just not missing. And while Hobbit gets his hands back on the gun. A good trade frag back on the barrels player at least opens the door for the bomb to try and slip over top. Boomage caught out, grabs the second weapon. There are chances here for Cloud9, especially if they can get away and reset with weapons. They've they've earned an extra gun and at least took down Erisdos in return. Are they still spotting monster? They just re-smoked it, so I think they they haven't gone for the full reclear, but I think they're pretty sure that they peeled back. They still have a couple things to clear outside monster to be sure, but. Still playing for info safely, I guess you could say. And there, they're trying to clear him now. Yep. Player coming up, but that's Roman. No Only 12 HP. This is going to have to be something from story. Miss shots, not ideal. Supportive from Roman. He's got it in the opera. Draws that line in the sand. Boomich into the 1v4. He's got to pick the bomb back up first. Roman's not going to give him a fight because of how low he is, and that flank out of connector gets it. Saw will take their seventh. Yeah, safe hands. And they uh, got the rotations in early because they, they cleared out everything on B. That was a nice one from Aristos this time. Who, between Aristos and uh, u -Jerk, you wonder how they ever lose B. Let's see how clean their mechanics are. It's actually alarming. These guys are legit talents. Muter is about to walk away with an eight round half and a one kill game. Mm. That's but hey, kind of you team got I'm friends. trying to be on. You know? If you got friends, let them do the heavy lifting. Yeah. Let's cheer them on. That's what moving day is all about. I'm going to come help you, bro. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> There's those. Locked in again. We've seen him do good things from here, and we've seen New Jerks do even better from the B site. Man, if it's not Story back on Nuke, it's New Jerks here. 15 Dude, kill. So Electronic consistent. just gets toppled. No entry pathing from Cloud9. No uh -oh. chance. No opportunity to get in. Totally shut down again, making the most of the CT side and their run at Showdown. Mere rounds away from eliminating Cloud9. Good evening, CS Nation. I'm here on Overpass, where a simple birthday party took a turn for the explosive. It turns out the struggle is real. Yeah, I mean, we came to this park. Um, it just got upgraded and updated a few months ago. And um, yeah, everything changed. I mean, I expected uh, others to have eco and not come around in the park, but yet here we are and, and everything is flying around. Uh, there's bullets of flashes and yeah, that has ruined the birthday party for my dear son here and, and all the balloons we set up was like $40, and that is gone. The only thing we have left is basically our hats. So it's, I'm feeling sad for me. Six months I planned this. Six months? Yeah. Oh my. Young man, can you tell me what you remember when things started to take a turn for the worse? Yeah, so me and my father were celebrating uh, my birthday, and suddenly there's just smokes and motos flying, and that's it. I'm sad. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Enjoy your hat, though.
Ladies and gentlemen, they have come to play Saw Mean Business and the RMR No Fluke as they have now secured a map win over top of Cloud9 and posted a wonderful CT side here on their opponent's map choice. With a great chance and a pistol to close this one out and ease, it's safe to say, Portugal back on the map. Portugal back on the goddamn map. This Boa. Last three overpass wins, 13-1 versus Nine Pandas, 13-11 versus Rhino, which is another Brazilian, or Portuguese team, and 13-4 versus Fnatic at the RMR. Okay, actually both those wins at the RMR. Uh, T-side's a struggle, a massive struggle, 34%, but um, that's because a lot of their games started CT, so we didn't get to see. And also... Who isn't struggling? T side overpass. So there's a chance here for Cloud9. Let's see if they can get the pistol at least. You need that. Can't lose another 2v4 on the pistol, Cloud9. That would be bad. And Axile's gone unchecked here. Yeah, this is going to get a little too stringy. Bathroom's players supposed to seal the deal, but we also saw the 2v4 back in the first pistol. This time, not going to happen. Hobbit, wonderful three piece from inside of the bomb site. And yeah, saw, I think, letting Axile go unchecked there really sealed. Yeah, couldn't find him there inside bathrooms. Clean. Cloud9, good pistols. Good pistoling players on this team. That's for damn sure. Damn sure. Muterus ended the half with two kills. Actually got a kill. Last kill of the last round of the first half. Let's put a pin in that. See what happens in half two. You gonna give the Glocks any fights? Cloud Nine just continuing to. Leave people disappointed, Mohan. You know, what's with super teams as of late? <laughs> what is with the super team signings? If you look at uh, the last year, I feel like, you know, what? okay, Frozen frozen to phase, it's worked. Yeah. Well, it well, hasn't actually, but... Well, it, but yeah, but it's, it's worked more than, than some of these other these other Frankenstein situations, you know? The Cloud9 yeah, yeah. that we were promised? Nope. Astralis? Yep. Nope. Liquid? Falcons? Nay, liquid. Falcons. Nada. Yeah, it's because we reach a point where people are getting paid so much and we know about the buyouts and, uh... That's... Turns out Shiro made the best move of anyone. Yeah, and he's the only one that techni that didn't go to, uh, the, the best possible roster. Yep. He didn't go to a super team. It's pretty... It's pretty great. Just want to give him a lot of credit for that. He, he saw a good team and he went there. And they chew. literally just won Katowice. Insane. So chew on that one if you are in the middle of making any big life decisions at the moment. Be like Shiro. Be like Shiro. Take a chance. Don't accept mediocrity. Get an opera. <laughs> <laughs> Trust 15 year olds. They did need the thing was they actually needed an IGL too. That was the sad part at, at formation. It was just that electronic promise to be this like opera who's or IGL who's going to commit and wants to be the best IGL in the world. And I believed him because like I heard he had good combs. I thought he was going to commit. But then when he backed up off of it, that just made everything so awkward. I still to this day. Wish we could see Boomich and Shiro at the same time. You and I both, brother. Yeah. Posturing going on by Saws. They do have short water control from Eras Dose, but CT is not taking any more risks than this. Just putting that MP9 close to support the Fomus. If you want the B fight, it's there for you. Meanwhile, we've got Axile doing the solo show on A. Udrix eats the flash, but doesn't fire. Electronic gets active, trying to figure all this out. And sure enough, Hobbit can come throw himself into A. So second layer of defense gets in and catches the player peeking bath. 
Now that whole pack of saw players trying to come after the story is going to die jumping upwards. There's the uh -oh. two kills in response. The connector flank is fast. Is it fast enough? Electronic can't quite get the angle. Perfecto oh. finds his and a second. Down to the 12 seconds. arizdosa has got the bomb, but Perfecto's coming through it. And he will not yet oh. eventually get there. A little sketchy, but a big three-piece put forth by Perfecto. Oh, yeah. Big time. That was nice. Down to the wire. And three piece from Perfecto, two for Aristos. Would have had to get the clutch and get three himself to win that. Trade game was pretty good up on the A, a site. They, they set up a decent situation here. But uh, look at Perfecto go. I mean, he locked this down and they, their CT smoke was quite late, actually. That was all his vision gone. And they would have had two players in the back of the site. They traded out effectively if they had landed that smoke earlier. Time out here for Saws. They got to think. They got close, but they were missing a final trade. I think there's very real chance as this game starts to go on that things are going to get a little crazy like that last round. I mean, good timing on, yeah. the, on the call up to the A play, but, you know, story jumping up. I mean, it's really Hobbit just kind of taking a fight before he had to. Peels the first player off. Expect this one to get tight. More of nuke, essentially. Try to chase down that M4 as they do still have Axile up here, but he's fine. Yeah, good. Not going to let them get too comfortable or push all the way through without taking damage. He's done his job and then some. Oh, but that Deagle rears its head again. A double from Aristos. Oh, the Molly. It's not planted on default. Molly goes out the smoke. It is down on default. Luckily, what? they have the util to cover it. It is? Yep. Why is the... Is it wrong on the minimap? Or it's right there on the edge. I mean, it's not on dice, right? Yeah, it is. Oh, it is. Oh, what the hell? There is Dose boosted up. So, sees the players crossing over. They're going to tap it. It's exposed in the open. The M4 can't connect. Second chance. Oh, too many targets. <laughs> too many targets to hit. In a sea of CTs, they get away with it and tie the game again. Okay. Scary with the deagle shots in there, man. Those were those were really clean. Getting close to the A side. Again, scary, but uh, at the end of the day, Cloud9 win this with three alive, so it's not a terrible anti-eco. Scary, but could have definitely been a loss. Exile. Putting in the work on this A site. Again, he's going to be operating on his own. You know, and at his darkest times in recent months, felt like the timidness started to kind of limit his abilities and his decisions, but I like that uh, versus Saw today, he's not playing it scared. Playground, Fountain, Party, now Con. Three players stack inside of the B play. Electronics got a Molotov in hand, primed, ready to be thrown down in front of what will be two and maybe three. Roman's coming over. Uh-oh, the smoke Yikes. bounces back. The spray from Aaron no. gets the double the miss smoke from Perfecto. Hobbit's gonna have to do everything at this point, but the spray continues to go on and it finds him. Oh, there's so much damage, and Boomich doesn't even bother with his molly. He's actually just out of there because of that flub. 
Oh god. Spray transfer comes in, bomb plant goes down, saw win the round, and saw keep the lead. That was was that a smoke that came in that came in from behind him, obviously. I don't know who yeah, threw it. It was but. perfecto, it was perfecto and electronic along the wall. Electronic had a Molotov in hand with the pin pulled. And I think perfecto, yeah, right behind him. Oh, tough. Yeah. Doesn't would it have even made a difference? It wouldn't have opened up by the time he could spray anyway, right? He was already halfway through that tunnel. Yeah, he was definitely ahead of it. A perfecto, I think sweet. maybe perfecto misses because from his perspective he sees him and he's like, oh, could be. and tries to move maybe. I think in the but, long run it also kind of screws over Hobbit, who's then trying to play from behind it. Yeah, true. Like yeah, no, actually, yeah, they, pack to come out. It gives them some good helped. routing. <laughs> yeah, look at this perfect little pathway. <laughs> it would have helped. <laughs> He's just lowered the drawbridge for them. <laughs> they literally threw a T-Lurk smoke for him. Yeah. Cloud 9 sake, it doesn't cost them everything. Got a buyback, but... Man, that is a golden opportunity for Saw to at least keep this... You know, what's going to be a back-and-forth affair... Just tiptoeing closer to the finish line. Oh. Roman gets the entry frag. This time, Axile won't give anything on A and Eras Dose with a monster smoke spam. They can't afford this now. 5v3. They're, they're too broke. They're going to heavily consider saving if this comes down to the wire and they... If they search out another kill, or I don't know. I mean, maybe they bring it back if they, if they get said kill. But if they don't, they really risk everything here. Oh no, no Hobbit. frag. Nades got it. No, not even. Yikes. That actually makes a huge difference that he doesn't get the kill because he can't actually re-engage. And what happens is long control is won by the T side. He falls back. There without vision. There's no rotation here for Boomich. Could just come down to him. And as long as they played a trade in each spot, CTs are going to be calcified in position. So Boomich, all to do, baby. All to do. Just spinning in circles here, trying to hold everything. Aristos, instant headshot from down beneath him. Good night. This guy's they rifle is so up. damn crisp. It's really good. It's amazing. I mean, him and you jerks just consistently impressing. They're so fresh. Hungry, fired up, and on a hell of a tear in the last month. Yep. Bomb secured down to the B site. Cloud9 desperate to oh, keep this man. save because the money's basically gone. But they just saw Perfecto. Yes, sir. And they're going to come hunting. That Fomus does not seem long for this world. If Hobbit's lucky, they'll leave him alone inside of the A site. I don't know. I think it's pretty. All right. Wow, they actually aren't going to hunt. Are they going to wait? Long player going first. Now they're working their way out. These are very critical Did he make saves a fast for Cloud9. No. They figure him out. Oh, the cover. Down goes the Fomus, and now Hobbit's so concerned about the B players coming up that... Oh! Terrorists win. Oh! He's got it! Okay, one gun saved. 17 health, the difference there. But doesn't make a difference at all. At least it's the M4. Bro. Mashed. Didn't even get the flick, literally. Great ripping them. Ten rounds, man. The triple stack. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Watch the Watch connector the guy. I was going to say, know, yeah, right? the connector player get that kill. Oh. Going back up. Can this be oh, heard, though? Cause he's got a deagle. Oh, not even. He's just like, I'm better than you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ego. Oh, my back's getting sore, man. Let me up there. <laughs> okay. This is a weird one. There's that M4. It's it's here. It's here inside yeah. of the A site. Yeah, yeah. Hobbit. Habito. 
Three pistols coming down from bathrooms as well. Offer a shot. Luckily, covers there. Aristos has got those two. Perfecto's out of it. The M4 about to show itself. No engage here from Hobbit, though. Want to leave. Yeah, I think they, they kind of do, but I guess if they wait doubly as long, they just chill and go for it. Electronic six around. It's a smart play from Cloud9. Oh, that is end up going. No, okay, long, actually. That's actually super smart. So there you go, Saw. That actually counters the uh, late A option that Cloud9 were looking to hold on to. And with definitely enough time here. They avoided Hobbit completely this round. For a team with like a 34% win rate on T-side overpass, I think Saw have shown solid improvements in this one. Yeah, I think I'm going to just check, but it might be because, yeah, they had CT side start, one bad T game. So they had one T game where they got four rounds, and the other two games, they won so one-sided, they only lost one T round in total between two games. Ah, uh, okay. So the numbers don't mean much. Yeah. They just haven't even played T side. That's how good they are on overpass. Terrorists win. It's, I guess the crazy part about that is like, it's almost always the team picking it into them, letting them have CT side, and then they get they decimate the other team. It's not even their main map. <laughs> like they reg they just pick nuke every time. They are on a eight round eight map win streak on nuke, including Liquid and Cloud Nine now, and Monty, and Nine Pandas, and Ninjas. Wow, it's racking it up, huh? That's great. All in a day's work for Saw as of late. Seriously. Surging onto the scene. It's definitely not the last time we're going to say their names oh, oh. in the coming weeks. Story, catching Boomich as the smoke gets popped open. Sat full display for the opera to pluck him off. And Hobbit onto the off oh. now instead. Just missed this walkout from Roman. But as he falls down, Hobbit sees Shadow and will capitalize back to the 4v4. They immediately see the op and leave. Reading potentially that Hobbit sticks around on the B site. There's a lot of conviction in this movement. It's quick. Jump spot coming out. Oh, it's... They're playing it kind of loose, making a lot of noise, so... There it is. One in the bank. Are they going to hard clear this, though? Hello. What the hell? Electronic looking the wrong way. Hobbit's got the trade back. That's two kills from the op this round. Any HE kills him. They don't have one, though. He's trying to pick his next target as his teammates fall around him. Down he goes. Muteris and Aristos in with the clear of the bomb site, and Perfecto is tasked to come up 1v3. Saw on the brink of securing a 12th. A T side that shows no signs of slowing down. A T side that's nice and clean. Played meticulously on the approach to this A site round after round. Yeah, they make T side look like 50-50. Like, they make it look real possible. Very good protocols, very good entries, very good defaults. And they had no silliness. You know, Cloud9 had some silliness in that first half. Round's coming down to the time. Oh, yeah. How's it saw look like they're not making the mistakes? Yeah, and to come back, too. Looking far more fine-tuned with a map in their back pocket as well. This rifle combo of Aristos and Ujerks. Oh god, we're stabbing each other, huh? Doesn't help. Yeah, they're a sick. They're a sick duo. They're a sick new gen Portuguese duo. All the while, Electronic is having an incredibly rough day. Mm. Goes 14 and 24 back on Nuke, lowest rated player, 0.67 rating. Now he sits down at the bottom of the board again, 5 and 12 here. So your star player is gone. And True. you have four map and match points to try and fight up against. Saw drop another big organization. Oh, what? Damn, dude. And Electronic can't. That's what's happened to him every round, right? 
they've been killing him off the half wall. Smoke, naded through that smoke. Yep. It's because he's been sitting there crack spotting because in case yeah. they walk through, I, mean, I guess they you know, just watch the demo. Stand on the road, you're going to get hit by a truck. <laughs> in fact, it goes for the peek out of the smoke, doesn't see anybody party. And he's going to go for the fallback, opening Axile to drop down to B, trying to plug that hole that Electronics Death has opened. And they're just walking through it. They, they're using this to their advantage. They believe that he wasn't faking this attention, so... It's the right call. Rotation around a bank is slow. Perfecto's literally going to support B with utility, and this could be the round they lose. It's a complete call out. It's a complete call out. It's sick. They're going to get Salt murdered on their way back in. From top to bottom, the rifles have connected across overpass. The calls on this T side have been so conductive. Just save Cloud9. <laughs> yeah, save Just face. Just save, honestly. If you can. C9 on the brink of elimination because Saw dropped Team Liquid yesterday and now they come out swinging and not just in some super tight three map affair. Nuke goes to OT, but they brought it there. It was C9 who couldn't close it. And now on this T side, they have got them pinned against the wall. 5v2 to drop them and to keep their showdown showing going. Aristos constant in the rifle pressure throughout this map and he will finish with a 3k and 23 frags on this scoreboard. It is not just the RMR that they come in with convincing win, but the showdown to boot, the major around the corner, and the sky feels like the limit with London calling. Well, they've absolutely done it. They've absolutely done it. This was a big test for Saw, and they passed it with flying colors. Not just the first map, they take the second as well. They 2-0 Cloud9, eliminating them from the Spring Showdown, and Saw has just sent the message to everybody heading to the Major that they are not to be taken likely, Bobski. This is crazy. Yeah, I mean, I think you said it yourself, right? They, they need those three players to perform Story, you jerks and Aradosh. Um, and they did. I mean, what a, an, an amazing game from them, really. I didn't really expect them to be able to go to 2-0 against the likes of Cloud9, who's been looking pretty good recently, right? And But it's going to go back to that debate. Are they good enough without an Alba? But surely, if you lose to Sword, there's uh, room for discussion, but nothing to take away from the Portuguese guys. They've made a fantastic story, and it just keeps going on. Well, not to mention on the on this map especially it didn't even feel like the off was that much of a difference maker right for me what struck out especially in the first half with saw on defense was uh, they, they just closed down the b bomb site <laughs> like they executes cloud never doing they stalled them out once or twice forced them into late round hits you jerks was was absolutely amazing over towards toxic barrels and even just standard executes out of the bomb site cloud nine couldn't get it done this defense was rock solid yeah, and there was also a couple of mistakes on the Cloud9 side. But I remember one particularly round, I think you saw it as well, down at the monster area where Electronic is actually standing with that Molotov in such an important round, and then right. the guy behind him actually fails the smoke and in, in resource and both of them dying. But again, it's going to be the discussion of Cloud9, right? Um, Boomich didn't really have much impact with the orb again. Um, he's had a couple of good games on Overpass particularly, but uh, I'm not sure this is the future. I'm still going to be very excited to see these guys at the Major because I know when they hit LAN, they're just different. Yeah, I, I think that the problem is I don't know how much they would need to accomplish, how good of a run they would have in Copenhagen for the conversation about needing an opera to die down. You yeah. know, like, we, we, like how how deep do you have to go before people say, okay, well, maybe they don't actually need an opera. It's always going to seem like it's it's just sitting there in the back of kind of everyone's mind. And I think at some point they're going to be forced into a, an area where they're going to have to make a really tough decision because there's no easy selections when you look at that roster and try and find where you're going to make space for an opera eventually. Yeah. Yeah, and that conversation is obviously too early right now. Uh, they still have a very, really important major coming up, right? And that's what their focus is going to be. But externally, we are already throwing names in there because we expect them after right. the major to make that initial cut if they want to be that top five team that we know these players kind of deserve. When we look at AXA, when we look at Electronic, and also Electronic today having a horrific game, really a major change of why Cloud9 wasn't able to actually go to that third map. Normally the, normally the best player on Cloud9 at the bottom of the scoreboard. Yeah, missing a lot of production out of that department. Certainly, just a, just a bad day in the office. Uh, but but man, I mean, Saw just just continue to impress. This is a great run from them. And when so much of the conversation around is around peaking at the right time to go deep into the major, Saw seems like they have a uh, an absolutely perfect standing at the moment. Uh, regardless, we're gonna hear some thoughts from them uh, from them themselves as Roman sat down with James Banks shortly after the win. 
Roman, a huge victory here over Cloud9. And I want to start on Nuke. It's your pick. You're down 12-9. You get the last three rounds, bring into overtime. But then you continue that forward to get three more rounds, eventually winning overtime and taking down Cloud9. Interestingly, though, you got both pistols on this map and you still only just about won it. Is this a good sign? Is it a bad I mean, sign? What do you I mean, we had some really bad rounds that we should have won. So it's, I, I mean, it's a... It's a sketchy result, I'll say. I mean, we had two pistols, we should have won for a bit more, but they are such a strong team, and we, we're so happy that we the, we won the map. And you definitely did that in a good way, and it seemed like you kept that momentum and the, the hype and the presence going to overpass. A great 8-4 start on the half, and then it looked like you were in full control. Did it ever feel like they had a chance to come back into that game on overpass, or did you feel like yeah, it was Yeah, for yours? sure. I mean... Uh, we had some lucky runs. They they could have break all our economy, so they had the game on on their hands as well. So we have a really strong overpass. We we were just surprised that they, that they picked overpass. We were expecting Anubis, but they picked overpass. I mean, and I mean, we I feel like we are better on overpass than we are on Anubis. So we we were happy for it. <laughs> See, I bet you were happy for. It. I was going to ask because it seemed like. They lost some confidence in their Anubis from when they played it against Rare Atom, and that's why they went for this overpass. So obviously, it, the whole veto really benefited uh, you, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a bit strange that they don't pick uh, Anubis. I think the lower last Anubis we lost against the Pandas 13 to 1. So I really thought they would pick Anubis. I, I, do, I really don't get it, <laughs> but I might prefer it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would be happy for it as well. And right now, you guys are on a great streak of wins coming from the RMR going 0-2, now into qualifying and doing well here at Blast. Do you just feel like you're on a huge run of confidence as a team right now? And do you feel like you've got a good chance here where you might even be able to make it to the spring Yeah, final? for sure. I mean, we we are playing really well. We, we, we came to this tournament like a... We are treating it like a, like, like a preparation for the major. So... Any result okay. is is good enough for us, but we are we are aiming for the win. So we'll see what goes. All right. Well, I mean that's a that's a good topic of conversation to to shift right into that Romans brought up is the one of the map veto. Uh, you know, not necessarily specifically Anubis, uh, but the but the pick of Overpass seemingly uh, gave Saul two confident maps in this series, and, and the speculation that maybe Anubis um, has a little fallen out of favor a little bit with Cloud9. Yeah, but I also think we had a, an interview earlier today, if you remember Moses, that uh, Hobbit said that uh, they're going to save a little bit of the tactics for for the major, right? And maybe they've had that Anubis sure. prepared for for the major initially because they're going to go for that pick and and maybe they're going to save some strats and for today that they were able to do it with with the likes of overpass but i don't think the maps matter today uh, i think they played a great game of counter-strike okay. of source side and regardless it really felt like they, they had the upper hand it was funny listening to him as well because he was even saying like you know it was a little bit sketchy they had the mm. game in their hands at times like this wasn't like a roman coming in and being like yep we came in we conquered it was exactly as we expected you know he's still focused very much on some of the struggles and some of the areas that they had difficulty um against cloud nine so i mean for a team leading up to the major that that is going to go into it as, as kind of an underdog in most matchups you'd imagine although maybe not anymore with uh, saw's performance recently it's good to see them kind of focused on on where where the areas that they can improve are, are showing in these games. Yeah, I think you have a good point, and I think it's even more impressive what before the, the RMR, right? Nobody had any expectations of so. It was just that team coming into the RMR, and people thought, okay, maybe they're going to snatch a win or two, but then they're going to go out, and we're never going to hear about them again, right? But the story have just completely flipped on the Portuguese yeah. scene. Like, they got into that event. They did really well. They did from the zero... 2-0, 0-2 if I remember correctly, and they went all the way to 3-2. Now they're just riding on that steam of momentum, and now they're beating some of the best teams in the world. I think it's uh, nothing but impressive. Yeah, it's it's super cool. It's super impressive. And uh, we're going to pull up the brackets at the end of day three so you guys can see exactly where we're at in the tournament. Uh, that was our first quarterfinal done. So Saw moves on to the semifinal, that qualification game over to London. One team from each side of the bracket is going to go through. Um, I mean, the rest of them, OG Heroic, Spirit Big, Monty Metasport. 
there's some question marks in some of those, but but certainly Cloud9 going out, certainly Falcons going out the way they did so early in round one, Liquid going out. It's thrown a, it's thrown a lot of these brackets up into a little bit of chaos, and th there are matchups here in the semifinals and quarterfinals that we probably didn't expect to see all that much. No, I think it shows whoever wants it more, right? I think we see some of these teams and we're like, huh? But I, I think actually what we're seeing is that those who have prepared the most and have actually put in the hours for this tournament has actually gotten uh, the carrot for now, right? There's still a, 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 yeah. a match more for Saw, but getting into a final like this to potentially go into London would be an amazing achievement for a team who hasn't really had a lot of uh, Tier 1 Atlanta experience. Oh, certainly, and especially for a team like Saw, you know, they didn't even they didn't even play in the spring groups. They qualified yeah. through the RTP Arena spring spring events just to get to the showdown, just for a chance to qualify through the hardest hardest format event that we've got to qualify for the finals. So, uh, pretty crazy, really cool stuff from them. Let's move on. The end of day three, we've got the plays of the day presented by Trade It GG. Three plays that we've pulled out. We're gonna uh, you know decide the winner vote and the winner for tomorrow. Um, and first thing we got right here is Snacks with the AWP. three kills on Vertigo. Again, Snacks, poor Snacks is going to end with another tough loss and elimination from the Spring Showdown, but that was a nice play. Yeah, it's been a, a little bit of a quiet day. We have a, a, a couple of highlights, and also I think one guy who's been done particularly well in this big roster is, is Krimbo, right? He's been really the, the sole star of this team for the last couple of months. Now he's finally surrounded by bigger talents, and hopefully they can take it to the next level. Absolutely. Exile up next on Nuke. And I mean, he, he had a, I mean, I don't know, pretty decent game, but it's all done in a loss. And this was a nice clutch, a good spray transfer. It's just not enough to help Cloud9 over the line. Not enough from Cloud9 on either of the maps. Um, so yeah, tough day in the office for Cloud9. But we get an update. We get an update on the Mask MVP. That's going to be brought to you by James Banks. That's right, Moses. It's time for the Mask MVP check-in. And well, Cloud9 were at the top for the last couple of days, but after this performance, I think things would have changed quite massively in here. And the man we've got at the very top right now, well, it should be no surprise, it is Donk. He is a devastating character, owning his way for every single game. Even on Vertigo, we started to see him have some life come in here, and he's been doing huge damage throughout. And I look at this and think, okay, Donk is a monster for sure. But even against Elevate right now, who did put up a bit of a fight, that's for sure. But I'll say right now that Donk is a player that we're all excited for. We want to see how he's going to do at the Major. And if you can keep this up, maybe Spirit go through to London, which a lot of us are expecting. And maybe he'll also be the MVP. We'll have to wait and see. Yes, thank you, Dr. Banks, for the MVP check-in. Uh, good stuff. And obviously, we all know Donk is going to be somewhere on that list uh, towards the end of it. So uh, good day at Counter-Strike, Bubsky. Let's check out the predictions that all of, that, we, that we all had for the day because this game is going to start getting a little bit wild as we start stealing lives from each other. Um, Spirit, everyone had that. That was nice and easy. I went for an upset with Gamer... I don't even know if that's an upset for Gamer Legions. I went against GG Bet trying to get a steal. But the Saw Pickers, Harry, Hugo, and myself are really rejoicing today because now we get to steal some things. Yeah, but uh, looking at that zero of Harry, I think he's done for today, but I'm not sure how it actually works. But I'm going to be interesting to see if he's actually going to be alive for tomorrow. It's, it's Hugo with zero, and he gets to steal a life, so he's going to be up at one. He gets to steal mm. one life, he'll still be alive, but he's he's really on the brink of it, isn't he? He's circling around the toilet drain. At the yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just keeping a low profile, not trying to, to bully anyone or keeping any bad relations, being really <laughs> nice in a, our WeChat group. So uh, I'm just staying uh, on the low profile. Hopefully nobody's going to take lives from me. Come on, Bobski, start taking some swings, baby. Uh, let's get into the schedule for tomorrow so you guys know what's coming up next. It's going to be day four of the Spring Showdown when we when the sun rises tomorrow. Heroic OG, Metasport, Monty, Big Spirit. The other three quarterfinals all going to be completed tomorrow. Um, if you're looking at this, Bobski, you can only you only have time to watch one match tomorrow. Which one you pick, and baby? I mean, as a biased thing, I'm going for that first one, and then we're going out to the city. But I'm going to be sitting here with you, Moses, and covering the two other ones. I think. <laughs> and Spirit also has a potential to be a banger. Yeah, that could be cool. And I mean, much like much like Cloud9 was a test today for Saw, Spirit's going to be a, a nice, big, aggressive test for, for Big Clan um, after their win today. Um, yeah, yeah, fun day of Counter-Strike Day 3. We're starting to eliminate teams, starting to get deep into the tournament and starting to see some of these results come to fruition. Um, but that's it. That's it for day three. That's all we've got for you. So we're going to head off. Have a good evening. Have a good afternoon, whatever it might be where you're watching. And make sure you're joining us here tomorrow morning for day four of the Spring Showdown.